Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And welcome to Cross 2018. You know, it's a few minutes since last year. Well, we've got a great day lined up for you. You're probably already aware we've got the Kennel Club Novice Cup final jumping section uh, coming in the ring any moment now. That's going to start. And, of course, that tells the tale of today as well. We've got some great finals here today in Agility. It's the 40th anniversary of Dog Agility starting at Crufts when it was in London. And there's going to be some great events on all day. So whether you're with us here in the arena or watch it online, make sure you stay on and you don't miss anything. We've got freestyle finals coming up later. So it's heel work to music. We've got the West Midlands Police and we've got Flyball later. Lots happening in the arena. We hope you have a great day. And we just about ready to start the competition and I'm going to hand you over to our commentator for the agility the first class it's uh, Kate Smith over to you Kate thank you very much Dave and welcome everybody um, to the very first um, agility event of the year here at Crufts 2018 it is the kennel club novice jumping and the eagle-eyed amongst you will see that we have no contact equipment in the ring and that's because this is a jumping competition where we just have jumps tunnels and weaves so we're going to be starting with the medium height and obviously we do need a judge. She's a local lass, ladies and gentlemen, so please do give a big round of applause for Jackie Gardner. Okay, so as I said, we're going to start off with the medium height. All dogs in agility are measured so that they are jumping at an appropriate height for the size of the dog. And first to go is going to be Bianca Janssen with Carver Corvan Guti. All the way from the Netherlands, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give her a big round of applause. And uh, all the dogs that you're seeing in this competition have actually qualified to run here. So they qualified at a large agility event um, back in the summer. In fact, I think it's actually the largest agility event in the world. And that is the Kennel Club Agility International Festival held at Rockingham in the Midlands. So we're off. So she's going to want to go clear because it's an accumulation of this round and also the agility round later on today. So here we go, down to number seven, crossing sides there. As you can see, our judge has set a course where there's lots of changes of direction. We've got to go into those weaves with that first pole on her left shoulder. She missed a pole there. So that does mean an elimination, I'm afraid. They have to complete the weaves before they carry on to the next obstacle. Uh, but it was a cracking run, unfortunately, just picking up that elimination. So, big round of applause, please, for Bianca. So, next to go is Sam Davis. This is an unexpected trim at Sigrock. I'm sure there's a story behind that name. So, here we go. Cross the arena there, back to the arms jump. So the dogs have never seen this course before, and the handlers only saw it for the first time this morning when they walked in. So it really is a test of um, handling skills, training. So that's a five faults there, because the dog uh, took the pole out. So that's five faults. Right, And... Uh, as I said before, it's an accumulation of the two rounds, so all still to play for. Oh, just managed to call her off that jump. They do see that when they come out of the tunnel. Over the last one, well done. 38.850 is the time with five faults. Goes into first place. So next on the line is Pat Partridge with a buzz. Cocker Spaniel. Hillside Gems Simply Buzz is the full Kennel Club name. So Pat's led out, making sure she's in a good position to push back over the irons jump. Back round to number six. Sharp right turn. Got to pull in there, make sure they don't take the wrong side of the jump. Right across to the weaves. Well done. Nicely through there. Oh, he said no. I saw that tunnel. Wrong end of the tunnel, unfortunately. So that is an elimination. 
That tunnel really does call them after those weaves and they've got to pull them off that uh, um, tunnel entrance. So well done Pat, but unfortunately an elimination at the tunnel. So next to go, this is on the line, this is James Brown okay, up at Atom. This is a working cocker spaniel cross working sheepdog. Okay. So lots of working in there. So let's see how he does. Nicely round into the tunnel. Sharp right turn down to number seven. He's going to get in that gap to make sure the dog doesn't take the jump from the wrong side. He's crossed to the make that weave entry slightly easier for the dog. Nicely through there, blocking the tunnel. Down across to the long jump. Round the back of the arms jump. Come on, James, into the tunnel. Oh no! Just saw that jump. What a shame. He put the turn in. But unfortunately, Rogue had just seen that jump there. So unfortunately, that is an elimination for James and Rogue. Oh dear. Still got the agility to go later on though. So next on the line, Elaine Bostock with Vimes. This is a Jack Russell cross Sheltie. Commander Vimes. Is his full name? So nicely across to the tunnel there. Little Vimes. Got a lot to say as he runs around this course. Just going to make sure that everybody knows that he's enjoying his agility. Into the weaves. Nicely done through there. Ooh, just managed to get him in the right end of the tunnel. Well done. Keep going, Vimes. Round the back of the arms jump. Nice turn. Very, very tight. Got to keep him off the jump. He can sit. Oh, that was a good turn. Very nicely done there. Two to go. Come on. Yes, well done. 41.760 on a clear round. Well done, Elaine. Okay, so next to go, ready on the line, is Emma Gamble. Dynamite Dinky Diva. She's brought a fan club with her. Let's give her a cheer all the way around. These dogs go faster when you shout and cheer for them. In the tunnel. Go, go. Come on, Emma. This is Mo. This is a Cocker Spaniel Cross. Little Merley. Right across the arena. Go on, find those weeds. Yes, very nicely done, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Lovely. Into the far end of the tunnel. Come on, Emma. Round there. Round the back of the arms jump. Oh, that was the wrong jump. Just unfortunately picking up an elimination there. What a shame, just took the wrong course. Okay, so the last to go in the medium. This is Rachel Hall, she's done a mad dash from the car park with Merovegian Shiro Kiba. I hope I've said that right. Very posh name. So, into the tunnel. Come on, Rachel. So, pushing round. Oh, gotta pick the jump up, not that way. Oh! Round into the weaves. So, unfortunately, she has picked up an elimination. Rachel's had a bit of a morning, I'm afraid, getting here. So uh, I believe the motorways are pretty bad out there. So, um, but her dog, Keeper, as you can tell, has got no idea whatsoever that she's been eliminated. Still a happy dog, still a happy handler. Well done, Rachel. So we have a height change now. And we're going on to the large novice dogs. So, 
As I said earlier, all the dogs in agility are measured, and that's to make sure that they are competing at a height that's appropriate for the size of the dog. So we've gone on to the large, and um, this is the Kennel Club Novice Cup jumping, and what that means is that all the dogs that are competing are grade three to five. We have a seven grade system in agility in the UK, seven being the highest, which is championship level, and uh, you work your way through the grades by winning out at each level. So um, the dogs that you're seeing here in the main are relatively inexperienced, I guess, um, but that's not always the case. Um, and uh, like I said, we're going on to the large. We're just checking the timing to make sure that that's all ready to go. Agility has got so fast these days that we're down to three hundredths of a second to make sure that uh, we get the right dogs in the right order. So we're just checking the timing equipment. And thank you for joining us, by the way, very early in the morning. It's lovely to see so many of you in here today. We could do with a few more, I think. I'm sure we'll be full up by the end of the day. So straight after the Novice Cup today, we have um, the team, I believe. Sorry, no, the Kennel Club British Open. So make sure you stay around for that. We've got some great agility this morning. After the British Open, we've got the teams, the large teams. That's always great fun to watch. Four dogs in a relay race with a baton change. Very, very exciting. And then later on today, we've got a great programme. We've got the police in here. We've got Flyball. We've got Hear Words Music. And obviously, much as we would love you to all stay with us all day, we um, appreciate that there's lots of stalls, lots of shops out there for you to also spend your money. So make sure that you get round to uh, some of the other things um, at Cross 2018. So we're ready to go. On the line is Becca Middleton with Nedlo Lasting Impression. Pet name Shimmer. Border Collie, as you can see, black and white. First time at Crufts. Same qualifying process, qualified at the International Agility Festival at Rockingham in August. So, nice right turn there. In through that gap. Then up the line, to the weaves. He says, I can't see where you want me to go. There you go, into the weaves, very nicely into there. Becca's gonna block the tunnel, so she gets the right entrance, well done. Nicely across arena, calling off, round to the irons jump. Into the tunnel, come on Becca, you've got three to go, that's a nice turn. Two to go, go on, one more. Make sure you take the last one, come on. Well done, 38-7-3-0 goes into first place in the large section, well done. And there's Shimmer going through those weave poles. So next to go, this is Amanda Yates. Oh, another one that's brought their fan club, well done. Make sure you cheer for Amanda all the way round. This is Rue, the Australian Kelpie. Devon Ayres Kanga. So, down to the tunnel, nicely done, turning right, she's going to cross into the gap, oh, picked up five faults, that was a refusal, just went past the line of the jump, didn't get eliminated though, so that's really good, don't want to get eliminated, into the tunnel, so we're on five faults as we come down over the long jump, turning right, over the irons jump, oh, goodness me, don't look at that one, or that one, oh my god. Two to go, come on, let's give her a big round, one more! By the seat of your pants, well done, Amanda. That is five fourths in a time of 40.540. Oh, I think we, uh, we actually ran all of that with Amanda there. I know I did. Well done. Okay, so next on the line is uh, Sam Lane. This is Rival, the Border Collie. Delanair Arch Rival. Here we go. Another dog, I think, that's uh, first time at Crufts. 
very experienced handler with uh, her Cocker Spaniels, where Sam has uh, represented Great Britain. But this is her young border collie. In we go, through that tunnel. Turning right onto the arms jump. Well done, into the tunnel. Come on, Sam, you've got three to go. Nice turn there, one more, go on. Yes, well done. 37, 4, 6, 0. On a clear round. Well done, Sam, that puts you in a great position for the agility later on. So, next to go, Debbie Fig is on the line with Echo the Border Collie. Rookie's truly magical. Another dog whose first time at Crufts. How wonderful. It's a great experience for our handlers and these young dogs. There we go. Nice right turn. Pulling in through the gap. Just got there in time. Turning left, down the line. Driving onto the weaves. Got in there nicely. Out the other end. Oh, attempted a blind turn there, but unfortunately um, just got eliminated. Echo saw the tunnel behind her and said, I'm going to take that. Here we go. Last three jumps. Well done. Unfortunately, that's uh, picking up an elimination at the tunnel. So next to go, on the line, is Alison Pierce with Herbie, Border Collie, four and a half years old. Widdershins Walrus is his full kennel name. Multi-talented dog, does uh, scent work and canny cross as well as agility. Okay, so my mistake, this is actually Nikki Collins. I do apologise, this is Mambo. And uh, Hot Shots number five this is, so my apologies. So, beautiful Merle as we come down to the weeds. So, lovely, into the tunnel. Come on, Nikki. Into... Round into the tunnel. Come on, Nikki, you've got three to go. Go on, Nikki, one more. Oh no, round the last jump. You've got to take it. Yes. Oh, picks up five forwards right at the end there. 39.154. Okay, so next to go. This is Alison Pierce. My apologies. This is Widdershin's walrus. And this is the dog that does the scent work and the canny cross as well. So here we go. Turning left, down into the tunnel. It's very quiet out there. We've all got to pull in. Flicking back up that line. Got to find those weaves. Remember, they've got to go into those weaves with that pole on their left shoulder. Into the tunnel. Picked up speed there as we go. Oh, don't look at that one. Round to the arms jump. Into the tunnel again. Three to go. Don't look at that one. There you go. Or that one. There you go. One more. Yes. Well done. Well done, clear round in 43.350. Oh, well done, Alison. Okay, so next on the line is Claire Bacon. Ty Venomore Secret Hooker. Round into the tunnel. Another dog who's first time across. Just drops the pole there, so that's five faults. Claire swaps sides to make this entry into the weeds just a little bit easier for the dog, because she's on the side they're going to. Turning round into the tunnel. 
Down nicely across there, turning right on the irons jump. Into the tunnel. Nice to go through that, uh, those wings there as we turn left. Two to go. It's still a lovely run. Well done, Claire. Five faults. 35-9-4-0 oh, goes into fourth place. Well done. So, next to go, this is Rebecca Leatherbarrow with Teaser. Cupper Teaser Turner. First agility dog. So, done a great job getting here uh, to the main arena at Crufts. Oh, picks up five faults. The dog turned away from the approach of the jump, so that means they pick up five faults for a refusal. And another one there. So we're on 10 faults as we come down the line. It's right down, just missed that jump there. So that's, uh, that's our third refusal on course. So that means I'm afraid that they have picked up an elimination. They're allowed to have three refusals on course uh, before they get eliminated. But there we go, we've got into our groove now. Well done. Okay, so next to go, it's Bridget Fletcher. This is Kelly, the Border Collie, two years old. Ketchka My Kelly is the dog's full kennel name. Again, first time at Crufts. Here we go. So, round the arms jump, across to the tunnel. Is that right turn. She's going to get in the gap, I think. Yes, there we go. Down that long line. Got to turn the dog right. The dog has to turn away from the handler. That's a skill in itself and needs to be trained. Just comes out of the weave pole. So she has to go back and make sure she completes them correctly. So she's picked up five faults and obviously uh, lost a bit of time there. But here we go. Turning right on the irons jump. Oh, well done. Good call. Two to go. Come on, Bridget. One more. Well done. Five faults. 44-9-9-0. Well done. So, time to beat. 37.460 on a clear round is the time to beat in our jumping competition. This is Kelly Green. Trio. Is the dog's pet name? Last dog to go in the large height, and then we go down to small. Nice turn there, getting in the gap. Turning left, again the dog's going to have to turn away and find those weaves. Ooh! That was a bit sneaky, she was calling. Right, no, I'm going to take this jump regardless. So unfortunately that does mean uh, an elimination there. Ooh. There you go, round to the arms jump. Oh, trousers are falling down. <laughs> you need a belt! <laughs> Yay, well done. So that was Kelly, pulling her trousers up as she ran round. So we're on to the smalls, the jumps are going down. to the small height. Okay, so again, we need to check the timing because um, obviously with the different height of the dog, uh, the beam which goes across the jump needs to be at the right height, else they won't actually start the clock and finish the clock, which might uh, be more important, I'm not sure actually. So there you go, we've got the uh, 
places on the cube there in the center of the arena. And um, these will, scores will be accumulated with the agility round later on to give us our overall winners. So we're ready to go with our first small handler. This is Vicky Young, Oreo Twist and Dunk. So she can't believe she's actually running here in the main arena at Crufts. It really is a great experience. This is a cracking little dog. Same course, but a uh, different set of results. Very nicely into the weaves there. Blocking that tunnel. Tunnel, tunnel. Ori, 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 go, 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 go. Come on, Oreo. This is a toy poodle cross B shot. Very cute little dog. Oh, go into that tunnel, not that end. Picks up five faults for just going past that tunnel entrance. So we're on five as we come down to the last two. One more. Well done. Well done. It's a long way round. 50.267 seconds on five faults for Oreo. Well done. So, next go. This is Melinda Sava with Tix, the Papillon. Tinkleberry Bingo. So, first time at Crufts, so picks up five faults. These jumps are big for a little Papillon. There you go, well done, Ace. I don't like the look of that one. Go on, Tix, well done. Brilliant, so picked up uh, another five there. So we're on 10 faults. Oh, we've got, we've got our mojo now, look. Down that long line, there you go. Wow, into those weave poles. Just picks up five faults there for missing the entry. So that is our third refusal on the course. So that uh, does pick up uh, an elimination overall. There we go. Round to the arms. Jump into the tunnel. He's got into his strike now, look. Oh, let's give him a big round of applause. One more. Well done. I'm sure we'll see them again here later on. It's like, no, I don't like that one. <laughs> okay, so. Next on the line, Vanessa Hardin. This is Jelly Tot, a Shetland Sheepdog. Three years old, Shelty Sham Medley of Gold. <coughs> Vanessa says she believes she's the only handler to compete in Crufts Agility, Rally, Breed and Obedience. That's quite a record, isn't it? Shit. This way. So here we go, down to number seven. Vanessa's crossing sides there. She's crossing sides again as she comes up the line. Turn right into those weave poles. Nicely through there. Pulling past that entrance of the tunnel. Oh, didn't go in though, so that is five volts. Went in and came out, so that's another five. So we're on two refusals at the moment. Into the tunnel. Three to go. Well done. One more. Yay. Well done. Okay, so next to go. On the line. This is Susie Josty with Pixie. This is a mini American Shepherd. Vasily's Pixie Power. Here we go. This is a quick little dog. Round into the tunnel. Susie's going to pull and then flip back through that gap. Straight down that line, turn right. That was a nice turn into the weaves. Well done. 
straight out the other side into the tunnel. Here we go, down the, over the long jump. Nice right turn, over the irons jump. Come on Susie, into the tunnel. She's calling, oh my goodness, that was close. One more, yay, wonderful. 36.877 on a clear round, well done. Goes into first place, well done. That was a bit of a moment there, right at the end, but uh, goes into first place. Fantastic. So next to go, Gloria Bryant with Daisy Duke. This is a Jack Russell. Around the irons jump. Down into the tunnel. Turning right. Oh, just crossing sides there. That was a nice line between seven and eight. That's a long run down to the reach. Getting ahead. Oh, I think she lost the bearings a little bit there. There we are, into the weaves. Oh, don't go in there. That's the wrong end. Oh, what a shame. Picks up an elimination. So that was a shame. So here we go though, three to go. One more. Well done. Well done, Daisy. Unfortunately, picking up an elimination at the tunnel just after the weaves. So we have two more to go in our Kennel Club Novice Jumping. The agility of which is later on. So on the start line, we have Dean Williams with Sintashi Silver Obsidian. I hope I've got that right. This is a Papillon, Obi. First time at Crofts. And he says thanks very much to his mum for letting him run him. Obviously his mum's dog. So here we go, through those weaves. Nicely through there. Oh, which end is it? Got the right one though. Turning right, over the arms jump. Down into the right, 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 right. Oh, well done. Just called him off that jump. Two to go. Come on, Dean. One more. Yeah, well done. 46 at 155. Clear round. Just picks up a time fault of 1.15 seconds. Our course time was 45 seconds. So that means that uh, the handlers have to complete the course in that time, else they get faults. It's one second is one fault. So, last to go, Michelle Chan with Juliet. This is um, Michelle the Cheapdog, eight years old. Shardar Star X Uva. Came to the UK uh, about one and a half years ago from Singapore. And obviously enjoying the uh, UK agility scene. Let's just qualify for Crofts. Oh, well done. Right end of the tunnel there. Down across the arena. Turning right onto the irons jump. Oh, that was a good turn. Into the tunnel. Three to go. Two to go. 36.8 to beat. Oh, well done. 42.320 was the time. Goes into second place. Well done. So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our first agility competition here in the main arena at Crufts 2018. Stay with us, and we'll be going straight on to the presentation.
Yep, yep, yep. Hello, hello. Oh, we're back. We're back. Sorry for the wait, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the presentation. So our presentation is going to be done by our judge, Jackie Gardner. And we're starting with the small. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. In first place was Susie Josty with Basilis Pixie Power. In second place was Michelle Chan with Shonda Star X Luva. And on to the mediums. In first place was Elaine Bostock with Commander Vines. In the second you. place, Hello. Sam Davis with an unexpected trim at Sigrock. And finally, on to the large. First place goes to Sam Lane with a Delanor Arch rival. And in second place, Becca Middleton with Neglo Lasting Impression. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's lap of honour time.
Hi, my name's Claire, and this is my canine partner, Griffin. Griffin is a very affectionate boy. He's very cheeky. He's the life and soul of the party. Um, he likes to show off as well, <laughs> like showing off his skills. Flush. Yes! I was born with a condition called Allostamlos syndrome. It's a connective tissue disorder that affects my joints, meaning I dislocate, I've got very soft and fragile skin, um, it affects my organs. I've been a full-time wheelchair user since the age of 13. I cannot walk, stand or straighten both knees. I'm reaching for something, I can dislocate my shoulder, my fingers, my wrists, so I do need quite a lot of help. I cannot eat at all um, and I can only swallow little bits of liquid at a time. Um, I didn't feel like I had a reason to get up in the morning. Um, I literally just lived life in four walls and that was it. When I applied for a canine partner, I didn't quite understand how much the dog would help me. So Griffin has over a hundred tasks that he can do day to day. Open and close in doors, load unload the washing machine, he gets the phone when it rings. And all I have to do is say, Griffin, phone, get it, and off he goes and brings it back to me. He goes and gets his jacket for me to put on, um, ready for us to go out and about. Now I have Griffin, I don't need any carers, I don't need no help. Um, we work as a team, whatever I can't do, he does for me. Um, I just thought it was a dog to help me physically, but Griffin has exceeded my expectations of what an assistant dog can do. When we go out and about, we always get stopped. You know, I've never had so many friends. Griffin is definitely my best friend. Um, he's a little bit of my hero as well. He's done some amazing things for me. Life as a disabled person is just, it can be so hard. Um, you're very invisible. Um, which is one of the things I love about having Griffin. He has opened up a whole new world for me. Um, I'm not invisible anymore. Um, he just means the world to me. I'm Hannah and this is Buttons, my four-year-old Shih Tzu. I got her in 2013 and she came along just at the right time really. They are, they are so lovely to watch. Hannah's quite um, an introverted girl, always has been, and this has really opened up a whole new chapter in her life. It wasn't really until I got back from hospital after being in the high dependency unit for two weeks that I really noticed our bond. We'd been backwards and forwards to the doctors for about a year previous with various ailments. Oh, it was pretty horrendous. She was emergency blues and twos to the John Radcliffe Hospital uh, in Oxfordshire. Everything was going wrong. Every single day was going wrong. At that point, you kind of then realise as a parent that you might lose your child and you just sit beside the bedside waiting for a miracle. And when she woke up from these seizures, she just woke up and said, Mum, I'm hungry. So that was our turning point. As soon as we got home, of course, the dog and her were like glue, really. When I came back, she was just all over me and we spent a good couple of months. I was camped out on the sofa quite a lot and she literally didn't leave my side. Uh, when I got out of hospital, because I had to go on quite an intense course of steroids, I was quite overweight. Um, so my doctor 
suggested that I would get into exercise. We did some research and we found dog agility um, and we haven't looked back since. We just started competing and she's smashing it basically. <laughs> she loves it so much. At the end of the day, that's what you want from a pet, isn't it? You want them to be your soulmate, your best friend, you know. It's helped her bring her out of her shell because she can be a little bit shy at times, much like me. Um, <laughs> she's definitely more than just a dog.
Okay, a very good morning to you for myself, Nigel Davis. Welcome to the Genting Arena here at the NEC for Crofts 2018. Well, what a run I've got to commentate on now. I've got the Kennel Club Novice Cup final. This is a jumping run. And our judge today here on World Ladies' Day. Jackie's coming specifically here. She's local as well. She hasn't had travel so far. Travel far. Jackie, our judge, is now going to make her way into the arena. Put your hands together, please, to Jackie Gardner. Thank you, Jackie. Right, so our first competitor in, in the British Open Large, is Helen Anderson, working Neo Border Collie. Made the way up from the hometown of Norwich. Any Scottish in yet today? Good morning, nice to see you all. Thanks for supporting us again. So a nice testing course in by Jackie. So the first obstacle will be in the tyre. Nice twisted start across the first group of obstacles. Across the irons, quite change of body direction there. We had a look, but we're all right. We're okay. We had a look at that tunnel, we avoided it, but now we're going for it. Into number seven, cross to number eight, pulling the dogs through now into the middle of the arena. Over third, uh, ten year at irons, and we're into the week. Great weave entry, super weave entry, pulling the dog away from the large white obstacle there into the corner. The rigid tunnel. We're coming round for the long jump. Can we have our first run being a first clear? I don't want to say too much. Into 17. Come on, round to 18. We've got another two to go. A little bit of a tight turn and across the finishing line. Yes! 38.62 in a clear round. Superb run from Helen and Neo. So, our next competitor in, we've got Lucy Hinchley with Pixie, Border Collie, seven years of age. Pixie's amazing, talented partner with great attitude, although she can be wild. I try and read these out as quick as I can, because I know you like to know a little bit about the dogs. She recently featured on CBBC. Now, I'm not sure whether that's Lucy or Pixie. So, she's not phased by cameras. In fact, she rather likes being in the limelight. A bit like me, really. I like being in the limelight as well. Shouldn't we all be in the limelight? So, around three to four. A little bit wide on the turn, they're going towards three. Across the middle now, round towards that rigid tunnel down nearest the bottom end by the commentary point. Over eight, pulls the dog around the nine, cross to the eye and straight up to the wheeze. No problem there with that tunnel in the corner on the right hand side. So, cross now towards the rigid tunnel, into the rigid tunnel number 14, the long jump coming up. We're swinging now towards this rigid tunnel. We could be on a double clear, you never know. Have I spoke too soon? Hopefully not. Over the irons, you want to go. Whoa! 37.34 for Lucy and Dixie. So, have we got the Alan Bray Frank Club in this morning? They haven't made it, they're stuck on the M6 like I was earlier on. There you go, next in Alan Bray, working in Indiana. Border Collie, 10 years of age. In the early days of being in the 80s, there was there on the field of Sam and me. Unfortunately, I just I stopped competing and Alan carried on. Okay. But he's doing very well, always has done. Great actor and a great personality in the agility world as well. So, working away now towards the rigid tunnel, in between the two hurdles, across to number eight, pulling around to nine, up to the irons, into the weeds, beautiful entry again. No problem there with the wheels. Back into that tunnel on the far end now. We've done one, we've done two. Now we've done the third, come on Alan. 18 with two to go, it's gone quiet in the arena and over the finishing line, yes! 39.76. Don't forget this is a two part competition, so in an ideal world they were a nice clear this morning. Ready for later on with the agility run. Next in, Mark Rabada Guac. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, I do apologise. Working in Renoa. Border Collie, seven and a half years of age. This is quick. Ooh, well held, well held. Now we're doing the trouble. Nice Merle. First dog I had rubbers and Merle. Absolute manic. Reminds me slightly of what mine was like. Took me ages to get the right one. When you get it right, it's well worth it. So, coming across now into that rigid tunnel, far corner, number 14, a bit of verbal as well there, from the dog and the handler. This is looking nice, coming around now with number 18, 
nicely handled again. Two to go, come on, over the line, yes. 38.51, super run. Okay, I say I do apologise in my pronunciation of the names. Juni is next with Neela, Border Collie. Fourth time, fourth time, okay. AWC okay. participant. Uh, individual bronze medals, three individual WAO gold medals. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Okay. So Juni away. Yeah. I remember right, I've never seen it here last year. Both very athletic. Very quick, no way to put the pace in the hand, but he's put the pace to pick the dog up, beautifully handled, super, coming around towards those weeds, no problem again with that tunnel, but one of the dogs where I'm standing is Ali, had a look at it yet, 13 now, into the tunnel, number 14, coming around to the long jump, we're over the long jump, we're coming across now to the rigid tunnel, we're coming around to 18, there's 18, oh, that little bit of wonder pass just picked up a refusal there, five folks, and a roll pole as well. Just lost the concentration, unlucky there. The Union Kneeler. We'll see them later on, I'm sure. So there's five volts on that Five volts on that the last one. So next in, here we go. We have Alan Smith working chilly border collie, nine and a quarter years of age. I like it when people are precise with the age. Nine and a quarter. So Alan Chili. Starting off on the tyre. Here we go. Rapid bit of movement there from Alan. Get himself across to where he wanted to be. Ooh, we had a look. We did have a look at that tunnel, but we're all right. We're flowing nicely now into the tunnel. Bit of lane work there for Alan. Should he have no problem whatsoever there? So, number 10, up to the weeds. Great move entry again. Across the middle of the arena now, coming around to 13 into the rigid tunnel, far corner, coming around there to the long jump. And the long jump's taken nicely now towards the tunnel. We're having a look at that jump, but we're okay. We're okay, well handled. Swing just round for 18. Come on, Alan. Come on, Chile. And across the finishing line in 40.48. Superb run. Oh, I'm enjoying this one. You enjoyed this one as well? Oh, is that it? Are you enjoying this one as well? Thank you very much. On we go, our seventh competitor is Oliver, working sneak, keen, border college, six years of age. <laughs> so a little bit of creep there, a little bit of creep there towards the time, but we're all right. Over the iron, switching through to the gap of two hurdles there, across the number eight. Right hand hand direction there, pointed towards the weeds and we picked up no problem whatsoever. Over 13, it's been good so far, so it's not been unlucky. Now working away towards that rigid tunnel again. We had a quick look, but we're all right. We're coming around for 18 again. This is running really nice, this course. I like this one. Over the finishing line, 36.313. Superb time. Eight to go, Matthew Goodliffe with Quincy, Border Collie, agility champion as well. Next year we've got Chris working Aussie, Kelby, seven years of age. And uh, tells Aussie comes out of very, every run thinking that he's won. I like the idea of that. And he's very willful, but we'll always try hard. <laughs> Nicely handled again. Oh, we've gone around the far side, but it still works. Might have lost a little bit of time, but there again, why not? So we're going to cross now to number 10, which we've done, the Iron's Hurdle, we're into the weeds, nice steady set of weeds. Just picking the pace up now towards 13, we're over 13, we're into the rigid tunnel. Long jump, no problem at all, nicely handled again, swapping sides, we're into the rigid tunnel, he's staying there to pull the dog around with him. Beautifully handled again, rapid change over, and across the finishing line, whoa! 38.94. 
Apologies for that, I just literally go to the commentary sheets and uh, fortunately Matthew isn't even. I didn't know that. I didn't, didn't think it was. On we go, we're on to Joe Philippe now, Scooter, Border Collie, four years of age. Scooter, that's his Scooter's second year of trust. She's super keen for agility and loves to crowd cheer her on. So don't be afraid to uh, cheer on this one. She's small but keeps up in attitude and will do very best. You can see a verbal dog. Get something completely enjoying them doing what they're doing, they get all fired up and they show them by barking and obviously competing the best of as well. So, Joe up to do plenty of verbal as well. So, the scooter knows that uh, needs to scoot literally around, of course. Cross 13, they're taking a quite wide on the right hand side of the turn. No worries so far, a bit of scooting there going around that corner. That was a good wide turn. Round to 18, we've got, oh, roll the pole, one to go, come on Scooter, yes, 36.448, great time with five faults. Next up we've got Junie again, Princess Alia, Princess Alia working at Border Collie, two years of age, winner of the 2017 KCI Festival, that's the International Festival, which the Kennel Club hold every year in the UK, I think that's in August if I recollect. So if you are new to agility, you're watching this, you're getting in, what's going on here? Have a look on the Kennel Club website, all the cross pages as well, also gives you information on how to start, where to go, who to contact and so on. You could be pretty well away every weekend of the year competing. It's around the UK at this. And at the moment, these two are having a crack at I'm always a bit cautious when I say sometimes, because there is a thing called commentator's curse, but when you're in tunnels, you're all right. So, coming down towards this bottom tunnel nearest the commentary point by me, and we've got three to go. Bit of a wide turn, lost a little bit of time there. We've got one to go. Ooh, yes! 37.132. Great run again. So you don't forget, two-part competition. This is a two-part competition. So later on this afternoon, might be this morning, I'm going to lose track of time sometimes here at Crofts. Later on today we've got the agility round. And those two will be combined to give us our overall winners. So we started off with the large dogs, we're now onto the medium sized dogs. So if you are if you're new to any all at their levels, that's our uh, the levels they need to be for the height of the dog. So small dogs, medium dogs, large dogs. Also got flyball on today, if you like flyball, if you've never seen flyball, that's on this afternoon as well. It's the quarter final this afternoon, as I recollect. There'll be plenty of noise going on later on. I'm sure the two coach modes from Scotland will join us by then, so there'll be even more noise from Scottish handlers and followers. So, just finally checking that out. As you can see, we've got a new tyre now in the agility world. It's not a rigid tyre, it actually parks at the top of the bottom. So the dog should make contact with it. It will actually pass and uh, should not injure the dog. And I think that a great, uh, a great difference to what we've had in years gone by. I remember the days of chain tyres on the I used to think they caused a lot of hassle for a lot of people. But we're ready to go. Rob's given me the thumbs up. Rob's had time, he's at the top there. As you can see, we've got electronic and Rob as well doing a manual just in case. So, first of the mediums to go, Nick Kirkett with ballet, border collie, eight years of age, first time at Crufts. Uh, very proud of getting this getting here. Looking forward to running on the green carpet and giving it all for some special people. There's some special people following them, obviously. Another bill. Nice, steady flowing moves at the moment. Good time. Look at the wraparound turn on that wing. Beautiful. So it might be deceiving sometimes. You look at a dog and it's going slowly, but it can make that time up on that turn around that wing. It's not going wide. It will literally wrap itself around the eye house wing. So we're into the ridging tunnel on the far end. We're coming down towards the other ridging tunnel. We had a quick look, but we're alright, we're alright, Nick doing okay. We're coming around for 18. Quick look again. Come on, Nick, two to go, one to go. Oh, roll the pole, one lucky there. Five fold Sonic and Ballet. 38 5. Not bad. Next thing we've got Haley Telling. Haley's working Teal, Shepherd Sheep Dog, four years of age, another agility champion. So I just line the dog up. She's doing a good recall distance, as you can see, from the dog to the tire. So the dog will put the pace up. Bit of a hop and a skip there as well. As we came across. Bit of herbal air from Haley, just keeping Teal. Where she wants to be. 
into the tunnel. Now our legs are working. And the dogs are as well. Nice sweeping turn. Beautifully handled again. Swap inside from left to right. Into the weaves. Rapid run up to those weaves. Plenty of verbal still there from Teal. We're into the rigid tunnel. Number 14. They're coming around with his long jump. Over the long jump. Now down towards the rigid tunnel. Quick look at the arm. We're okay. We're going to pull the dog out. We're going to swap sides. We're coming around to the IOMs. We've got one to go. Yeah! 37.239 for Haley and Teal. Okay, so next to go in the mediums, Stefan Nagel working Annie Pyrene and Sheepdog 3 years of age. He's an agility charge, agility laser counselor in the Regional Dog Association. He's been doing agility since 2002 with an Australian Shepherd. I wouldn't tell you more, but I want to watch the dog go. Nice to see uh, Pyrene is competing. A lot of breeds out there that don't do these models at all. There you go. So, a nice flowing run at the moment, round to number nine. We're working away towards the weaves now. We're into the weaves, no problem at all. Good skipping motion down through the weaves, round to number 13. Up to the rigid tunnel, probably picking the speed up a little bit now as we're going round now towards this rigid tunnel. And we're into the tunnel entrance, no problem at all. So we've just got to get this on the right side. We have, we picked the dog up, we've swapped sides nicely. We're coming around, we want to go, come on. 43.33. Super run there for Stefan and Annie. So next to go, Jürgen with Aon Shepherd Sheep Dog, nine years of age. Uh, lives in the Netherlands. See the Aon Shelty, nine years of age. Very happy that they're at Crofts. So he's a very nice dog, always wants to work and very enthusiastic. I like Shepherds, I must have been. Great coat on them as well. Just roll the pole now, number three, so five at the moment. So we're just looking, don't forget, for the uh, an ideal world, you double elimination. You probably won't be in the final tonight. If you've got a five, for instance, in this, then clearly later on, you never know. So, flowing nicely through those weaves. Round to the eye, I'm turned up towards that rigid tunnel in the far corner again. Long jump, a bit of a blast now towards the tunnel. Logan's legs going down there, get the dog motivated again round for number 18. We've got three to go. We're on five at the moment, I think with some fox possible. The time's unlucky there, but well done. Great run for the two of you. Next in, Abigail Doxford, working Whitfield, working Cocker Spaniel, seven years of age. Rescue working Cocker down. This is can be a bit of a handful sometimes. Very fun dog, loves big crowds, really enjoys craft. It's the second year here, and she's going to enjoy herself. They're both going to enjoy themselves, that's what it's all about. Again, working cockers, you get these right, they are rapid. Just a little bit of time there, just a little bit of time there as we run around. Two, three, and four. Now the pace is going to be We've got a bit of bling on as well. And up towards the weeds. Super weave entry again, beautifully done. We'll quick look at the obstacle number two there, but we're all right. Sweeping turn there, round from 12 to 13 to that rigid tunnel. This is looking good, into the rigid tunnel. We're in the right end. There you go, Abigail hanging back there, picking the dog and 18, swapping side drag, we want to go, come on! Yes, Abigail and Whitfield, 38, 38.749, super run. Here he is, local, here she is, a local lady, Nicola Garrett, working Z, Shannon Sheepdogs, uh, second crops they've been here now and uh, represented the company UK in three international events. 2017, they won a gold medal at the WAO event in the Netherlands last year. So, as you can see, we're in a starting position there with a bottom in the air, a little bit more leverage as we take off, maybe, I don't know, possibly a bit like an athlete, I suppose. What do I have to what if this train kind of works as soon as it does make the fix of time to look how the dogs do start and start to go from lying down to the city. So on the move. So at the moment, working way up towards the weeds. And we're going to get there as well. Nice steady set of weeds. Coming around at the 13. Far corner now. Pace going to pick up now as we come towards this lot of this rigid tunnel down near us to me. We're having a quick look at Nick. Lost a little bit of time there. The dog is concentrating on where he's going. Oh my word. A little bit of wheel spin there. Handbrake went on. And we're over the finishing line in 40.87. That's for Nick and uh, Z. 
Uh, next to we should have Lara Staplehurst working healthy, eight years of age. Nicely swapped, beautifully handled across the finishing line in 40.586. Well done, Lara and Alfie. So, next to go, we've got Catherine Snodgrass. Oh, God, sorry, I do apologise. It has been a blue shot that she's done four years of age. Very special dog for her. She's had the first minute that she's bred. And I saw her, I knew she had to stay. Always does the best and loves the game of agility. I like the idea of that considering. Yeah, the, play, the dogs enjoy what they do. They wouldn't do it if they didn't enjoy doing it as we can. So we've got the wrong way there, unfortunately. So we picked up a little bit of an issue. Back in the next to the world. Here the finish line. They'll continue working. At the end of the day, they're qualified to be here. It takes a lot of doing. They're competing against hundreds of dogs. To be here in the main arena. The Kenting Arena, of course. Plenty of verbal uh, from Casper going down around the corner. Across the finish line, a big round of applause and 40 with an elimination, but hey ho, we're the nice and right. Okay, ninth in, we should have Jesus Mocker, no, but Mocker, English Mocker Spaniel, two years of age. The Spanish competitor, usually competing in Europe, European Open, Agility World Championships, World Agility Open, since I love the rough the IA, IAF, I like that reference. There you go, good flowing starch generator. Another English cock span. This is a little bit warm, isn't it? Look at the tight zip jam there. Put it wide, isn't it? Made up for that with speed going down there. I like the look of this. Rock us on a roll here. We're up the top corner. We're into the weaves. Beautifully sat down to the weaves there. Round the 13. Good sweeping turn around towards the rigid tunnel again. Picks the dog up over the long jump. Come on. Come on, Bucket. In the tunnel, look, look, look there, Jesus, he came round, but we're all right, we're swapping sides again, we've got two to go, we've got one to go. Beautiful run, 37.46. I like that, super partnership. So, we're on to Smalls. Bear me a second, I need a quick bit of liquid. Okay, so if you are ringside and you're contemplating when this finish is moving on, please don't. Okay, please don't. We've got the team coming up. The Crufts Team Large Final. So this is actually a final. Teams of four dogs going. And if we get four clears in a team, you'll probably see me run around the ring going mad. Because it doesn't happen very often when you do it once. Right. We're on to the small dogs. And we start off with Nico. Working Jip, Border Terrier, seven years of age. All the way from Belgium. So we've got an international group handling uh, in this competition as well, as you can see. Also, I think it's Friday, Saturday, and we've got international handlers here as well. Might be Saturday for the first one. And it's always interesting to watch the international handlers as well as the, uh, obviously, the UK handlers as well. Because everyone has their own set style. And so we lost our dog there from where I was. We can see, unfortunately, just took the eye off the dog. So we've got a 5R there, that's a refusal. Plenty of verbal there from Nico, and as you can hear, plenty of verbal from Chip. So yeah, if you are around and you're not uh, rushing off, please stay ringside and watch the first one to have a look at that tunnel. But it's a terrier, they like tunnels, don't they, at the end of the day? Uh, please stay and watch the, uh, the team final, it's a large team final, it's a super event to watch. And if we do get four players, I say, I'll be a happy bunny. I think, I think the team would as well. So, they've got five faults at the moment, they're floating around quite nicely around to number 18. We've got two to go, and across the finishing line, all the way from Belgium, 47.37. 
for Nico and Chip. Next in we should have Sally Cooper working Keiko. Troy Poodle, nine years of age. This is uh, Sally's first agility dog and the first time competing in the British Open. Which probably means it's the first time they've competed at Crofts maybe, but I might be wrong. You never know. Nicely handled. I like it when the handlers do a skip as well. So the dog's going over to jump. A bit like Alan Clary last year. He had me in stitches as he skips were going around. Nice. Pace is picking up round now towards number eight. Coming around to nine, nicely handled, swap sides again. Sending the dog onto the weeds. Beautiful entry. Look at that, skipping down very, very quick as well for a small dog. 13's no problem at all. We're into that rigid tunnel. And we're sweeping around now for the long jump. Down towards the rigid tunnel. Come on, Kiko. Come on, Sally. We've got three to go. Over 18. We've got two to go. Number 19 and number 20. Yes! 42.358. Lovely run there from Sally and Keiko. Next in from Germany, we've got Tanya Gu working Mabel, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, ten and a half years of age. Uh, she was ready to retire Mabel after the KCAF, but then she surprised us by qualifying for Crufts. So, thanks very proud. Mabel is bred by herself. Size agility, she likes chasing birds. There you go. So a nice steady run at the moment. As you can see, 11 and a half years of, uh, 10 and a half years of age. Oh, there's a tunnel now. I like going fast through tunnels. Come on, a little bit of pace encouragement there. From Tanya. And the speed picked up there from Mabel. So we're going towards the weeds and we're into the weeds. Beautifully done. Round to number 13. Almost matches the colour of the hurdles. Again, we've seen the tunnel. We need a, we need an obstacle course just with tunnels. Because the dog certainly likes the tunnels. We'll go quicker again. Here we go, here we go. Oh no, we've got on this side. I thought we were going straight to the other side. We're not, we're going this side. So the pace didn't pick up because we weren't sure if we're going for the jump. But we nevertheless, we've got two to go. Come on, Tanya, come on, Mabel. Ten and a half years of age, well done. Next to go, Sarah McLean with Milo, Jack Russell Terrier, three years of age, got competed six years ago with a feisty child. Milo's second agility dog, who is very nervous and unmotivated dog, I've worked hard to create a happy dog and focus with enthusiasm as well. Well, you've done your work right so far, and I just caught the corner off in the eye. Working nice again, nice wrap around the wing. Even jumped into the rigid tunnel. You sometimes get dogs that run in, and you sometimes get dogs that jump into the tunnel. That was a jump, though, definitely. We're in the weeds. Beautifully done. Round to 13. We'll jump in again from where I am. The back legs up in the air as well. Does make you smile. In the rigid tunnel. Come on, Milo. Come on, Sarah. We've got three to go over number 18. We'll stay in that side to get a tighter turn, maybe. Come on. Yeah, sideways taken for Milo and Sarah. 41.378. He's back again. It's Mr. Alan Bray, working Tatiana, mid miniature poodle, 10 years of age, another agility champion. So, Alan doing the recall. Tatiana away, swapping around. Oh, lost a little bit of time there. Only a little bit, we lost a little bit. Don't forget this is one like any athletic sport competitions on hundreds of a second. It's a difference of technology nowadays that we've got in the agility world. And don't forget, it's 40 years since agility was ever seen at Crofts. Competitive-wise, I think it's 38 years off the top of my head. 40 years ago since it was first shown as a demonstration event. And it's changed considerably. And at the moment, Alan's flying around beautifully. He's coming down to 17, the tunnel. Tatiana's in it. Alan holding steady back to get the correct. We've got two to go. Come on, Alan. Yes, well done. 42.86. And that has given him the possibility of being in the final later on this evening. Bonnie Quick's next, working Shelley, Jack Russell, Cross Collie. This is an agility champion. This is quick, I can tell you. Watch this one. Hard by my name, goal hearted by nature. Shelley's a kind, loving, and gifted. Seven CCs, TGB, etc. 
So due to give birth at the end of February, so may be rather larger post-pregnancy. Ah, oh, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. She is fine. Beautiful start. Because she's a dog out. Beautifully handled. Sweeping turns there. Lost a little bit on the one turn, but not a lot. We can make up for that. Pushes the dog out, picks the dog up, turns sides and pushes across out to the weaves. We're in the weaves. Beautiful set of weaves. Bonnie's taking the shortcut. Round now to the I am turtle and we're into the tunnel. We're in the tunnel. We're out of it. We're over the long jump. We've got the rigid tunnel coming up. Here it is. Come on round for 18. Quick swap of tackle sides there. We're over the finishing jump. Beautiful run. 35.83. Superb run from Bonnie and Shelley. Lysandra's in next, working Lou Sheep and Shep, Sheep Dog. Shep and Sheep Dog, again, by the way, around in a minute. Seven years of age, FCI Team World Cup champion in 2016. Uh, Lou is a Danish and Swedish agility champion. Competed in 13 different countries so far. 13 different countries. It's a way to travel the world. This is how it has changed in 40 years, you see. You can go from Birmingham to... Maybe, maybe go from Birmingham down to Coventry and you can beat it. Travel around the world, man. We've also got obviously people who train around the world and so on. A lot of UK handlers train worldwide. And likewise, worldwide come to us as well. Which is great, that's what it's all about. The main thing is though, it started off in the UK, we bought it out. And at the moment, Lou and Lysandra are doing absolutely fantastic, superb run. Beautiful run. 37.94. And our last competitor to go, Michelle from the Netherlands, working Dicky Dutch. Shetland Sheepdog, seven years of age, fifth time at Crafts and fourth with Dicky. So proud to be here again. We did five EOs and seven WCs. He's an absolute watch in a lifetime. Don Michelle works with the Dog Sports for the Dutch Cattle Club. So we got another verbal of the dog. Nicely. Look at why number two there, always following Charles Heels possibly as it came towards the obstacle. But we're doing alright at the moment. Right turn to 30. Oh, that was close. That was close. But we're alright, we're back on track now. We're coming down to towards that rigid tunnel. Oh, we're going to look again. We're okay, coming for 18. They've got three to go. What do you reckon? I reckon we're looking good. One to go. Come on. Yes, Dinky. And Michelle finishing on a clear. Thank you very much. Stay ringside for sure. We have a presentation. And as I say, if you want to stay around by us, you're most welcome to for the large team. Well worth watching. Back very, very shortly.
Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please. It's presentation time. And Jackie, our judge, will be doing presentations again. Once again, I do apologise if I pronounce your name wrong. I do my best, but sometimes it's hard work. In first place in the smalls was agility champion Gold Art Trail of Flame with Bonnie Quick. What a run. Superb. Second. Thank you very much. There we are. Second was Louisiana. Hard and around. Something along those lines. I say I do apologise. On to the mediums. The winner of the mediums was Haley Telling with Agility Champion, New Illusions. Second was Asus Fernandez Crespo. Hopefully that's right. Working a copper spaniel. Yeah, I'll come the next that one. And the winner of the large jumping was Salik Keen with Oliver Monkhart. And second place was Juni Arenas working Pete Diggers and Cora. And fingers crossed I haven't got too many of those wrong. At any rate, I'm just going to collect those back. I say if you are just ring, join us ringside now, we will in a minute. It's lap of honor time! Okay, so shortly coming up, as you can see, the course will be available. Hello, my name is Sarah, and this is my hearing dog called Waffle. From a child that wouldn't even look into someone's eyes or even make eye contact, to a child that is happy to explain, this is my hearing dog, this is what they do for me, it, it's a massive change. There was profoundly deaf. Her deafness is caused by CMV infection. It was a shock to the family so, because we were thinking of how her future is going to be and everything. It has affected her on a daily basis. Um, she wouldn't communicate with others. She wouldn't make any eye contact with uh, anybody out and about. I couldn't sleep night time without her and now I can. She always check on me. Before I had struggled friendships, stuff like that, I wouldn't talk to strangers or tell them like, this is my doll, but now I'm proud to say it. It brings a joy, happiness. Just seeing the smile on her face will make our day because it's just, uh, it's been huge what Waffle has brought for her. In the morning, alarm go on, she wakes me up before school and then she jump on my bed and then I give her a fuss and then I just get ready for school. If Sarah's upstairs in her room, we'll say, Waffle, go call Sarah. She'll go upstairs, get Sarah, bring her downstairs. We have a purse that um, we put a message in it and she'll take it to Sarah and then bring it back for us. When I was applying for um, Hearing Dog, I didn't think that it will have such a huge impact on our lives. It has brought her confidence, it has brought her everything to be honest. It's brought her what she is now, it's because of Waffle. She really, really lucky and there's nothing I can't do without her. I don't feel shy anymore when I'm with her, I feel brave with her. Gail Wild, and this is my urban search and rescue dog called Taz. To be perfectly honest, I don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> he's a brilliant dog, um, he's a fantastic working dog, and at home he just likes to curl up in a wee ball, sometimes on your lap, and run after a tennis ball like all collies. <laughs> Taz is a search dog that's been trained to do urban rural and coastline riverbank searches. 
So my role is he'll come back and he'll tell me where he believes a casualty is and he will lead me to that particular spot. In this kind of environment he'll have boots on uh, just to protect his feet and his jacket on with light so we can see where he's going. Do you know what, looking back, the proudest moment I could have been was at the Cluther. I remember en route we were told the police helicopter had landed on the Cluther and tasked with searching the rubble pile and surrounding area to locate peoples within the rubble pile itself. The building came down in such a way it almost like come down in three stages. So it needed um, someone who was either very small or the dog to actually get into those spaces and the dog was perfect. When he's actually on the job and he's got his coat on, he hears his bell, or his harness on and he hears his bell, he goes straight into work mode, no question. It showed immense courage to actually go into something which was still dynamic. The roundabout it, the trouble falling, there was still dust everywhere. We're fine. It managed to save life in the sense that people who were working there were put at risk. It was indispensable. You train as best as you can in all different environments, but that night he just showed what a wonderful dog he was. I think Taz is just a hero. It's a remarkable dog, and when called upon to serve, it's absolutely unique. Training Taz has been a long journey. He has gone out above and beyond of what I expected of him. He just overcomes every hurdle that we show him. To be Taz's owner, it makes me unbelievably proud of him. It really, really does. I think I saw in Jack what I saw in myself. People had given up on Jack, a little bit like people had given up on me as a child. first thing I'd say about Jack is that he, he loves being in front of the camera, he loves to pose and hopefully he loves being with me. He'd had three homes before me and I couldn't walk him on the beach, I couldn't walk him with other dogs because of his behavioural problems, sort of fear aggression, no socialisation with other dogs whatsoever and he would turn on me as well. People don't believe me that he was like that. I, I had many moments where I thought, oh my goodness, am I going to be able to turn this dog around? I guess there was a little part of me that wanted to prove other people wrong as well. I had an extensive psychiatric history. And my main problems have been anorexia, PTSD, and dissociative disorders. That's a, a medley that creates for quite a, a difficult existence. Jack is certainly the first thing that I've ever, ever attached to, and he's taught me what love is. I owe Jack for teaching me some of the sort of most fundamental emotions that, that humans should have, um, and maybe things that people take for granted. I mean, he's got to the stage now where he's been accepted to train as my assistance dog. If I need my medication, he will we'll retrieve that to me, so I'm pretty in tune with my needs. I've got more out of Jack than I, I would have ever believed, yeah. I think that very indication to me shows me really how far he has come. The work that he's done is astonishing, really. Sounds, I don't know, a little bit corny, but he honestly saves my life every day. He is the reason I carry on.
Well, a very good morning to you all, wherever you are watching Crufts 2018. This is uh, Jim Rosenthal alongside Graham Partridge in the main arena at the NEC just outside of Birmingham. And we have liftoff for the greatest dog show in the world. First morning, we're going to be going right the way with you here on uh, youtube.com forward slash Crufts all the way through to the big event on Sunday night when best in show is crown and we're all set for the first action which will be a few minutes away the Kennel Club British Open final Graham Partridge alongside me as always and Graham delighted to be back in situ with you high in the main arena here and a very very exciting time for every dog lover it is good morning Jim good morning everybody at home um, I'm in my element now. I'm here at the biggest and best dog show in the world. I've got the best seat in the house uh, and I get to see everything that goes on. So I'm, I'm a really happy bunny. And as you say, uh, this is the 40th anniversary now of agility. So lots to celebrate this weekend. Uh, and it promises to be really, really exciting. Don't forget, uh, you can also watch us on Facebook now on the Dog Agility page, uh, as well as we shall also be on YouTube as well. Absolutely, and as always, we welcome involvement from you. We want all your questions, we want all your observations as well on, on YouTube. And you've actually been very, very quickly uh, off the mark at uh, hashtag Ask Crufts. And we've already had a, a question, uh, Graham, about, about the carpet out there, um, um, about the quality of the carpet. I believe it was a new one laid last year, if my memory serves me right. It is. This is carpet that's been used at the World Championships uh, for the last couple of years. It is top quality, very, very expensive. And it's probably the best carpet that I've seen uh, in all the years that uh, Crofts has been staging agility. Will you get the odd slip? Yes, you will. But that's as much about dogs not having competed here before getting used to running on an artificial surface because day in day out uh, the dogs are usually used to running on grass or indoors on sand or some sort of composite material uh, if you come into Crufts you really need to go and do a bit of practicing and it's evident which dogs are practiced and which dogs are still trying to just get used to a different footing and uh, as well as the carpet there's a very different surface uh, for dogs and handlers uh, of Graham the arena which is filling up rapidly as we speak, pretty early in the morning here. That can be a daunting prospect, both for animal and handler. Yes, and there is no substitute for experience in this situation. Uh, dogs that are here for the first time will still be taken in the surroundings. Some dogs will love it. Other dogs will be just a little bit apprehensive. Um, some of the more nervous breeds, they'll think, oh, I'm not quite sure about this. It is still fairly quiet, but it's a big ask. It's a big ask of everybody, competitors, handlers, dogs alike. And uh, very many happy returns to the agility world, 40 years anniversary since, since it started. And it's quite an interesting story, isn't it? It was started almost, um, oh, well, we'll have a go at this, ha ha have a try 40 years ago. And immediately uh, the, the Kennel Club and everybody at Crufts realised they had a little sporting gem on their hands. It was. They were looking basically to, to fill some time in the arena. Um, and they came up with this idea of, of, of mirrors, horse, horse show jumping, really. And it's just gone viral. I mean, it, it really has. 40 years, the, the, the progress has just been amazing. 42 countries uh, last year at the European Championships. Uh, we've got people this year competing on Saturday from Montenegro, China, America. It, uh, and also, I think at the, at the last World Champs, someone from Israel, would you believe? Wow, I think uh, over 3,500 dogs from overseas are here at Crafton. New entries from Bahrain, Kazakhstan and Peru are here for, for the very first time. But going back to agility, we're getting set, by the way, for the Kennel Club uh, British Open final. Uh, just walking the course, as, as, uh, as, 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 you, can, as uh, you can see there. Um, the, and we... The, the rules of agility have not really changed, have they, over those 40 years? It's still essentially the same. No, they, they, the rules have, haven't changed a great deal. What has changed is uh, the way we do things, the way the obstacles we use. Uh, as you would expect in 40 years, we've taken great strides in, in health and safety. Safety of the dog is absolutely paramount. Uh, 
um, and you'll see that uh, you'll notice if you if you if you regularly watch agility uh, the uh, collapsible tunnel was taken out and is now uh, no longer a recognized piece of equipment and again it's things like that which are done on grounds of safety when we first started doing agility dogs were jumping two the last dogs were jumping two foot six i think that that's the, the essence of it isn't it um, it's got to be fun it's got to have spectator appeal but it mustn't in any shape or form be dangerous no and, and that's the first thing that a judge has to think about when they're setting courses safety of the dog um, and, and that's that's where we come from these days and quite rightly so and you also said it should be fun and that is to the dogs this is just a, should be a massive game uh, anyone who says that we force our dogs to do this quite frankly doesn't know what they're talking about it's all done with reward and motivational methods um, uh, and it's great fun it is the Crufts large team final that we're looking forward to the first action that we'll see here in the arena on the opening day of Crufts 2018 and uh, this Graham they, they compete throughout the year to get here and uh, heats winners uh, come to Croft and we have eight teams who are preparing to, uh, to be in action today just tell us a little bit about the, the actual competition could you competition is for four dogs and four handlers uh, they run it as a relay race you'll notice when uh, the second dog goes he will take a baton from the incoming handler the baton remains in the box again that's for a safety reason so you don't accidentally swing it around and hit the dog um, and they complete the course as you would normally in agility there's a couple of extra rules if you drop the baton or you throw the baton it's got to be passed hand to hand there'll be faults for that if you don't do it correctly if your dog makes a mistake such as has a, a, a pee or a poo can i say that you can uh, say that on youtube i don't whole, think too many people will be offended by the that whole or on team, facebook the whole team gets eliminated and if one of the handlers or dogs gets eliminated anywhere on the course they must complete the course correctly uh, otherwise the whole team again will be eliminated and clear rounds uh, how crucial are they they're crucial and uh, try and get four clear rounds in a row from each team member is uh, is very difficult and you've had a little look at the course haven't you just uh, just uh, give us your expert analysis of, of the course for this Crufts large team final Jackie Gardner is the judge for this and she said a very sensible sensible course I'll talk you around it within the first couple of dogs um, and it gives everybody a chance to do it as I say to get one dog round clear here at Crufts in an agility course is difficult to get four round in a team um, is even more difficult so the, what I say every year is you've got to keep going even if the first dog's been eliminated there are only eight teams in this you've always got a chance and uh, just uh, marking your card where, wherever you're joining us uh, there's been a bit of weather around uh, Birmingham especially up in, up in the northwest as I understand it and there's been one or two uh, last minute changes in the teams and uh, it, 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 um, it, it might be slightly disorganised, this one, but we will do our very best for you, as always. I think, I think that's called hedging your bets there, Jim, in case we say someone's uh, who they aren't. Uh, we're, just, we're just marking everybody's card, Graham. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great moment, really. The first genuine action here in the main arena at Crufts, where we've uh, always seen terrific drama, terrific enjoyment, and a great spectacle for all of you watching. Jackie Gardner, our judge who has set this course, and the first uh, team coming out, Derbyshire One from Nottingham. And it is uh, Jackie McWinney with seven-year-old edge border collie to kick us off jackie in competing for 17 years at crafts and edge a grade seven dog that's the highest dog of all have a look at this course for us Greg. obstacle three is the weaving pole she does that correctly into what is effectively the wrong end of the tunnel up and over that a-frame over the pink and now they're going to do a little circle here little circle round another pole down onto the seesaw they're going to turn left off the seesaw again didn't make the contact on the end onto the dog walk yeah 
Yes, nicely done. Round that one into the tunnel, back out, and then they're coming towards the finish where they'll hand over. Experienced Mark Wingate win with Dixie eight-year-old Border Collie, third time at Crufts, representing Derbyshire here this morning. Is Dixie and uh, picking up a few very early faults as well there, Graham. They're currently running on 20 faults this team. The most important thing is to try and avoid the dreaded elimination, which will carry 100 faults. Yeah. If you can get four four people round without being eliminated, you'll be in with a good chance. And it looks as uh, they're still on 20 faults and then. Um, setting of course the time that will be the benchmark for the other team as well and that's a very decent round still on 24th here comes Richard Spencer with Jake nine-year-old working sheepdog first time at Crufts for Jake and losing it there a little bit where do I have to go from here and as you always point out Graham it's not the dog's fault uh, it is the handlers it is dog totally reliant on uh, the handle and the handler will only have seen the course about maybe half an hour before so he's having to memorise it. He's also having to keep an eye on the dog, decide where he wants to go. So uh, over, all in all, it's pretty easy, really. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a, might not be the quickest round, but it is faultless thus far for Richard Spencer and Jake. And thus far, commentator's curse picks up uh, five faults and wondering a bit about going into that tunnel too. So sadly, a... a uh, just a little bit of a hesitancy at the end there as Carol Stapley and Spooky comes out. First time at Crufts. Bit of a nervous dog is Spooky as well. But very, very pleased to have made it onto the Crufts carpet. And uh, there's a few more faults. There's a bit of hesitation too. Faults racking up now. 35 in all. Never easy to be the first team in a relay up and over the dog walk let's see what the finish is going to be like bit of hesitancy but making contact at the end there anyway more hesitancy at that, uh, and as it comes through to the finish now and a little failure at the finish as well was it very good 35 penalties there time of 167.37 uh, the course time uh, for those who are interested, is 220 seconds for the whole team. That is Derbyshire one then setting the standard. White horse agility, experienced team, not too far to come from Crick in Northamptonshire. Are next to go in the large team, highly rated. Lorna Peachy going first with nine-year-old Border Collie, Mint. What an amazing dog, this one. So the dogs are all related. This is uh, the, I think it's the son of uh, the great Diesel, that used to be uh, managed by Lorna's husband. And there's an immediate increase in speed and intensity as well. Through that tunnel very, very quickly up and down over the A-frame. Just a slight hesitancy, but it's quick and it's clean so far and swerving away uh, from the seesaw there. Back up over it this time. Faultless so far and pretty quick. This is good from Lorna and from Mint as well. There are five faults picked up. Not too much time lost though. Up and down over the dog walk. Bit of hesitancy there again at the end, but this is good. This is definitely the best that we have seen thus far. 37 and just five faults. A quick round and the baton is passed and on they go and it is Matthew Goodlift with Quincy nine-year-old border collie seventh year competing at Crofts Graham tremendously experienced uh, pair this won the medals at the world and European championships just decided to retire this dog from international competition this year but still very very competitive Matt uh, engaged to Natasha Wise are going to get married later on this year so that's going to be a great occasion looking for my invitation in the post but uh, <laughs> This team, if they can uh, get round, will uh, certainly be in the mix here, I think, but still only 10 at the moment. Quincy and uh, Matthew Goodliffe, that's a very tidy round. And we're off now with Sam Johnson and Mickey, six-year-old Border Collie, owned and trained by Eileen Watson. Just an amazing dog who absolutely loves this sport of agility. 
quite a feat handling somebody else's dog. I say it's not his dog, so he's doing an absolutely fantastic job. But Sam's been there, seen it, and done it all, oh, and gets an elimination for back jumping. So that's going to be uh, the end of their chances. But what a great effort! This is a yeah. good team. And must complete the course, as Graham pointed out, despite that elimination, because this is a relay, the Crux Large Team relay, and Natasha Wise. That's uh, the last dog in the team, Natasha's large dog, this one. Pebbles, five-year-old Border Collie, absolute firework of a dog, this one. With a deep love of agility and a great jumper there as well, Graham. My goodness me, what a leap that was. Yep, this is uh, Natasha's uh, sort of her latest dog, but uh, it's uh, taken a little bit of time to mature the pebbles, but actually coming really good just in the last couple of months, and uh, we're going to see her later on in the weekend in other competitions. So she'll be using this as a good bit of practice. And Pebbles completes the round, fun-loving dog at home, and a good round as well from Natasha, who always produces great things on the green carpet here at Crufts. Really unusual there, and unusual for Quincy. Just hesitated at the beginning, and hesita he hesitates. He's eliminated. <laughs> Next to go, Dark Destroyer Dragon Hearts uh, from north of the border from Lockerbie. Bethany Todd with Wilf, eight year old working sheepdog, a rescue working sheepdog from Morgan's Rescue in Cumbria. Very highly rated as well. And the competition up for grabs now, really. Yep, so the, the deeper we go into this competition, the more they'll all be looking at what's gone on before them. So at the moment, they're looking to get four dogs round here with less than 35 seconds. So onto the dog walk, must touch the white bits on the way up and on the way down. Sharp turn around there into the tunnel, and now they'll be looking for a good, quick change over here between number one and number two dogs. That's a very good round from Bethany Todd and from Wolf, handing over to uh, Nigel Staines with Zuma, 10-year-old uh, Kelpie. Decent age for agility, 10 years of age, isn't it, Graham? It is. Uh, people often say to me, uh, when can you start, when can you finish? You can't start competing in kennel club agility until the dog's 18 months of age. And the dog will tell you when he's had enough. You'll know in your own mind. And uh, But this dog's still fit and healthy and competitive. Interesting dog, this one. Zuma imported from a working farm in Australia for stud duties and actually lost an eye due to a thorn bush a couple of years ago. But concentrating on this course, and this is another good round from Nigel Staines and Zuma, the Kelpie, handing over to Faye Nemeth. Jess, six-year-old border collie. She's had five pups, by the way, all boys, and been doing agility for just over 13 years. So Jess should know her way around. Should, yep. As I say, once you get bitten by uh, the agility bug, you keep going. And unfortunately, she went around the jump that she was supposed to do and then back jumped it, which is an elimination. You must do the jump from the side of the number of places. So an elimination, but the round has to be competed because there is one more dog still to run. And the dog, of course, has no idea at all that she has been eliminated, completing the the course then and handing over to Helen Smith and Sonic nine-year-old cross absolutely crazy this one apparently lots of fun to train and loves agility but will do whatever the mood takes him and if they can get round with uh, no more than five bolts that'll put them into second place providing there are no time penalties but I don't think that's going to affect this team as you say it's really nice now to see this this dog here Crossbreed. He don't need to have a pedigree dog to compete in kennel club agility. You can have a mixed breed, mongrel, pedigree, whatever you want. So that's five on the end of the dog walk. Can she keep it clean? This is the finish for the Dark Destroyer Dragon Hearts from Lancaster. Puts them into second place with 105 in 162.948. Having an absolutely fantastic time there, looking at the handler all the time. And oh, probably one of the judges' easiest decisions of the day, I would suggest. <laughs> Next to go, 
Loon Valley Dog Training Club from Wharton up in Lancashire. Lynn Casson is the handler. The pet is Bella, three-year-old working sheepdog. And expect a noisy one here. We're anticipating Bella barking her way all the way round this very difficult course. I told you. Good work through the weaves. And absolutely burrowing through that tunnel as well, Graham. Just yep. A little bit of confusion there yep. about where the dog was expected to go. Again, just to explain a little bit, if you haven't seen it, that was an elimination for taking the wrong course, which gives me an opportunity actually to explain just a little bit about, about the handling. You, you can talk to the dog, you can use your body, you can't touch the dog. That's the only stipulation. If you touch the dog, you're going to get fucked. Lynn Casson and Bella completing their round and handing over to... Sharon Reader and Ted, six-year-old Border Collie, second year at Crufts. And this one can either be Super Ted or Crazy Ted. And at the moment, it's a super start to Ted's round. Quickly over the A-frame, great leap there as well. Picking up some faults. Up and down over the seesaw. But again, it's good and, and fast, despite those five faults earlier on. This will do nicely for Loon Valley Dog Training Club and for Sharon. And for Ted, completing the round and handing over to Sarah Thompson and Indy. Second time at Crofts with Law about Loon Valley. Three years of age, this dog, so still quite young, done really well to get get here because believe me qualifying for this competition uh, week in week out at various shows is very very difficult there can be 50 60 teams uh, easily at, at a show so it's, it's no mean feat just actually being here and that's what everyone wants to, want to be here at the biggest and best dog show in the world the dog walk negotiated successfully and faultlessly and the last dog is Rosalind Redmond for Loon Valley Dog Training. Lockie, six-year-old Springer Cross Collie. First dog. Tried agility five years ago and has never looked back. A real bouncy, happy character. And as each and every one of the competitors so far enjoying themselves hugely out there on the crops carpet. Point. Just look at the score, only 10 folks here at the moment. Looking very good for Loon Valley Dog Training Club. Carnforth, the pride of Carnforth so far. And that is a, a good finish too. And there we go, just a bit of hesitation there and you can see So Loon Valley leading at the moment as we await the arrival of Nedlo Purple. Sarah Williams and Bella, first agility dog, dog for Sarah, seven-year-old Bella, first time either of them have been to Crufts. Quite a moment for both handler and dog, Graham. It is. Um, it's one of those things when you get involved in a sport, and, and you you get a com your competitive head on this is where you where you want to be this and olympia which is the other prestige event uh, run by the kennel club everyone wants to go to olympia and crafts and they've made it um, and as you say it's just people can't understand what the excitement is but there's such a buzz and she's doing really really well here seven years of age just about in its prime now this dog nice and carefully as I say, it's not all about speed these competitions it's about accuracy trying to put these clear rounds on the board and it looks as though she's going to put one in I think she has it's definitely not the quickest round but Sarah and Bella a clear round for Nedlo Purple Michelle Gale and Simba eight-year-old Border Collie are next to go homebred dog just wonderful to run is Simba very honest animal too 
and well done Nedlow Purple from Waterlooville down there uh, in the south and uh, faultless so far Graham yep, just about got away with that not class the refusal not close enough to the jump for Jackie to call it so coming round now there's just a few more to go can she keep it together there haven't been too many problems with this little section of the course make sure they get in the tunnel rather than up a double nicely done this is going to be two clear rounds in a row we're holding our breath Fantastic two clear rounds for Nedlow Purple. Debbie Styles is uh, next to go. Let's see Zip Zip Hooray. And Debbie. And a bit of pace about this one. Just a slight turn. Where do I go next? And didn't lose a lot of time. And we are faultless still. Nedlow Purple. Oh dear. Oh dear. Go on, Graham. Dreaded commentator's curse. I'm going to put that down to just when she's turning you've got to tuck your arms in because this is the dog picks up on, on body language I mean if you, if you want to put a figure on it probably 85% 95% of this is all about body language so an elimination there handing over to the last dog Nikki Warren and Hussey six-year-old uh, Kelpie Nikki's uh, first Kelpie absolute workaholic this one as these dogs are, tend to be and the last dog for Nedlow Purple, who really have done exceptionally exceptionally well here. There's another elimination there, but the first two dogs in particular really set a very high standard. They did, and, it, and that's what makes these competitions really so difficult. You thought two clear rounds, absolutely fantastic, and then just one fraction of a second's inattention by the handler. The dog's popped up over the wrong jump, and the competition's gone. Um, very difficult. I never used to like doing teams because it, it, there's so much pressure. Because it's not just you that, that the problem is with it. You, you feel as though you're letting your team down. But really, what a really great effort there from the team from Southampton. We have two teams to go. Two teams to go it is. And at the moment, uh, Derbyshire 1 lead the way. 35 penalties, 167 seconds. And here's a... Uh, a replay that Nedlow Purple probably not and there we want are. to you see. You can just see that right hand of hers was pushed out, sending the dog away from her, but great effort. Our next quartet, the penultimate quartet. Top secret from Worthington in Leicester, uh, Jane Pettit and Bree, six-year-old Border Collie, second time at Crufts. Started life as a sheep dog, and uh, Jane saying that uh, Brie has made her agility, dreams and ambitions come true. So just to clarify now, we've got Derbyshire 1 are in first place on 35 penalties in a time of 167.37. It was showing Loon Valley. Um, it, the, there was an elimination on the part of Loon Valley, which was marked, but it didn't appear on your screens. So I hope that's cleared up if there was any confusion over that for you. OK, so Derbyshire 1, 35 penalties and 167 seconds to beat. And away we go with top secret, Worthington in Leicestershire. Nothing up and refusal there, just running past the face of the jump, so the dog had to turn back to do it. So that will be five penalties to count. The time looks uh, very respectable though, with those five penalties. Up and down over the dog walk, good contact at the end of it as well through that tunnel at the far end of the course a quick twist and a turn and that's the round completed by Jane over to Ruth Parker and picnic five-year-old border collie again debutants at Crufts never dreamed of being here did Ruth and the picnic an absolute star who apparently dominates the other dogs as well lovely looking dog this just yeah, turned the wrong way but there was no fault for that onto the seesaw, the seesaw must touch the ground before they get off it all, oh, just starting to rush a little bit now, just getting overexcited the handler just needs to just steady themselves down, calm the dog there's no rush, the time's not going to be an issue for any of these teams I don't think and Ruth handing over to Annette Annette Parker and Mays seven year old uh, border collie first grade seven dog grade seven, the highest grade that you can have an amazing journey first time at Crufts as well such a shame picking up an elimination and the reason for the elimination was the dog didn't complete all 12 weaving poles before moving on to the next obstacle which is a great shame because uh, it, this team it looks 
Just as they were doing really well. She's a great dog here. So, 115 volts they're running on at the moment. Nice turn there. Coming out towards the finish, and they'll be looking to get a good change over here. Could still get into places. Changing to Jenny Barr and Jazz. First time at Crufts as well. Through those weaves successfully. Quite a rare elimination that uh, actually not completing the weaves, isn't it, Graham? I've not seen that one too often, if I'm honest. No, and as a handler, you also have to just be watching your dog. And if you're not watching the dog, that's usually the reason the dog doesn't complete the weaving post. And uh, there is another elimination as well for uh, Jenny Barr and Jazz that will uh, push uh, Top Secret down the rankings. And so with one more uh, round to go, Derbyshire won with those 35 penalties and 167 seconds are the team to beat. Just one team to go. And just running across the face. Oh, just never actually got off the ground there. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> totally mistimed his jump. OK, the last of the eight teams in the Crufts Large Team Final. Barcher, dog training, old one. From Cheltenham, Greg Derrett. 28 years and counting at Crufts. And uh, for the four-year-old Border Collie addict, it is his first, Graham. It is a very, very experienced team that we're going to see here now. Uh, they'll know the tactics. It, it's always a very difficult decision to make with teams because the winning team now at the moment is on 35 penalties. If they decide that they're going to just actually go quite slowly and take their foot off the gas and take no risks, if per chance something happens out of the ordinary and they pick up an elimination or they pick up a few faults, they've, they've lost it. So it's a, it's a bit of a balancing act. You want steady, clear rounds in this competition. But this is very much a team to watch. All experienced internationals. Yep, now this is Joe Tristram now. Again, she's uh, been there, seen it and done it, as they say. She's got the T-shirt. Very experienced. Oh, no, I beg your pardon. This is Jess Clare here. I do, I do beg your pardon. Uh, so this is Jess. Again, she's won a gold medal at the World Championships, uh, as have... Uh, they've all been part of the same team, I think, for these, these four. So my apologies to, well, to her. They're looking very good at the moment, as we as we hinted they might do. March of dog training old one. And the third of the four dogs is away and running. And we could just be looking at the winning round here, as we alluded to earlier on. There has been a bit of late shuffling about uh, the handlers. But uh, it is a very, very competitive time, and it's comfortably the best time, and no faults as well. The 167 seconds and 35 penalties is the time to beat, and uh, with one more dog to run, this is looking very good for Berkshire dog training. All experienced international, all, comp in, all good competitors, and showing their class as well. Now, this is Johan Tristan. <laughs> I'd get it right in the end. I had, to, had a choice of two. But a crucial leg, this one. Absolutely crucial round. It is, but you can see that there's no rush. All these people have competed on the green carpet here before. They've been to cross before. They've competed internationally, so they know what they need to do. This is not an exceptionally difficult course, and they're, they're making it look easy. It's not, but they're making it look easy. It's all looking very good for Berkshire. Dog training, old woman. And this looks like uh, the winning round in 152 seconds and absolutely faultless and experienced the class of the field right at the end coming through and uh, winning the agility relay for large dogs the Crufts team agility relay Berkshire dog training old one have set the standard there is one more team uh, to go but uh, when you're the last dog to go uh, in a team that's had three clear rounds, that is the definition of pressure. Trust me, when you've got three other people. So, Berkshire, I might have celebrated a little bit prematurely for them. They have to sit and watch. 
Richard Davis and Jet, the seven-year-old border collie, owned and trained uh, by Richard from Maidstone. And this is good, and this is fast, and this is faultless as well. So Berkshire dog training, perhaps a few, the odd nail getting bitten watching Jet and Richard go around here at the moment. Very, very good work. And quick, just over 30 seconds and no faults. And that is one round completed and handing over to Emily Barnes. And Asbo's seven-year-old border collie. Now nicknamed a slog this one, but um, can run uh, when he wants to. Can, uh, Emily hasn't been there very long. She was struggling with the traffic, so they weren't sure whether she was actually going to make, make the team. But uh, again, Emily, very experienced. She knows what she needs to do. Oh, just push the dog around the jump. So five faults. So that actually does settle it there for the Berkshire Dog Training Club. Yeah, that's a crucial five faults. And uh, the Berkshire Dog Training Club look to have this title in the bag. But of course, the round have to be completed. And it's a very, very good round with just those five faults. Uh, well done, Emily. And well done to Asbo as well. Here's Will Davis and Spec, three-year-old working sheepdog. First time at Crufts uh, for the Sheepdog. Seventh time for Will. Very intelligent animal as well. Tight turns and enjoying every, every little obstacle that this course provides. Up and down over the seesaw. Another tight turn as well for Will and for Speck. So quickly over the dog walk. And that is... Uh, a good round for these two. Those five faults, though, so annoying for Tunbridge Wells. The Norland. <laughs> Bit of a dramatic change over there. It was, wasn't it? It was. This is, this is Sam Davis and Des, six-year-old working sheepdog, last dog to go in the Cross Large team event. On you go, Graham. And the reason uh, that they're so worried about catching the dog, if you can't have two dogs on the course at the same time. So, And, of course, this is a... a, a family team as well amongst other things so they, they probably all want to be doing it at the same time but still just with that five faults and that it's just fractions that uh, these competitions are, are run and lost but unfortunately that's completely put the uh, absolutely yeah. that's the, the crossed arms equals a disqualification so after a very very good start for Tunbridge Wells at Dunorlan uh, things are rather falling apart at the end there, but a big warm round of applause uh, for them. But in the end, it is the class of Barcher dog training old one, as anticipated, that has come through here. Great competition, uh, really nice course set by Jackie Gardner. And just going round there. And now I think this will probably uh, be seen again a few times <laughs> over there. Rugby tackle the dog, Absolutely. take the baton, and now you can go. There's, there's <laughs> our first entry for the highlights reel. Great pictures too. And just confirming for you then with the only clear round here on the opening day of Crofts uh, this morning, the experienced uh, international pedigree that is Berkshire Dog Training Old One uh, lift the trophy, the Agility Relay Crofts team for large dogs. Derbyshire won in second place, Dark Destroyer Dragon Hearts in third. I hope that has uh, whetted your appetite for everything that is to come uh, here in the arena, but it is great uh, that the action is underway.
with the lineup for the presentations and presentation made by Hector Heathcote who is a Kennel Club board member and it's, the winners are Berkshire Dog Training Old One Greg Derrick, Jess Claire Hugh, Lee Gibson, Joanne Tristam and I've got them all named correctly which will uh, keep them happy otherwise I will get a hard time later on today and they are very happy that's what they came to do very experienced team uh, and it showed in their performance uh, really was first class and a, and a great result for the second place team as well and just putting in Graham you said beforehand how essential clear rounds are one clear round equals winner uh, yeah, they had they had four clear rounds. As I say I've seen these competitions one with two clear rounds and and two dogs with faults. So uh, very good. So this is Derbyshire one. Uh, very very happy bunnies as well. You can tell that by the smiles, and they do the customary cluffs, cluffs lap of honour. Great competition. Uh, lots more to come here in the main arena. A really packed program throughout the day. And don't forget send your questions in if you've got anything you want to know about agility or fly ball uh, keep the questions coming in we'll do our very best to answer them uh, throughout the day of course we will and this is uh, Jim Rosenthal Graham Partridge signing off for the moment we will see you later in the day there you go ladies and gentlemen second time in my life I've ever seen that please when you watch the VT at the top please you've probably heard of Friends for Life if you've been on a regular basis but if you can watch the Friends for Life on the VT which is shortly coming up and if you want to text, you're most welcome to, to pick our winner for Sunday night. Thank you very much for your participation. Say please watch the VT back very shortly. Thank you very much. Hi, my name's Claire, and this is my canine partner, Griffin. I've been a full-time wheelchair user since the age of 13. I cannot walk, stand, or straighten both knees. Um, I literally just lived life in four walls, and that was it. When I applied for a canine partner, I didn't quite understand how much the dog would help me. Griffin has over 100 tasks that he can do day to day. Now I have Griffin, I don't need any carers, I don't need no help. Griffin is definitely my best friend. Um, he's a little bit of my hero as well. Life as a disabled person is just, it can be so hard. Um, you're very invisible, which is one of the things I love about having Griffin. He has opened up a whole new world for me. Um, I'm not invisible anymore. Um, <laughs> he just means the world to me. This is Buttons, my four-year-old Shih Tzu. I got her in 2013 and she came along just at the right time really. It wasn't really until I got back from hospital after being in the high dependency unit for two weeks that I really noticed our bond. Oh, it was pretty horrendous. She was emergency blues and twos to the John Radcliffe Hospital. At that point, you kind of then realise as a parent that you might lose your child. And when she woke up from these seizures, she just woke up and said, Mum, I'm hungry. So that was our turning point. 
as soon as we got home, of course, the dog and her were like glue. And my doctor suggested that I get into exercise. We did some research and we found dog agility and we haven't looked back since. That's what you want from a pet, isn't it? You want them to be your soulmate, your best friend. She's definitely more than just a dog. <laughs> And this is my hearing dog called Waffle. I was profoundly deaf. Her deafness is caused by CMV infection. It was a shock to the family so, because we were thinking of how her future is going to be and everything. When I was applying for a um, hearing dog, I didn't think that it will have such a huge impact on our lives. It has brought her confidence, it has brought her everything to be honest. What she is now is because of Waffle. Before I had struggle friendships, stuff like that, I wouldn't talk to strangers or tell them like, this is my dog, but now I'm proud to say it. She's really, really lucky, and there's nothing I can't do without her. I don't feel shy anymore. When I'm with her, I feel brave with her. Gentlemen, um, first into the arena this year when the Kennel Club celebrates 40 years of agility, we have our Agility Staffords uh, showing just how active, agile, bold, and fearless they are. There are large numbers of Staffords now competing nationwide, and Avril and Joe run the Staffordshire Bull Terrier Agility League, which recognises their results. If you don't want to reach the dizzy heights of competition, Staffords love to learn and do trees try a bit of agility training in your garden or at your local training club. You may be amazed at how much they enjoy it. They love to please people and most of all love treats. So you have two really good training tools. Our agility staffers today are all red in coat colour, but Staffords can also be black, brindle, fawn, blue or white. Currently, the majority of registered ones are blue, but let's not lose the other colours for their great diversity. Staffords, being only one of two breeds that mention suitability with children in their standards, we have A Avril coming in shortly with her daughter Izzy, who is going to show off the rapport between herself and her dog Dakota. You can see just how quick these little dogs are, and they really do love this. We did have one, one year that didn't come out of the tunnel, it just kept running backwards and forwards. And this little dog is called Murray. Here is the combination I mentioned a little while ago. This is Avril with Izzy, who of course is our best handler. And the dog is called Dakota. See, Dakota said she's ever so bossy, Mum. Yeah, just check the bosses there. Get a treat for that bit. He says, Mum, she's being ever so bossy. That's it. Good instructions there, is he? And again, wait until you're told and you can have a treat. Big round of applause, please. Well done, Izzy and Dakota. 
and of course Mum. Now unfortunately, due to irresponsible breeding, we has a, have a massive problem in Staffords with the bull breed mixes in rescue. Many of you will recognise Ali Taylor from ITV's For the Love of Dogs. Regu regularly she stops Paula Grady from taking home all of the dogs. Squirt is a Battersea dog herself, living with a mixed bunch that have gone home with Ali over the years. So there's Squirt in the centre of the ring, showing you just how obedient this breed can be. Over here we have Danny, who turned Lewis's life around when he rescued him. Recently, Little Whisper has also come to live with them. Whisper, as you can see, is very relaxed and does like having a tummy tickled. We are delighted to have some very special guests here today, the Street Vets. Street Vet was formed when Jade and Sam, both qualified vets, teamed up after they became aware of the breeds of the numbers of homeless people on the streets with their pet dogs. Street Vet consists of volunteer vet professionals giving their time to prevent and treat disease in the dogs of the homeless. They have a growing team working across London, Bristol, Cambridge, Brighton and Essex. Throughout the week, in all weathers, they're out on the streets with their backpacks, bonding with dogs and owners, offering meds, vaccination, blood and lump sampling, microchipping, as well as food, treats, toys and jackets for the dogs, a very large proportion of which are Staffords and other bull breed mixes. If the dogs need further investigation, they arrange for them to go to practices for procedures. Everything is achieved with a huge amount of generosity from vet practices, drug companies, animal welfare charities and local councils. They have an Amazon wish list and a website where you can make donations. They've made appearances on Channel 4 and The One Show, as well as across the whole of social media. Street Vet hopes to continue to expand and work with other organisations so that eventually those less fortunate and their best friends on the streets will have help nationwide. Can we have a huge round of applause for our street vets and our lovely rescue folk? Okay, so thank you very much for that bit. Now, next up, we all know that 2018 is World Cup year for our footballers in amongst us, and our Staffords now would like to pay homage to the England football team. Now, we think we're gonna need a little bit of magic to achieve this, so we have Darren here and our very own David Barkham entering the ring. Now you might remember our magic box from last year. It made Blake disappear. We're gonna see what he's kind of going to achieve this year. So, we're gonna ask him to get up and in the box. He'll give you a little quick wave goodbye, I'm sure. Now, if we tuck him away in that magic box, of course all magic needs a magic word, Darren should have his wand. I think the word should be Ingerland. So one, two, three, Ingerland. Oh, wow. So, okay. David Barkham's disappeared and we have an England mascot. Okay, let's see if he can help us. So let's leave our mascot on the side there and carry on with what we're going to do now. Now, of course, that having been done, if we're going to do some training, and we're going to show some England trainers here, because we want them to do things right, we want them to make sure they've got all their muscles in place, um, we need to make sure, first of all, that our training out ground is safe and secure in these worrying times. So you might remember last year we had Stella, the police sniffer dog, that came from rescue with us. Well, our young man here, who for football purposes today, shall be called Rio Ferdinand is going to help us because he's learnt some sniffer training tricks too. So we have a motley crew here all lined up waiting to go into our training ground and watch our England team. And of course, as with all grounds, we need to make sure it's safe and secure. We don't want anybody there with anything dodgy. Well, somebody looks a bit dodgy at the moment coming in. All right, okay, so I think it's time we brought in our sniffer dog to see whether or not there are any illegal substances 
been trying to be brought into our ground. So let's see if you can do your work here. Have a sniff. See if there's any smells you like. He looks a bit dodgy, that one. Well, you would think the, dog, dog, uh, the vets would be all right, although I suppose they carry a few drugs, don't they? That one definitely looks dodgy. Oh dear, I think your game's up. Okay, can you escort our person off of the arena, please, so that we can get on with the next stage? We need to do some training now. So let's have now our footballers into the ring, please, and get them all in, in place. We're going to leave Sean in the centre of the ring here. She's our referee. Now, Sean, actually, some of you may recognise from the BBC Two programme, Me and My Dog, which is being repeated at the moment on Saturday afternoons. Um, she's a wonderful dog trainer and she's helped us with everything we're doing today. We do appreciate it. Now, of course, there's always a senior on the team. So here we have, first of all, in the corner here, Gurry Lineker. And he's going to show our team exactly what you need to do. Now, it's very important to warm up when you're doing things. And of course, if your teammates are about, you might need to give them a high five. Are we going to get a high five? Kind of like a high five. Now, they also need to do some sit-ups. And they're going to need to do some press-ups. But the most important thing is he spoke to his mate, Didier Dogba, and he told him, if you're anywhere near the penalty area and they come near you, go down like a ton of bricks. But I think, do you know what, Gurry? You're about to get the first red card, yellow one. But you might even get a red card there. Off you go. Okay, so over here now, let's move on a bit. So now we have our next dog up into the training ring, and we have Stan Balder Collymore. Now, of course, I'm going to show you how to develop those abs. You've got some very important ab work to do here, get those muscles working a treat. Really hard trick to do this one. So a nice bit of working on the abs. But of course, like we know, whenever you've been working hard and you've got your muscles warmed up, you then need to keep them warm. So we're going to get our dog here now to show you just how, after you've had your shower, to wrap up in your towel. That's it. Keep those muscles warm in your tracksuit. So off you go. Now, next up, we're going to do some very important leg work here. And we have our lovely little Robbie Growler, who's going to show you how to develop those mus leg muscles. So stepping up and stepping down. And some balancing, really important to get your balance work going. All the way up and round, and down the other side. Very good. Nice control. Fantastic. Now, if you're working in defense, you also need to work very hard. You have to have a lot of control. So here we're going to have John Bones here showing you just how to work on your, your footballing control. So we'll do a little bit of leg weaving. And then we'll have a nice Send away around the cone. Let's get some speed up. Oh, a jump as well. Okay, that's fine. Let's see if we can get there. A send away around the cone and a stop on the way back. That's it. And a lovely little recall. Thank you very much. Now, of course, all good football teams need a cheerleader. And here we've got young Daisy. She's the youngest on our team. So do bear with her, it's the first time she's been in a big arena. She's going to do a little bit of poor cheerleading. There, she shows you her paws. And as you'll see from her bandana, 
Daisy is a wood green rescue. Our team consists of some very well responsibly bred dogs and also some rescues. Well done, Daisy. Very, very good. Excellent. So, next up, you've heard us say already that at the moment, coming into, um, into Crufts today, they're celebrating 40 years of agility. Well, what we're going to do next is something that's called Hoopers, and it's a really good way of getting your dog working in hand with you if we can get the course laid out right at first, first of course. It's very fast, very speedy, non-contact, and we're going to show it here for the first time today. So we're just going to get these last few ho hoops out in place. And then a little dog here that we have, who is actually called Frank Lamppost, is going to race around our hoopers course. Are we there? We're nearly set. This needs a bit, bit of thought to it. I did say it's the first time Hoopers has been out, set out. Are we ready to go, Joe? Okay. Right, stand back and watch this little one speed. Now, if you like agility, but maybe your dog is very too young to compete, or your dog is maybe older now and has joint problems, this is a really great non-contact sport to get involved with. As you can see, a lot of directional movement. So there you go, that shows you just a little taster of hoopers and a good bit of training as well. Now next up, of course it wouldn't be football without having a goalpost. We are going to need the goalpost in the centre of the ring now. Um, and we're going to look and see if we can get some penalties done because we all know that England always have a problem with penalties. Um, so here we've got, coming into the ring, our young dog, and of course, he's the young gun of the moment. He is Harry Kane. So now he knows how to stop under control. Does he have his ladder? Do we know? Is the ladder about or are we going to leave them? Maybe we're leaving the ladder out. I can't see the ladder anywhere. So maybe we'll go without and we'll just go. Oh, no, here we are. See, I, because I can't see properly standing at the back. He's going to show you his ladder tricks. A lot of foot, footfall going on up and down working into that and then we're going to get to take some penalties so let's see Harry let's put the ball on the spot and see if you can score well that's typical England isn't it in penalties we're going to have to do better than this we'll try two out of three well, that was two. Let's go for a third. Take him back and see. That was nearly there. Oh, you're not on target today, Harry, at all, are you? Oh, well, never mind. Do you know what? If the young guns can't do it, I think we'll just have to get golden balls back into the ring. So here, where did you find golden balls? The last we saw, he disappeared somewhere. He was having a cup of tea with Victoria and the kids. Okay, that's fine. So, if you want a dog that you can rely on to do this, let's get the penalty spot there. And let's see if we've got our hero of the day. Of course, all good goalkeepers have got to have a good pair of gloves. Got to check out the goalpost. Yeah, that looks about right. Get yourself in position. And he shoots. And he scores. Well done, Golden Balls. Absolutely fabulous. So, can we... <laughs> right, would Golden Balls like to show our very quick version of a Mexican wave? And thank you very much today, ladies and gentlemen. If you think it's all over, it is now. If you'd like to come and have a word with any of these handlers or dogs, um, they're at the bottom benches behind the arena. 
But if you see them walking about the show during the day, please go up and say hello. The dogs would love to meet you all, and so would the handlers. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hope to see you all again next year. Bye. Recipe you can uber takes a tailored life stage approach because for optimal body condition, the best nutrition is nutrition in the pills. Start with you can uber and you can be able to get a strong foundation that's built on the energy. Then you can uber a tailored food to become healthy. Now, the money in the energy is from one of the stages to the next for a better life on the impact. Share a long and healthy life with your dog. You can uber a good day in the life. Well, next to, next to the arena, folks, we've got an activities team display. It's all about the other activities that happen at kennel club events and at Round the Dog Training Clubs. All the details are up in all three. You're going to get an insight, an insight into four of the disciplines today. We've got Andrew Rizzio there with the Hilwater Music Team. Give them away, girls. The doggy dancing team. Leah with the Bloodhounds, and she's going to tell us all about the Bloodhounds. In the corner down the bottom there is Stan Ford, the working trials expert. And he goes out into the dull and windy weather into the fields doing tracking. So he'll tell us all about that. And finally we've got Claire Coughlin Khan with her team from Hatchford Brook Dog Training Club. And they're going to show us a bit about obedience. But I think we go into the hill where to music first. Good evening. Good morning everybody. This is our hill work to music demonstration team. 
and we're going to do a bit of top hat, white tie and tails. Now, I've asked my team to do freestyle moves for the first part of this routine. And freestyle is where the dogs and handlers can do whatever they like within reason to illustrate the music. They're putting on their top hats, they're tying up their white ties, and they're brushing up their dog's tails. Now we've got some fantastic breeds here. We have Cedar, a German short-haired pointer. And he also is a canny cross dog. And look at this beautiful Springer Spaniel, George. He's a happy chappy. And my favorite dog of all time, this beautiful Jack Russell, who is, I think, nearly 12. He'll work to music as a sport for all breeds and all dogs. It's where you can decide what you want to do. And for working dogs, we've got a Doberman. Let's give the Doberman a clap. It's a working breed. This is Dina, and Dina's from Blackpool. Look at that beautiful. And then we've got our Geordie girls. We've got Tilly, who is a poodle cross. And we've got Goose, who is also a poodle cross. And all the way from Scotland, we've got our golden retriever. Now the second portion of this routine is showing heel work and a bit of choreography. And these handlers are meant to be illustrating the music and walking with their dogs at heel. And of course the star is my Tibetan Spaniel. And anyone that knows Tibetan Spaniels will know this is amazing that a dog will sit and stay and do as he's told. Beautiful. Now, you're going to see the Freestyle Championships later on, where the best in the country are going to be performing. But this sport is for all breeds, all types, all ages, and for people of all types and all ages. And the fantastic thing about Hill Work to Music is we do it indoors. We don't go outside. We stay nice and warm, but we also keep fit. So now we're doing a bit of fast pace. So this is very good for fitness for the dog. These dogs are fit for function and fit for life. Now they're doing a weave and then it's a walking weave. So if you're interested in heel work to music, please come and talk to us on the dog display ring. Now they're gonna put their sticks away because we want to be nice and tidy. And you can see these dogs all work together happily. Hi hats, woo! We really enjoyed this display. Please do come and see us when you're at the um, Hall 3. And they're gonna do just a bit of freestyle now to finish off. And I think my dog's falling asleep. Can we have a big round of applause please? Fantastic. Now I'm going to hand you over to Leo and these beautiful bloodhounds. I think I want one. Well, I'm just, I'm just going in a little bit there. She's allowed me just to make an announcement. I've got an emergency news flash for you folks. That's why I don't Keep your seats when it finishes. This finishes because in actual fact, Alan Carr's coming and joining us in the arena. He's going to do some filming. It's going to be very good to watch. And all I can give you a clue on is the police are involved. So do keep your seats when the, the, the girls and boys are finished showing us all the activities. And it's over to Leo. Right. Good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to our representation of the Four Shires Bloodhounds. We've got three bloodhounds here today from the Four Shires Bloodhound Pack, which is based in the Mansfield area. In total, the pack comprises of 36 bloodhounds, which are counted in couples, which makes 18 couple of bloodhounds. Today we've got Bentley, Charlie and Rosie here with us, with Chris and Debbie Kane, who are joint masters of the Forshire pack and who keep the hounds at kennels 
Look after them and hunt them. Chris Kane hunts the hounds. Sam here is the kennelman who helps to, with the duties of the welfare and the caring of the hounds. The Four Shires pack based in Mansfield belongs to Lady Hattersley. She's a member of the Kennel Club and the pack was set up in the year 2000. This pack meets on a Sunday and they hunt the clean boot. Also, the hounds that are here today are Kennel Club registered along with many of their other hounds in the pack, which is instrumental to the future of the bloodhound. Hunting the clean boot is hunting the scent of man. So basically it's an equestrian sport. They have between 30, 40 and 50 horses come out to the meet. They have a different venue every Sunday for the meet and they have a runner, a gentleman that's a very good cross country runner who runs for these hounds. He can run a line, anything from three to four, five miles long they can cover us up between 18 and 26 miles a day, so the hounds have to be very fit. The hounds that are here today, we've got Charlie, who's 15, 15 months old, the blanket liver and tan. Then we've got two blanket black hounds. We've got Bentley, the dog hound, and Rosie, the bitch. Bentley's two and a half years old, and Rosie is three years old. You'll see that they're quite large, substantive hounds. They've got plenty of substance. They haven't got any exaggerations about the head. Lovely long ears, good clean eyes, ample wrinkle for a bloodhound. And it's almost like turning the clock back. Between the, the two wars, bloodhound packs were very popular. Many of them in those days were Kennel Club registered. Post Second World War, bloodhound packs again were very popular. And there's always been a relationship between the show hound, the working trial hound, and the pack hound. Now that Lady Hattersley has got hounds registered at the Kennel Club, the intention is that these, some of these hounds will compete at Kennel Club Championship working trials, which is why we are here today representing the working bloodhound. We, uh, we hope to see these out sometime, either later this year or next year. They have to go through the same process as all the other bloodhounds do by acquiring a permit to compete at trials and a permit to prove that they are safe with livestock. As the majority of these hounds hunt the clean boot and they hunt running free. So the land that we go across can be anything from hill country to moorland to in by land, agricultural land. Hill country is usually well stocked with sheep and cattle, so the hounds have to be safe with livestock. The other thing that's instrumental is that the hounds hunt the clean boot, that they hunt the scent of the human being. If a hare or a fox or a deer pops up, they are fully expected to ignore it. If they don't ignore it and do what we call riot, then they're out of the prizes at the end of the day where that trial is concerned. So we have, we have a lovely pack of bloodhounds based in the Mansfield area, four shires, because they hunt Staffordshire, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire and South Yorkshire, hence why they're called four shires. Very good representation of them here today. And uh, as you can see, Rosie's just given her approval, which is very nice. So, ladies and gentlemen, great to these people for coming here today. They haven't come very far. They've had a horrendous journey because of the traffic and the snow. And uh, it's nice to see another side of bloodhounds besides the standard working trial hound and the show hound. They're all important. They're all important to the future of this lovely old breed. And thank you very much to Chris, Debbie and Sam. Thank you very much. I'll introduce you now to Claire Coughlin Khan, who's going to uh, come into the ring with the obedience. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Leo. Good morning, everyone. We're going to give you a brief insight now into competitive obedience. And you notice there's some equipment being laid out into the ring here. This is for a send away exercise. And over there, we have our golden retriever, that's Bradley. And he's being shown the area at the moment. 
The idea of this is that dog was leave the handler at speed into the area, gets the down position, the handler then goes up to the area and recalls the dog and rejoins into heel work. There he goes. Well done. It's here for Bradley and Sue. That's a great start. And let's welcome the other three members of the team. We'll do some introductions. So we've got our miniature poodle over there. That's LB with Yvonne. We've got a border collie over here. This is Jupe, handled by Vicky. And of course, how could we forget our little star of the show? This is Frankie, handled by Joanne. So although it's fair to say that border collies are prevalent in obedience, it certainly is not the case to say that you need a collie. Any breed, any shape, any size, any breed, any crossbreed can do competitive obedience because, of course, it is the foundation of every other discipline. So that was a beautiful circle by Frankie there. You saw her tail was wagging. She loves to work. So now we have Jupe. So circles are where we start training heel work, and then we move into straight lines. Now you can see here again, the dog is happy, the tail is wagging. You notice this is quite a close style of working in the heel work. You don't necessarily have to work like that. Well done, that's good boy dupe. Now we move into our Clever Clogs pair here. They're doing more advanced stuff. If you notice that Bradley here is working off the lead, now, what you may not realize, folks, is at this level of competitive obedience, there are no commands going on. So the dog must follow the body language of the handler and obviously all the rehearsal and extra stuff that's gone in there. Let's hear it for these handlers, absolutely fantastic, and their dogs. So now we're moving to recalls. Now, we've got little and large here. I'm going to start you off doing a novice-type recall. So this is just a straight line. Now, these two dogs are used to working together, but it is unusual for obedience competition because normally it's one dog and handler at a time. But uh, I have to let you into a little secret. We have boyfriend and girlfriend here, ladies and gentlemen. These dogs absolutely adore each other. And into a finish. Well done, let's hear it for those two. Right, so now the next stage of a recall is an A-type recall. So the handlers are gonna leave their dogs this time in a down position. And you notice there the handler rejoins, the dog rejoins, and then they carry on. And beautiful heel work there from both of them. Well done, let's hear it for LB and Jupe. So you saw some normal heel work earlier at normal pace, but now we're going to show you some different paces. So you notice Sue and Bradley here, the golden retriever, they're doing some slow pace. Now the key thing about the pace is, it's not about how quickly or slowly you walk, it's about whether the dog remains with you in a consistent position. So you notice little Frankie there doing some first pace. That tail never stops. And hopefully what you're getting from this is that obedience sometimes gets knocked for being serious. It's not. We have great fun and we use our verbal encouragement and our rewards and that's what it's all about. So we're just going to show you some distance control now. So we know how to train it first of all. So there's three positions involved, the sit, the stand and the down. So if you have a look at the border collie over here, we're learning the exercise, so we're reasonably close to the dog. And he's encouraged to always do his positions moving backwards. And that's because in competition, we're not allowed for the dog to move more than a body length forward or to the side. So it's important in training that we don't encourage that creeping forward. And you notice we've got the other dogs practicing as well. Now we've got our Bradley here. We're going to face him away from the send away so that he's not tempted to do another send away. Now just notice how smoothly these transitions are between the positions. What about that folks? Let's hear it for Bradley. Okay, and we're going to finish our section with retrieve. So retrieve is a key component of obedience competition. And we're going to start with Jupe here. Reason being, folks, this is his favorite exercise. 
And if he gets left till last, we just won't be coping with him. So he's using a dumbbell, which is a compulsory item for some levels. Off he goes. Now he's not allowed to play with it. A bit cheeky there. Take it and finish. What a good boy. Let's see it for Duke. Now we've got LB also using a dumbbell. Off he goes. So LB stands for little boy because he's mum's little shadow. Take it and finish. Well done, LB. Now Bradley is using an article because at his level, the judge decides on the retrieve article. So handlers need to practice all different shapes and sizes and textures. And that's quite a difficult plastic article there. But you notice there was no chewing. Well done, Bradley. Now, folks, we've left the best till last. You've just got to watch this retrieve. Come on, Joanne. OK, so we've got a massive dumbbell here, as you can see. OK, off she goes. There she is. Let's give us some encouragement, folks. Just proof that any breed can do obedience, and we welcome every breed. Let's have a big round of applause for these marvellous obedience dogs and handlers. And now I'm handing over to Stan and Working Trials. Thank you, Claire. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give you a small demo of Working Trials. What is Working Trials? Very much an outdoor activity. Some of the exercises are very likened to police dog work, tracking, searching for property. There are obedience exercises, but these are not to the extent that they are in obedience competition. It's a small part. Now we show you one of the exercises unique to working trials. That's the speak on command. This is Barry Gilbert with his dog Cozzy. Cozzy is a working trials champion, a border collie, the most popular dog in the sport showing a speak on command at heel. Next to go, my favourite breed, not that I'm biased at all, the shepherd. And this is a dog doing a speak in a static position. This is Tyrrell. And that's Rita, who's calling the shots. There we are. He's a son of McCoy. So I, we take it that um, Rita and her family enjoy crisps. Okay, whilst we've done that, I'd like you to watch carefully. Around the outside of us, Sarah is laying a track for her dog. Now you're thinking, I know, dogs, can, how could a dog possibly track in here? Believe you me, it can and a dog is following a disturbance of a person walking away. Unlike the bloodhound, the bloodhound is a hunting breed and he has his nose up high and he is hunting the scent of the person. Now working trials are following a disturbance on the ground and you'll note how keen this dog is to go, how keen he is to have his nose on the ground and it doesn't matter that agility He'll work to music, whatever's been on in here, this dog will put his nose down and go exactly where the person, namely his handler, has walked. This is Esther, an eight-year-old Labrador, handled by Sarah. And this is Sarah's birthday today, so happy birthday, Sarah. There we are, up to the first article. Now note, in a competition, the dog would, you would not want the dog to swallow the article, hand it back to the judge in a good condition. We've got a, a leg tied up, well done. Okay, back on we go, tracking again. Now the dog does not bother with other people having been out here. It is merely interested in the track that went away from the start. There you see him take the turn up to another article. Excellent. Recovers. Back to mum. Well done. And off again. 
Oh, he sneaked across the corner there. Okay, well done. I think that's our final article. Well done, Sarah. In a competition, this could be some three hours old, this track, but we don't track on AstroTurf, I can assure you that. Um, he, these dogs would be tracking on corn in the, when the corn is green, tracking on grass, on heather, ploughed fields, anything. Right. Next, we're going to show a send away and redirection. Now, I hope I don't put this dog off standing here. Okay, this is Cozzy again. And Barry, note how... Now, this would be sending a dog two to three football pitches away. Sorry to confuse myself with football, but that's a bit in my brain. And now he's going to redirect him to the right. And the dog will take no notice of me. There we are. And back left again. And he calls him in. Well done, Barry. That's excellent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's a small demonstration of working trials, and I'm sure you'd like to show your appreciation for the dogs and handlers. Thank you. Thanks, Doug, for a great uh, demonstration there of working trials. And let's give them all a big round of applause now as they leave the arena. Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You will see coming into the arena down in the corner there someone who may look rather familiar to you. Um, I thought you were going to wear a fat suit, Alan. Alan Carr coming in gently into the arena because we're going to do a demonstration of man work. Now, this is uh, something we see quite regularly here at Crufts. The West Midlands Police Force always put on an absolutely wonderful demonstration. And today we're going to get a, an example of uh, two different kinds of man work, two elements. And we have two beautiful German Shepherds coming in, extremely well trained, they're better trained than Alan. The first one I believe is Mason. This is a dog who's uh, two years old and he's going to be performing something called a static bite. There you go. Self-explanatory. Alan stands as still as he can and the dog in perfect control. Mason actually weighs 42 kilos. He's a big dog, German Shepherd. He's been operational since June. And just on the command there, you bite and away you go. Well done, Alan. It's good to stand your ground. But now we're going to see something a little more dramatic, which will certainly give Alan, I think, a bit of a shock. These are heavy dogs. This is going to be Lester. He's six years old, he weighs 40 kilos as well, and this is going to be on the move. If Alan can move, he's going to be asked to run across the arena, the dog will be sent after him. I say he's called Lester, he's been operational for five and a half years since he was 12 months old. And Paul King... <laughs> oh, you have to run faster than that, Al. <laughs> I think, I think you should run a little bit quicker, Alan, actually. You know, I mean, it's not difficult in that suit. You can see how freely you're moving. 
Alan's show at three o'clock every afternoon during Crofts, the Crofts Extra. This will be seen this afternoon. And here he goes. Go on, go for it. Woof. And believe you me, I've done that as well. You can feel the weight of the dog. 40 kilos hitting your heart. Well done, Al. First time at that, I think, and uh, very brave. Well done. I think we're going to give Alan a microphone now to just have a word with you all. Is that going to happen? I was told it was, but oh, yeah. No. <laughs> it is hard work out there, it really is. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks for the support, asking me to run faster in this suit. <laughs> this is a vision of the future if I keep on eating. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you. Well done, Alan. And in the uh, uh, West Midlands Police demonstration, uh, which we'll see later in the week here, uh, they have a Mr. Angry, and Alan was being Mr. Angry for today. I hope you've enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be on television this afternoon at 3 o'clock. We'll be continuing in this ring in 15 minutes with the, heel, the freestyle heel words of music. It's going to be terrific, I can promise you. It's always a great competition. That's at 12.15. Uh, yes, thanks, Peter. The uh, freestyle competition will be starting shortly after we've had a very short break. But as you can see, there's a message for you on the screen there because we've, Crofts has entered the, the uh, Twitter world now and you can go hashtag Crofts screen and in the breaks in between what's happening in the arena, Warby Course Building, etc. We will be putting some of the messages up live on the screen or perhaps even a little delayed, but you may stand a chance of getting your, your tweet put up on the screen in the main ring at Crofts. So uh, if you're into tweeting, this is the time to do it, whether you're in the arena or at home watching on television. Hashtag Crofts Screen is what you're looking for on Twitter. Anyway, we'll be back with you very shortly, folks, with the Hill Work to Music, which is today the Freestyle Finals. Ten of the country's best will be competing in the arena. My name is Gail Wilde and this is my urban search and rescue dog called Taz. To be perfectly honest, I don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> he's a brilliant dog, um, he's a fantastic working dog and at home he just likes to 
curl up in a wee ball, sometimes on your lap, and run after a tennis ball like all collies. <laughs> Taz is a search dog that's been trained to do urban, rural and coastline riverbank searches. So my role is he'll come back and he'll tell me where he believes a casualty is and he will lead me to that particular spot. In this kind of environment he'll have boots on uh, just to protect his feet and his jacket on with light so we can see where he's going. Do you know what, looking back, the proudest moment I could have been was at the Clouther. I remember en route we were told the police helicopter had landed on the Clouther and tasked with searching the rubble pile and surrounding area to locate peoples within the rubble pile itself. The building came down in such a way it almost like came down in three stages. So it needed um, someone who was either very small or the dog to actually get into those spaces and the dog was perfect. When he's actually on the job and he's got his coat on, he hears his bell, or his harness on and he hears his bell, he goes straight into work mode, no question. It showed immense courage to actually go into something which was still dynamic. The round about it, there was rubble falling, there was still dust everywhere. We're fine. It managed to save life in the sense that people who were working there were put at risk. It was indispensable. You train as best as you can in all different environments, but that night he just showed what a wonderful dog he was. I think Taz is just a hero. It's a remarkable dog and when called upon to serve, it's absolutely unique. Training Taz has been a long journey. He has gone out above and beyond of what I expected of him. He just overcomes every hurdle that we show him. To be Taz's owner makes me unbelievably proud of him. It really, really does. I think I saw in Jack what I saw in myself. People had given up on Jack, a little bit like people had given up on me as a child. First thing I'd say about Jack is that he, he loves being in front of the camera. He loves to pose and hopefully he loves being with me. He'd had three homes before me. And I couldn't walk him on the beach. I couldn't walk him with other dogs because of his behavioural problems, sort of fear aggression, no socialisation with other dogs whatsoever. And he would turn on me as well. People don't believe me that he was like that. I, I had many moments where I thought, my goodness, am I going to be able to turn this dog around? I guess there was a little part of me that wanted to prove other people wrong as well. I had an extensive psychiatric history. And my main problems have been anorexia, PTSD, and dissociative disorders. That's a, a medley that creates for quite a, a difficult existence. Jack is certainly the first thing that I've ever, ever attached to, and he's taught me what love is. I owe Jack for teaching me some of the sort of most fundamental emotions that, that humans should have, um, and maybe things that people take for granted. I mean, he's got to the stage now where he's been accepted to train as my assistance dog. If I need my medication, he will we'll retrieve that to me, so I'm pretty in tune with my needs. I've got more out of Jack than I, I would have ever believed, yeah. I think that very indication to me shows me really how far he has come. The work that he's done is astonishing, really. Sounds, I don't know, a little bit corny, but he honestly saves my life every day. He is the reason I carry on.
Hi, my name's Claire and this is my canine partner Griffin. Griffin is a very affectionate boy, he's very cheeky, he's the life and soul of the party. Um, he likes to show off as well, <laughs> like showing off his skills. Flush. Yes! I was born with a condition called Alof Stanlos Syndrome. It's a connective tissue disorder that affects my joints, meaning I dislocate, I've got very soft and fragile skin, um, it affects my organs. I've been a full-time wheelchair user since the age of 13. I cannot walk, stand or straighten both knees. I'm reaching for something, I can dislocate my shoulder, my fingers, my wrists. So I do need quite a lot of help. I cannot eat at all um, and I can only swallow little bits of liquid at a time. Um, I didn't feel like I had a reason to get up in the morning. Um, I literally just lived life in four walls and that was it. When I applied for a canine partner I didn't quite understand how much the dog would help me. So Griffin has over a hundred tasks that he can do day to day. Open and closing doors, load unload the washing machine, he gets the phone when it rings and all I have to do is say Griffin, phone, get it and off he goes and brings it back to me. He goes and gets his jacket for me to put on, um, ready for us to go out and about. Now I have Griffin, I don't need any carers, I don't need no help. Um, we work as a team, whatever I can't do, he does for me. Um, I just thought it was a dog to help me physically, but Griffin has exceeded my expectations of what an assistant dog can do. When we go out and about, we always get stopped, you know, I've never had so many friends. Griffin is definitely my best friend. Um, he's a little bit of my hero as well. He's done some amazing things for me. Life as a disabled person is just, it can be so hard. Um, you're very invisible, um, which is one of the things I love about having Griffin. He has opened up a whole new world for me. Um, I'm not invisible anymore. Um, he just means the world to me. I'm Hannah and this is Buttons, my four-year-old Shih Tzu. Good girl. Good girl. I got her in 2013 and she came along just at the right time really. They are, they are so lovely to watch. Hannah's quite um, an introverted girl, always has been, and this has really opened up a whole new chapter in her life. It wasn't really until I got back from hospital after being in the high dependency unit for two weeks that I really noticed our bond. We'd been backwards and forwards to the doctors for about a year previous with various ailments. Oh, it was pretty horrendous. She was emergency blues and twos to the John Radcliffe Hospital uh, in Oxfordshire. Everything was going wrong. Every single day was going wrong. At that point you kind of then realise as a parent that you might lose your child and you just sit beside the bedside waiting for a miracle. And when she woke up from these seizures, she just woke up and said, Mum, I'm hungry. So that was our turning point. As soon as we got home, of course, the dog and her were like glue, really. When I came back, she was just all over me. And we spent a good couple of months. I was camped out on the sofa quite a lot, and she literally didn't leave my side. Uh, when I got out of hospital, because I had to go on quite an intense course of steroids. I was quite overweight, um, so my doctor suggested that I would get into exercise. We did some research and we found dog agility, um, and we haven't looked back since. We just started competing, and she's smashing it, basically. <laughs> she loves it so much. At the end of the day, that's what you want from a pet, isn't it? You want them to be your soulmate, your best friend, you know. It's helped her bring her out of her shell, because she can be a little bit shy at times, much like me. Um, <laughs> she's definitely more than just a dog.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the afternoon performance of the world's greatest dog show, It's Crofts 2018! What a great montage that was, and it's a great show, of course, and it's, we don't tell lies when we say it's the biggest and the best dog show in the world. And we've got something very special for you now. We've got the Freestyle Finals. Good afternoon, There's ladies and gentlemen, boys and the girls, country. wherever we've had you are in the world. Welcome to the afternoon session of the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2018, from the NEC in Birmingham in the Midlands of the United Kingdom, the world's greatest dog show with a session of fantastic events coming up. We hope you're going to enjoy their afternoon with us. We start with an always popular event. The arena's getting pretty full actually for this time. Uh, it's midday on Thursday here in the United Kingdom and uh, we have quite a good crowd in here for the Crofts freestyle final in heelwork to music. Freestyle just means that the handlers aren't restricted to working the dog to heel. Two-thirds of the routine must be performed absolutely freely. And whatever the couple try to put on, present, that is allowed. It's all good, but it is judged for quality by three very good judges, and we see them coming into the ring now. We have Michelle Hubbard. We have uh, in the centre there, Jenny Deacon. And we have Jules O'Dwyer, our three judges. And they'll be looking for a range of things because they look for the content of what each performer does. They look for the accuracy of the moves that the performer does. And they also make an assessment, really, of their interpretation of the music. And if there are any particular faults, they can be deducted uh, points. It could be that the dog barks too much or, or whatever. There are various things that it can get wrong, and they end up with a total. Now, just to remind you, our, our first competitor is actually coming into the ring now, and this is Emma Piri. She's the youngest competitor in the competition. Her dog is called Yola. It's Yolanda the Panda. It's a working sheep dog, four years old, and a little bitch. It's called, the music that they're going to be performing to is The Lost Boys by Ruth B. So it's going to be a bit Peter Pan orientated, I guess, this one. And I suggest you just settle back and enjoy this. Emma Piri and Yola. the man in the moon and 
Even sometimes he would go away too. Then one night as I closed my eyes, I saw a shadow flying high. He came to me with the sweetest smile, told me he wanted to talk for a while. He said, Peter Pan, that's what they call me. I promise that you'll never be lonely and ever since. Captain Hook, run, run, lost boy. They say to me, away from all of reality. Neverland is home to lost boys like me, and lost boys like me are free. Neverland is home to lost boys like me. And lost boys like me are free. He sprinkled me in pixie dust and told me to believe, believe in him and believe in me. Together we will fly away in a cloud of green to your beautiful destiny. As we soared above the town that never loved me, I realized I finally had a family. Soon enough, we reach Neverland. Peacefully, my feet hit the sand, and ever since that day, I am a lost boy from Neverland. Usually hanging out with Peter Pan, and when we're bored, we play in the woods. Always on the run. From Captain Hook, run, run, lost boy. They say to me, away from all of reality. Never let us hold to lost boys like me, and lost boys like me are free. Never let us hold to lost boys like me. And lost boys like me are free. Peter Pan, Tinker Bell, Wendy, darling, even Captain Hook, you are my perfect storybook. Neverland, I love you so. You are now my home sweet home forever. A lost boy, Ella. Give a big round of applause. Well, I don't know what the judges are going to make of that. That really was so delicate and so nice. Youngest competitor having to kick it off here. It's their first time ever in the big ring. So that's uh, Emma Piri and Yola. The judges will now have to work out their scores and we'll give them. Now, we will give you the scores after you have seen the next competitor. So we'll always be giving the score after the one that you've just seen, if you understand what I mean. So we will see our second competitor, then we'll give you the score for Emma. And that should keep things moving beautifully for you. There's some very nice, delicate moves. I'm not sure that she had enough variety in it, but she uh, you knows she's very young and uh, the dog is young and she was inspired by watching this on television she said it was something she always watched never for one moment dreamt that she'd be able to appear herself in the big ring so congratulations very well done Emma she's been competing in the dogs in 2006 and she won the three, three star competition which is this one in 2007 she likes to beard his colleagues as you will see so I'm just leaving an ounce in until she actually stepped into the arena. And here comes our next competitor. And it is Leslie Neville with Dewey. The dog's kennel name is uh, Brambledale Blue Dewey. It's a bearded collie, six years old, this dog. Leslie's been competing at Crufts with her dog since 2008. And she won this competition back in 2000. Uh, I've been since 2006 and she won the competition here in 2007. Norwegian Dance by the BBC Const Orchestra. <laughs>
a very nice round of applause there from this rapidly growing audience, I have to say, here at the NEC, Leslie Neville and Dewey. And uh, that uh, little piece showing the stories of um, a Norwegian woodcutter and a rather naughty apprentice. Uh, uh, I think that was rather lovely. And uh, in a moment, we'll be able to give you the score for our first contestant, which, of course, is Emma Ferry and Yola. And uh, you'll get Leslie's scores after our next competitor. Takes just a moment or two for the judges' scores to be collated, and then they have to go and, and put taken over to be put on the computer, and uh, then they get uh, delivered to the audience here. So, in a moment, we'll find out just how well young Emma did with her first uh, performance. Here we go. This is our 16-year-old Emma Perry. Who went first? And that's a jolly good result for You're seeing those scores there. Total of 7.67, no deductions. That's not bad at all. 30 marks overall, so 10 per section. So they think the. Another 7.8 and 8.2, so that's a good score as well. Interpretation 8. It's a total at the end that you're looking for each time because that will give a total score. So 7.67, 7.77, 7 7.67 again. Nothing deducted. 23.1 is the score. So first person, obviously, in first place. Well done to Emma. And those are the scores. It's Helen Dennis. Give a big round of applause. So now coming into the ring, we've got Helen Dennis with Cara. Cara's kennel club name is an enormous one. Come by on the way, pure love, it's called. It's a border collie, three years old. It's a dog. And music they're going to be performing to is uh, by the cast of West Side Story, and the song is G Officer Crookie. Sergeant Krupke, you gotta understand It's just our bringing up key that gets us out of hand Our mothers all are junkies, our fathers all are drunks Golly Moses, naturally we're punks G Officer Krupke, we're very upset We never had the love that every child ought to get We ain't no delinquents, we're misunderstood Deep down inside us, there is good There is good, there is good, there is good, there is untapped Inside, the worst of us is good. Yeah. <laughs> that's a touching good story. Let me tell it to the world. Just tell it to the church. <laughs> Dear, kindly judge your honor. My parents treat me rough with all the marijuana. They won't give me a puff. They didn't want to have me, but somehow I was had. Leap on lizards, that's why I'm so bad. Right, Officer Krupke, you're real square. This boy don't need a judge, he needs an analyst care. This shucks his neurosis, that ought to be quite. He's psychologically destroyed. I'm destroyed. We're destroyed, we're destroyed, we're the most destroyed. Like we're psychologically destroyed. <laughs> Opinion of escort, this child is the brave, not a county ain't had a normal home. Hey, I'm the brave, not a kind, I'm the bride. So take him to a head shrinker. You! Who, me? Head 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 head. My daddy beats my mommy, my mommy clobbers me. My grandpa is a commie, my grandma pushes tea. My sister wears a mustache, my brother wears a dress. Goodness gracious, that's why I'm a mess. Yes, Officer Club Key, you shouldn't be here. This boy don't need a couch, he needs a useful career. Society played him a terrible trick. Unsocialically sick. I am sick. We are sick. We are sick. We are sick. 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 Like we're sociologically sick. In my opinion, this child does not need to have his head shrunk at all. 
juvenile delinquency is purely a social disease. Hey, I got a social disease. So take him to a social worker. Which way? Hey, Dear kindly social worker, they tell me get a job, like be a soda jerker, which means like be a slob. It's not I'm anti-social, I'm only anti-work. Glory, I think that's why I'm a jerk. Yeah, Officer Popkey, you've done it again. This boy don't need a job, he needs a year in the pen. It ain't just a question of misunderstood. See, down inside it, he's no good. I feel good. We're no good. We're no good. The trouble is he drinks. The trouble is he's crazy. The trouble is he stinks. The trouble is he's growing. The trouble is he's grown. Not me, we got troubles of our own. Officer, don't be put down on our knees. Cause no one wants a fella with a social disease. The officer, don't what are we to do? The officer, don't Very nice routine. Well done there, Helen and Cara. Dogs just three years old. Has a great time out in the uh, country. Uh, loves the outdoors. Really excellent at uh, the freestyle who works for music. It's always entertaining and uh, very nice to see them here. They've uh, competed at Crofts on numerous occasions. So the judges putting their scores together and we'll now get the scores for Leslie Neville. There they are. 23.77 in total, but there are a few deductions there. I'm not sure what those will be for. 1.6 reductions, uh, deductions. But they're in the lead at the moment. For our next dog. So I think Helen will probably, possibly overtake that. We'll see. Anyway, uh, we'll get their scores after our next competitor. Don't forget, show your appreciation at the end. And if you, you've got the public vote, if you like, although it's not counted as a vote, we can certainly make everyone know what we think about the routines. And Dewey just repeating the routine there with, uh, with Leslie Neville's legs. And it's their first time so here comes our next competitor. Oh, something to do with cricket, definitely. Cathy Chambers and Amber with El Briar Can Can is the kettle name. It's a golden retriever. He's five years old, or she's five years old. It's a bitch, of course. The music they're going to be using, Soul Limbo and the Ashes song by Booker T and the MGs and MCC 1970. You'll recognize it. First time at Crufts with this dog.
Every dog has his day, and uh, unfortunately, this wasn't really Amber's. Very, very upsetting, but the, the, the dog was obviously needed to do what it had to do, and uh, wasn't able to concentrate on the routine, so Cathy will be terribly disappointed with that. But that does happen, it's very unfortunate. They, they said they would come into the ring and they would enjoy every minute of it. Well, I don't think Cathy will have enjoyed it quite as much as she would have wanted to, but it's not the dog's fault, it's just one of those things. The dog couldn't concentrate uh, when it wasn't really ready to perform. Very distressing for them. Anyway, here we go. We've now got the score for Helen Dennis on uh, the screen. And uh, this puts them into the lead. There's a total score of 24. And that does put them nicely in the lead. No deductions there. I haven't found out what the deductions were for um, Leslie Neville yet. So I can't really inform you on any more of that. But 24 is the total score. And there we see some of that routine. So I wasn't surprised that they went into the lead. I don't think... Uh, Kathy and uh, Amber are going to overtake them, but we'll see whether our next competitor coming into the ring can do any better. Here we've got Kay Lawrence, and Kay has her dog Janabakov Light Merlo, nine year old dog, a working sheep dog, actually known as Time, and the music Paint It Black, the name of the band Ramin Dwaj Dwaj <laughs> Dijavar.
that really was remarkable control. I, I wasn't sure where she was going with the routine, but it was very, very clever. Very a great patience and a lot of skill, and the dog's response to every movement K made with the, uh, that rod is, it was tremendous. I, I'm very impressed with that. I'd be interested to see how the judges regard it. I thought it was excellent. Those are the three parts of the routine the judges are judging. Ten marks on each. So the higher the marks on each, the better it is. So we're now looking for the marks for Kathy Chambers, which was a little bit disastrous for her. Music and it makes choosing the music so very difficult. Trying to get the right bits per second. In fact, she was eliminated because the dog uh, let her down, shall we say. So no score. She was actually disqualified. So we'll get uh, Kay's score after our next performer. And mainly using figure training, and it's all trained with food. You couldn't force a dog to do something like that. So, uh, we'll perhaps get a chance to have another little chat about that. But if you want to know more, it's all. Look at that control that uh, Kay is showing there. So, so we're speeding up there. The she, she didn't appear to speak at any point. The dog responded remarkably all the way through. I was very impressed with that. Uh, it may not score terribly well, we'll wait and see. But coming into the ring now, we've got Lucy Heath with Trip. This is a little crossbred uh, dog called Trip Hazard. He's three years old, and they're going to be performing to the theme to Mission Impossible, which could describe the, what they're actually doing there. We'll wait and see. Adam Clayton and Larry Mullen, the artists. Adam Clayton and Larry Mullen. So, Lucy, how you go? Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to steal the world's biggest diamond from the museum.
you don't block, you're under arrest. Well, that was certainly the, uh, the cutest performance so far. It may well be the leading one as well. A lot of very good things in there. One or two little errors, but uh, nice idea, well worked out, well performed. Cute little dog. Delightful performance. So uh, we have a lot of fun watching the, uh, the freestyle competition. Of course, uh, we'll have heel work to music tomorrow, which is uh, slightly more rigid in the way it's controlled. Uh, just looking at the scores there for Kay Lawrence. Kay Lawrence just goes into second place, 23.9. Good score for her but not enough to take first place. So she's in second at the moment, still in the lead. We've got Helen Dennis with Kay Mayan away, pure love. Just looking at Kay's uh, performance there, just a reminder of what she was doing there. And we just saw Lucy Heath doing Mission Impossible. Taking the diamond, will they take the prize? We'll wait and see. But well done, Kay. That was... Uh, Similar to what she did last year, but more definitely more exciting, more variety in it, and uh, very enjoyable. Second place she is. Here we've got Cathy Bates with Sybil. Russ Cat Lyrical Image is the Kennel Club name. It's a working sheepdog, five-year-old bitch. Uh, the Rose is the music they're dancing to by Beth Midler. Fabulous piece of music, one of my favourite movies, actually. Cathy's competing crufts in both this and he'll work to music before for the past four years. She also competes in competition obedience. Cathy Bates and Sybil. Some say
What a lovely finish there. Kathy Bates with Sybil. That really was lovely. Some very delicate moves in there that I think will score quite highly. Very well done indeed. And we've seen some uh, fascinating performances so far. And um, we have a new leader. This is uh, Lucy Heath with Trip 24.47. Not really surprising. I thought that was a very good routine. And, of course, Lucy and Tripp were finalists in 2016 in the Britain's Got Talent uh, competition. They were finalists in that. So this is just part of that uh, performance. There were one or two errors in it, but uh, it really was uh, deserving to go into the lead. So Lucy is in the lead with little Trip. That's a cute little dog. Look. <laughs> That's nice. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Are you enjoying yourself? Well, Thursday afternoon here, just after lunchtime in the United Kingdom, and a really big crowd here in the arena, the Genting Arena at the NEC in Birmingham. That's the place to go and have a look. There's such a lot going on here at this show. Five great halls where the breed judging goes on, all the trade stands are. There's an obedience ring, there's a special events ring, there's a young kennel club ring. It's, it, 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 there is so much going on. It's hard to describe, and anyone who hasn't been here can really have no idea just quite how magnificent it is. It always gives me a thrill. It's my 40th year here at Crofts, and this is just... It's every bit as exciting now as it always was. As we see Lucy Creek and Skiffle come into the ring. Another border collie, Harriet Skiffle King, eight-year-old dog. They're going to uh, perform to some music from Walt Disney, the Cinderella medley. Lucy's won the freestyle competition for the past two years. Keep your eyes peeled.
Great stuff. Really clever. A lot of different elements in that. Very well thought out. The dog is just fantastic. <laughs> and the control, both at distance and close to, was remarkable. Nice different paces as well. Uh, all sorts of different rhythms. And that, was, and that was really a very good performance. So well done, uh, Lucy Creek with Skiffle. And, oh, now they're going back. Uh, Kathy Bates, you saw her just previously there. There's a score, 25.27. That's a big leap forward in uh, the scores and we'll go into the lead with that again no deductions those are very good scores it was a, such a nice delicate routine there and uh, i think uh, yes well deserved well done kathy and uh, well done sybil as well really neat working sheep dog five years old they compete in com in uh, competition obedience, and you, you can see that as well. Uh, many competitors, actually, in freestyle and heel work to music do the full obedience as well. But uh, it does show every now and again when uh, someone is really rather good at it. So we wait uh, for our next competitor, Lucy Creek's score. will come up uh, after her performance as we await await the arrival of Kim Lydon with Tyler it's a border collie Canaan you said what is the kennel club name nine-year-old dog various artists uh, playing the music a mixture of music whirlwind yeah, yellow and the stripper third time competing with Tyler they have got up to third place in the past Here comes the music. would-be racers out there, here's a tune especially for you. A great tune 
Now, this next record is for all the bricklayers on Crystal Palace Road. dog there that really enjoys its work that was fun that was fun good routine well done Kim a uh, big score to beat though now at 25.27 uh, really was uh, pretty good there for Kathy Bates with Sybil so let's see if Lucy Creek has gone up there with Skiffle there we are 27.3 you can see the scores there massive she goes into first place so it's been progressive there and those nines really great wonderful to see and I'm sure that Walt Disney she is very inventive Lucy what she comes up with and the, the makes full use of the props excellent routine and nicely in the lead 27.3 we we'll see Kim's score a little bit later after our final performer and um, she'll be coming into the ring in a moment she's setting her props in there always a, a very entertaining competition that's Kim Hardman she's just going out she's uh, been a competitor for many many years she's won just about everything there is to go she's competed and judged at Croft several times and her dog when they come in there is called Denby here they come uh, still more extra special border collie seven-year-old dog this one and they're going to be performing to dance above the rainbow by Ronan Hardiman but uh, she and Denby also compete in competitive obedience as uh, I've said she led the uh, team GB to victory last year is heading them again this year in both the world and European competitions and really nice lady I, I enjoy every time watching uh, Kat and she usually puts great routines together so good luck to her Dance Above the Rainbow by Ronan Hardiman so she's not starting with the final routine from today's finals
that was some routine, you know. That very good pace on it. And a lovely rainbow skirt, of course, for Dance Above the Rainbow, uh, which Kath and Denby performed. Well, we have two sets of scores to come out. We have a score for Kim Lydon, we have a score for Kath Hardman, and it's an important decision that the judges are making because the winner of this event not only wins it, but there they will go to represent the UK in the international competition on Saturday. But there's Kim Lydon's score, 25.13. They go into third place at this point. And we're now awaiting just Kath Hardiman's score. So that uh, very nice, very amusing little routine uh, with Kim Lydon as uh, the bricklayer. It worked very well indeed. And she'll be pleased with third place. That uh, was a good performance. Now we're going to do the awards for the first three in the arena. We've got some beautiful camera from Bristol. Please keep your seats. There's a lot happening in this arena. I think we've got some great. We're just waiting now for. Our three judges, Michelle Howard, Jenny Deakin, and uh, Jules O'Dwyer. There's uh, head judge, Jenny. Michelle, nearest to uh, us at this side. Uh, yep, they've handed in their scores. They've done it, and they'll be coming out to make the presentation in just a moment as well. Again, it's, uh, Michelle. And uh, joining up with Jules there. Difficult job, and they, they're absolutely independent, as you see, they're set well apart, no one knows what the others are doing, but this is not going to be good enough for Cal. It's not going to put her into the lead. Yeah, all little deduction now. And um, it puts her in eighth place with 23.67, so we'll try, Kath. 23.67, much less than I think she deserved, but uh, there we go. Uh, it does mean that Lucy Creek will take the championship. She will win that with 27.3 points. I hope you've enjoyed that. That was really spectacular in many ways. Uh, and Lucy will be performing again on Saturday in the International Freestyle Final. And uh, our first three coming in first, uh, followed by the other competitors. They all know each other so well, they compete against each other throughout the year. And of course there are team competitions, and as we said, Kath Hardman has been leading the GV team for a couple of years. But it does mean that uh, Lucy Creek here wins for the third year running. She'll be very pleased with that. Very inventive. Uh, don't think any of them really got it perfect this year. They're, they're, they're right. Now and again, yeah. but, I mean, it's absolutely yeah. stunning. There are some great routines there with some wonderful elements. And congratulations to the three. So here comes the presentation. by our head judge. So the winner of the 2018 Crossfield Freestyle Competition with a stunning routine with her dog skiffle, Lucy Creek. She's done it again. And you there, Dave Ray, announcing to What a great routine, Lucy, Arena but that was here. very, very close. And she's won it for the third year running. Runner She'll up be with very her happy dog, Sybil. She puts a lot of effort into it. It was Cathy Bates invented. in and second Kathy place. Bates, very close there in second place. And, and in third place, and third I think she'll place, be so, so pleased. We just saw, not right far behind uh, Kathy, was Kim Lydon, our bricklayer. Wonderful. So well done, and of course well done to the uh, remaining the seven. Everyone did know they were doing a little run round the arena. And uh, a lap of honour, as always. This arena really has filled up. I'm amazed on a Thursday afternoon here in the UK. It's a pretty miserable day outside. Might have brightened up a little bit by now, but uh, we've had uh, really nasty winds and it's cold and there's been snow uh, in the surrounding areas and a lot of snow in uh, Yorkshire up in the north, towards the northwest. Uh, but here we are, cosy and warm in the Genting Arena at the NEC Birmingham in the UK. I hope you're enjoying our coverage here.
on YouTube. It's continuous throughout the afternoon and there will be full coverage of all the events. Uh, you just sit there and dip in, dip out. Uh, YouTube will be covering the entire Crufts program from this arena for the entire show, which of course finishes here at about 9 o'clock on Sunday night UK time. So we can wish uh, good luck to Lucy in the competition on Saturday, but tomorrow we have another competition, totally different. It's the heel work to music competition, and it is different. Uh, the freestyle is a much freer, as the name suggests, operation, but here it's very much dancing with dogs close to heel. It's very much the obedience section, really. We have many of the same competitors. Uh, Lucy Heath uh, is taking part, Cathy Bates uh, will be taking part again. Um, Lucy Creek <laughs> with yet another performance with Skiffle. Leslie Neville will be performing, so there's some good, good things to come. Anyway, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed our coverage of that today. Much more to come here from this arena. Stay with us. YouTube. Hello, my name is Sarah, and this is my hearing dog called Waffle. From a child that wouldn't even look into someone's eyes or even make eye contact to a child that will, is happy to explain this is my hearing dog, this is what they do for me it, it's a massive change. There was profoundly deaf. Her deafness is caused by CMV infection. It was a shock to the family so, because we were thinking of how her future is going to be and everything. It has affected her on a daily basis um, she wouldn't communicate with others, she wouldn't make any eye contact with uh, anybody out and about. I couldn't sleep my time without her and now I can, she always check on me. Before I had struggled friendships, stuff like that, I wouldn't talk to strangers or tell them like, this is my doll, but now I'm proud to say it. brings a joy, happiness. Just seeing the smile on her face will make our day because it's just, uh, it's been huge what Waffle has brought for her. In the morning, alarm go on. She wakes me up before school and then she jumps on my bed and then I give her fuss and then I just get ready for school. If Sarah's upstairs in her room, we'll say, Waffle, go call Sarah. She'll go upstairs, get Sarah, bring her downstairs. We have a purse that um, we put a message in it, and she'll take it to Sarah and then bring it back for us. When I was applying for um, Hearing Dog, I didn't think that it will have such a huge impact on our lives. It has brought her confidence. It has brought her everything, to be honest. It's brought her what she is now. It's because of Waffle. She really, really lucky, and there's nothing I can't do without her. I don't feel shy anymore when I'm with her. I feel brave with her. My name is Gail Wilde, and this is my urban search and rescue dog called Taz. To be perfectly honest, I don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> he's a brilliant dog, um, he's a fantastic working dog, and at home he just likes to curl up in a wee ball, sometimes on your lap, and run after a tennis ball like all collies. <laughs> Taz is a search dog that's been trained to do urban, rural, and coastline riverbank searches. So my role is he'll come back and he'll tell me where he believes a casualty is, and he will lead me to that particular spot. In this kind of environment, he'll have boots on uh, just to protect his feet and his jacket on with lights so we can see where he's going. Do you know what, looking back, the proudest moment I could have been was at the Cluther. I 
I remember en route, we were told the police helicopter had landed on the Clother and tasked with searching the rubble pile and surrounding area to locate pupils within the rubble pile itself. The building came down in such a way it almost like came down in three stages. So it needed um, someone who was either very small or the dog to actually get into those spaces and the dog was perfect. When he's actually on the job and he's got his coat on, he hears his bell, or his harness on and he hears his bell, he goes straight into work mode, no question. It showed immense courage to actually go into something which was still dynamic. The round about it, there was rubble falling, there was still dust everywhere. We're fine. It managed to save life in the sense that people who were working there were put at risk. It was indispensable. You train as best as you can in all different environments, but that night he just showed what a wonderful dog he was. I think Taz is just a hero. It's a remarkable dog and when called upon to serve, it's absolutely unique. Training Taz has been a long journey. He has gone out above and beyond of what I expected of him. He just overcomes every hurdle that we show him. To be Taz's owner makes me unbelievably proud of him. It really, really does. I think I saw in Jack what I saw in myself. People had given up on Jack, a little bit like people had given up on me as a child. First thing I'd say about Jack is that he, he loves being in front of the camera. He loves to pose and hopefully he loves being with me. He'd had three homes before me. And I couldn't walk him on the beach. I couldn't walk him with other dogs because of his behavioural problems, sort of fear aggression, no socialisation with other dogs whatsoever. And he would turn on me as well. People don't believe me that he was like that. I, I had many moments where I thought, my goodness, am I going to be able to turn this dog around? I guess there was a little part of me that wanted to prove other people wrong as well. I had an extensive psychiatric history. And my main problems have been anorexia, PTSD, and dissociative disorders. That's a, a medley that creates for quite a, a difficult existence. Jack is certainly the first thing that I've ever, ever attached to. And he's taught me what love is. I owe Jack for teaching me some of the sort of most fundamental emotions that, that humans should have um, and maybe things that people take for granted. I mean, he's got to the stage now where he's been accepted to train as my assistance dog. If I need my medication, he will we'll retrieve that to me, so I'm pretty in tune with my needs. I've got more out of Jack than I, I would have ever believed, yeah. I think that very indication to me shows me really how far he has come. The work that he's done is astonishing, really. Sounds, I don't know, a little bit corny, but he honestly saves my life every day. He is the reason I carry on. Hi, my name's Claire, and this is my canine partner, Griffin. Griffin is a very affectionate boy. He's very cheeky. He's the life and soul of the party. Um, he likes to show off as well, <laughs> like showing off his skills. Yes! Yes! I was born with a condition called Alostanlos syndrome. It's a connective tissue disorder that affects my joints, meaning I dislocate, I've got very soft and fragile skin, 
um, it affects my organs. I've been a full-time wheelchair user since the age of 13. I cannot walk, stand or straighten both knees. I'm reaching for something, I can dislocate my shoulder, my fingers, my wrists. So I do need quite a lot of help. I cannot eat at all um, and I can only swallow little bits of liquid at a time. Um, I didn't feel like I had a reason to get up in the morning. Um, I literally just lived life in four walls and that was it. When I applied for a canine partner, I didn't quite understand how much the dog would help me. So Griffin has over a hundred tasks that he can do day to day. Open and closing doors, load unload the washing machine, he gets the phone when it rings and all I have to do is say, Griffin, phone, get it and off he goes and brings it back to me. He goes and gets his jacket for me to put on, um, ready for us to go out and about. Now I have Griffin, I don't need any carers, I don't need no help. Um, we work as a team, whatever I can't do, he does for me. Um, I just thought it was a dog to help me physically, but Griffin has exceeded my expectations of what an assistant dog can do. When we go out and about, we always get stopped. You know, I've never had so many friends. Griffin is definitely my best friend. Um, he's a little bit of my hero as well. He's done some amazing things for me. Life as a disabled person is just, it can be so hard. Um, you're very invisible, um, which is one of the things I love about having Griffin. He has opened up a whole new world for me. Um, I'm not invisible anymore. Um, he just means the world to me. I'm Hannah and this is Buttons, my four-year-old Shih Tzu. Good girl. Good girl. I got her in 2013 and she came along just at the right time really. They are, they are so lovely to watch. Hannah's quite um, an introverted girl, always has been, and this has really opened up a whole new chapter in her life. It wasn't really until I got back from hospital after being in the high dependency unit for two weeks that I really noticed our bond. We'd been backwards and forwards to the doctors for about a year previous with various ailments. Oh, it was pretty horrendous. She was emergency blues and twos to the John Radcliffe Hospital uh, in Oxfordshire. Everything was going wrong. Every single day was going wrong. At that point you kind of then realise as a parent that you might lose your child and you just sit beside the bedside waiting for a miracle. And when she woke up from these seizures, she just woke up and said, Mum, I'm hungry. So that was our turning point. As soon as we got home, of course, the dog and her were like glue, really. When I came back, she was just all over me. And we spent a good couple of months. I was camped out on the sofa quite a lot, and she literally didn't leave my side. Uh, when I got out of hospital, because I had to go on quite an intense course of steroids. I was quite overweight, um, so my doctor suggested that I would get into exercise. We did some research and we found dog agility, um, and we haven't looked back since. We just started competing, and she's smashing it, basically. <laughs> she loves it so much. At the end of the day, that's what you want from a pet, isn't it? You want them to be your soulmate, your best friend, you know. It's helped her bring her out of her shell, because she can be a little bit shy at times, much like me. Um, <laughs> she's definitely more than just a dog.
Center, Crufts 2018, wherever you are watching. Welcome back to what will be a packed and entertaining afternoon session. A bit of fly ball coming later in the afternoon. We will be starting with the Kennel Club British Open final. They are walking the course at the moment. All the, uh, the dogs are qualified at an international agility final in Rockingham, the festival there and uh, there's a very good overseas entry as well for for this one uh, graham just uh, walking the course here as always so the action is a little while away and um, 40th anniversary this of agility as we mentioned to everybody who was with us this morning and and a very big year 2020 is going to be for agility in in the uk perhaps you can enlighten us on that oh it is i'm i'm very excited or as excited as a person my age can get anyway um yes 2020 is going to be a very very special year for us um we have been invited to uh, stage the european open agility championships uh, and we're going to be doing that at rutland showground on the 31st of july to the 2nd of August so make sure you put that uh, date in your in your diary the best agility dogs in the world and there are two main events staged by the FCI who control these events there's a European Open and the World Championships the World Championships are only for pedigree dogs can't have a mixed breed dog in the World Championships the European Open you can have any sort of dog you want any mix you can have a pedigree if you want to um, so, as I say, I think last year in Italy there were 42 countries represented. There are going to be hopefully approximately 750 dogs. Wow. So it promises to be an absolutely fantastic event. And it will take some organising, and I dare say you're the right man for the job. Yes, well, that's another job I talked myself into, <laughs> really. No, I've, I've been invited by the Kennel Club to chair the working party which is actually going to organize it um, on behalf of the kennel club uh, it's a great honor actually for the for the kennel club it's these events are organized by the fci uh, we are not a member of the fci um, we have a reciprocal arrangement with them as do canada and the usa uh, they're not members either but again they're allowed to participate by invitation okay that's still a little while away uh, the kennel club british open final is right around the corner um, eight small dogs, nine medium and ten large, and four overseas competitors in each section, just underlining what an international event Crufts 2018 has become. It is, and the British Open uh, was an event which we staged at the International Agility Festival, which incidentally is the biggest agility show in the world. Um, it's, it was specifically put on at this competition to attract overseas visitors to come to the festival, because it, it, at dangling on the end of the hook was an opportunity to compete at, the, at this event. And uh, the top few dogs qualified by right, and then in addition, the top international competitor also gets to be invited. So that's how we end up with, with, with more than one uh, international competitor in this event. And Graham, for everybody, anybody joining us for the first time, just, just to explain what uh, the handlers are doing at the moment, waving their arms in the air, shutting their eyes, uh, just to creating a vision of the course in their brain, aren't they? Yeah, well, if, you, if you're an alien spaceship looking down, you'd think everyone had gone mad. But uh, the judges designed the course. Every course is different in, for every competition, uh, designed primarily for safety. Then it has to be appropriate for the competition and then it uh, has to be, as I say, it has to be safe. But what they're doing now is they will have only seen the course about 20 minutes, half an hour ago. First time they've seen it, the dog's totally dependent on the handler. So they're walking around. First of all, they've got to memorise the route because the, the obstacles have got to be completed in order. Then they've got to decide where they want to be in relation to their dog because it's all done with body language um, and verbal commands. So. Uh, that's what they've got to do they've got to memorize it and here come uh, i think our intrepid ring party and that's alan bray in in shot there and they've all been in action uh, this morning as as well this effectively the second round of the day yep this is a two-part competition there was a jumping round this morning and the running order of the competitors this afternoon will be uh, was decided by the results in the jumping round this morning there are separate awards for this agility competition, which you can see it is, because it's got the contact equipment in it. And then there will be a, an overall winner of the British Open. 
We are all set then for the Kennel Club British Open Final. Small, medium and large dogs involved as ever. Eight small, nine medium, ten large dogs and four overseas competitors in each section. They've all been in action this morning and they will be running this around effectively in reverse order of how they finished. And at the end of it all, we will have an agility winner and a combined winner as well. Very good crowd here on the opening day of Crofts 2018 in the main arena. And a few Scottish flags are fluttering there because uh, Peter Elms is the judge, born in Edinburgh, now living in West Lothian, competing for 25 years, judging for 20, a dog agility trainer as well right now, married to Tricia, who's competing in the small championship class on Sunday. Just a little matter of nine dogs, four collies, five poodles he owns. And our first entry is from Remscheid in Germany, Tanya Guber with Mabel, ten and a half years, ready to retire. And then she surprised everybody by qualifying for Crufts. And Tanya so proud of that. And besides agility, this one likes chasing birds. First to go then in the small section. And uh, as Mabel makes her way around, let's get some thoughts on the course they have here from you, Grant. Good, fast start to this course. This dog may not look as though it's the quickest, but it's also accuracy that counts. So we're looking for some clear rounds. Big long run onto the dog walk, allowing the dogs to straighten up if they've strayed off their line a little bit. A bit steady down there. Now, this is a difficult piece. They've got to push right out around the back of that jump before they come back round to the seesaw, which is the control section of the course. It must touch the ground before the dog gets off it. And we're clear so far as we come to the weaving poles. The dog must enter to the right of the first pole and then in and out alternately till it gets to the end and they must be completed correctly and now another sharp turn now as we come back towards the center of the arena again round the back of that jump there they go that's another little testing piece up over the a-frame again those white areas the dog must make contact with them nicely done and now this is going to be a really quick finish now long jump 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 to finish and this is going to be a really good start time of 68.649 Just a few time faults there, 55 seconds is the course time, so they will pick up some faults. Next to go is uh, Nico Deschamps from Belgium with Chip, seven-year-old Border Terrier. So Nico very much with his game face on walking the course beforehand. And now we wait to see what uh, Jip, the Border Terrier, can do. And away we go. And she looks a little bit quicker as well to be through that back tunnel. Backing away around, and this is a lively start and a clean start as well from Jip. From Belgium, sharp turn there. Up and down over the dog walk, all good. Nice little stumble and skid. But Handler and Dog in perfect synchronicity here through the tunnel as well. No points, 22 seconds is good in from the right, as Graham has explained. Quickly through that as well. Big leap for the little dog and a sharp left turn. Just a bit of hesitation there, but it's still good and it, more importantly, it's still clean and it's inside the time as well. A frame, no problem at all. Turning at the end, 40 seconds down, twisting for the big finish, and the big finish is there as well, and it's 44, and it is a clear round as well. Wow, what a great run that was. Absolutely went for it, as uh, our European counterparts tend to do. Uh, no prisoners taken, as you can see. That was a lovely turn around there. Two footing through the weaving poles. And is he happy? You bet your life he is. Alan Bray, hugely experienced, consistently successful with Tatiana, 10 year old miniature poodle. It's not too much about this uh, sport of agility that 
Helen hasn't known or taken part of, but sadly, there is the dreaded cross dance, means a disqualification into the wrong way there. It was, it took the jump on the wrong side. Alan will be absolutely kicking himself. He just looked up to see where he was going and took his eyes momentarily off the dog. And Tatiana said, right, if you're not going to look at me, I'm going to take the jump I think is next, which turned out to be wrong. Such a shame. Alan's uh, one of our top judges. He's probably been one of our most successful handlers over uh, quite a few years. I won't say how many, but uh, still there at the top, still doing a great job, still contributing a lot to the sport of agility. Completing the round, of course, but uh, sadly disqualified. But the dog won't. <laughs> Tatiana. And the eye contact, you said there, eye contact. Here's uh, Sally Cooper from Worthing and Keiko Poodle, nine-year-old. First agility dog for Sally, first time competing in the British Open as well. 44.2 and zero penalties the time to beat, just to remind you. Dainty little dog, it's quite hard to judge the speed. It's quick and nimble, and it is clean so far, Graham. You're right, it's uh, very deceptive. It doesn't look as though it's covering the ground, but I think it is. It's turning very smoothly. There's not a lot wrong with this at all. Lots of encouragement. Great style through the weaves as well. This is where you have to keep the pace up. Another 10 seconds to beat the winning time at the moment. It's going to be pretty close. It's going to be pretty close. And just inside. Excellent work from Sally and from Keiko. Top of the pile at the moment, Graham. Well, as I say, that was really deceptive because that little border terrier there by the Belgian competitor looked as though it was going uh, hell tank. But there we go. You're looking at Sarah McLean from Nantwich and Milo, three-year-old Jack Russell, second agility dog for Sarah. A lot of focus, a lot of enthusiasm, good jumper as well. Good style up onto the dog walk, push around the back, notice how the handler was there before the dog. And again, I think this is a crack building up to a cracking competition here. We've got another dog that looks as though it's going to be challenging. Remember, 43 seconds is the quickest so far and clear, and it's pretty well up there, and it is clean thus far for Sarah and for Milo. Up and down over the A-frame. It's going to be close. It's going to have to be very quick at the end there. Going to have to really scamper to get inside the winning time. And 43.2. Just, just does it. Yep, into the lead. Well done. I told you, this is building up now. Previous winner, this uh, Michel uh, Tafin Dubois from the Netherlands. Seven-year-old Dinky Dutch. Fifth time at Crufts and fourth with Dinky. Once in a lifetime dog, this one. Oh, just lost a bit of time there. It was a turn just before a bit of indecision, so now she's going to have to go. Michelle, a really experienced competitor. She's been here before. She's won the competition before in 2012, second last year. So she's got a fantastic pedigree and she knows exactly what she needs to do. We've already ascertained this is going to be decided by margins, by fractions of a second. That time to beat is 43. It's 43. And it's outside it. 44.2. And that little bit of hesitation in the middle of the round, Graham, proving very, very costly. Yes, and uh, that's what the, this competition is going to be run on uh, split seconds, I think, Jim. From Germany, Lissandra Stroll is underway. Lou, seven-year-old Shetland sheepdog, competing in 13 different countries so far. World champion in Zaragoza, Spain, a couple of years ago. Danish and Swedish agility champion. One to watch the penultimate dog in the small section of the British Open. Real class act, this pair. This dog's fantastic. Very, very small, quite short leg for a, for a Sheltie. But aren't they giving it a good go, Jim? And there's good pace here as, as well. Very tight corners, very quickly over the A-frame. 
Oh dear, as we were building for the big finish, just a loss of concentration and five faults for a fine round indeed for Lissandra from Germany and from Lou. Such a shame, just pulled off just a fraction early because she knew she had to run down that link, but there we go. Last to go then in the small section of the British Open, Bonnie Quick from Wellington in Somerset had a baby Charlie just a month ago, did Bonnie. Five-year-old Shelley, gold heart by name, gold hearted by nature. And knowing that uh, she's the only one who can deny Sarah McLean the title here. Has to be inside 43 and has to be clean as well. Good start though, Brad. If she's clean, she's certainly got the speed to win this. She just needs to make sure that she keeps everything tight, everything smooth, nice tight turns, and then she's going to have to leg it down there a month after having a baby. Well, Come on, Bonnie. Well, fantastic achievement that and a fantastic effort out there as well it's looking good the clock is looking good for bonnie and for shelley as well 43 to beat 43 to beat and two seconds the margin what a finale what a winner well well what a great start to the afternoon program that is that is probably some of the best competition i've seen from the small handlers so competitive i mean from start to finish we only had one elimination out of that and we had five fabulous clear rounds and look at that is bonnie happy yes she is she's got something to celebrate winning the British Open here this afternoon, the agility part of it, and and having a baby. <laughs> what a month it has been then for Bonnie Quick, baby Charlie a month ago, and a winner here uh, with Shelley in the small section of the British Open. Brilliant stuff and a fine competition. So the jumps have gone up now to uh, 350 mil. Four years of age. First to go, Catherine Sondergaard from the Netherlands. Casimir Blue, four-year-old uh, Shetland Sheepdog, very special dog as well. Always does her best, loves this game of agility. Over 330 uh, Dutch competitors and uh, entries at Crafts, not just in the agility, of course. Very popular show with everybody in the Netherlands. Picked up five faults so far. Very lucky not to pick up another five there. Rattle that one and a little bit of miscommunication over that particular obstacle. That'll be another five. Up over the A-frame. Again, double swirl and turn. 15 faults. And that is the first of the medium dog square. The effort there from Catherine. Uh, just to remind everybody, we're running the order. Running order from here is determined by the results okay, from this morning's start, jumping round. You, you've heard a lot. If I say the words, can you move down the bus? If you've got gaps in the middle of the seat, can you move down one or two or three? We've got hundreds out. Jürgen Schmidt, another entry from the Netherlands with Eon, nine-year-old uh, Shetland Sheepdog, Shelty. Absolutely delighted to be here at Crofton. Just uh, listening to the announcement there. It is jam-packed already on the first afternoon here. People have been asked to move down and make room for everybody that wants to come in and see this competition. Here goes Jürgen. Clean and quick start for Jürgen and for Eon. Had a little thought about uh, the weaves there and then moved on well over the dog walk. Just picking up speed now, just gaining confidence. May not be used to this big environment. It is quite an atmosphere here this afternoon I have to admit and the dog looks just a little bit unsure but he's nice and smooth so this is going to uh, set the tone the course time for this competition is 50 seconds so we'll be keeping an eye on the clock and it's clean uh, so far just coming down to the final two or three hurdles over that far side and oh just clip one what a shame again what a shame well inside the time and just picking up those five faults right at the end as so often happens Graham such a shame, but uh, having an absolutely fantastic time, and that's all it takes, just the dog to drop its paw, and it's all over. Here is uh, Lara Staplehurst from Cuckfield in West Sussex, an eight-year-old Alfie. No clear round so far. The best, uh, Jürgen Schmidt, 45 seconds and five penalty points. A lot of very good entries still to come, of course. 
Funny that it says dogs don't enjoy agility. You should have a look at Alfie here, little yelps and the tail wagging as well. Absolutely loves it. It's what it should be. This is, should just be a game to these dogs, all done with uh, repetition and reward and kind motivational techniques. Just knocking a pole there, but uh, she'll want to finish this off. It's going to be now she's going to run. Come on, Laura, run. Well done. Fantastic. Well done, Alfie. That's a very, very uh, good finish and actually puts Lara and, and Alfie up into first place for those five penalties with a quick time of 43 seconds as well. So that's a very good effort. We still have not had a clear round in this medium section of the British Open. Nick Circuit from Aundel in Peterborough. Eight-year-old ballet. First time at Crofts for Nick. Looking forward to running on that green carpet and he's determined to give it give it his all for some special people who have helped this pair get here on the big stage. First time, that must be daunting, Graham. It is, uh, uh, there's, but there's no substitute for experience. So the next time he gets here, he is going to be much better for it. So, But hey, he's doing really well here. He's clear at the moment, and that's what we all want to do. There are no clear rounds at the moment. Whatever happens, you've got to keep going. Lots of encouragement there. It's a nice tight turn as they come round over the jump. You can Uber jumps round towards the A-frame. Up and down over that A-frame then. Just picked up the five faults, unfortunately, but the time is pretty quick. That's a good time. 41.5 is comfortably the quickest we have had, and with just the five penalty points, that is good enough to put Nick Circuit and Ballet up into first place. We still await our first clear round. Stefan Nagel from Bielefeld in Germany with Annie, three-year-old sheepdog, started agility back in 2002. And did Stefan and describes this dog as his soulmate. And low to the carpet, but good pace, and the time is good as well. Up and down the seesaw, got to hit that white bit at the end, otherwise you get penalty points in from the right to the weaves. Clear, less than 30 seconds, looking for a big, big finish and looking to keep it clear and clean as well. A Stefan and Annie, A-frame. It's looking good, the time is good, and it's clear this could be the best so far. If he can negotiate these last two, it's very fast, and it is clear. 44.2 and a clear round, good enough to move him top of the pile. Well done, Stefan, absolutely fantastic. Look at him keeping an eye on the dog, nicely made contact there. Round the back, no time waste at all. See how close that was round that jump. And now he's looking for his reward, and he's going to get it. Nicola Garrett from Rugeley with Z. Only the second Crufts for Z. Been here many times. Even won a gold medal in the Netherlands last year. And a good competitor, this one on the World Grand World Championships, European Championship squads. Yes, Nicola's been around for a few years now. Extremely competitive, um, very consistent dog trainer. Always turns out fantastically well-motivated dogs. And she's got a will to win. So you can know she's just going to be firing at this one. Firing at this one and looking OK, although the time might be a little bit down. Has to be clear, has to be under 44 seconds. And it's looking good. I think it's going to be inside it, you know. It's going to be inside it. It is, it is. Comfortably, too, by three seconds for Nicola Garrett. Well done, Nicola. Great run. This is a fantastic dog here. No time wasted on the seesaw. Obey one crazy dude, and it is one crazy dude. <laughs> Abigail Doxford from Bristol with Wakefield, seven-year-old working cocker spaniel. Rescue working cock can be a bit of a handful this one, but loves the big crowds and enjoys crust, but will not enjoy this one because it is an elimination, Graham. Not perhaps what you expect from uh, someone who's in that international squad. It can happen to everybody, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, nerves play a massive part um, in, in these competitions, and the dog. She just took her eye off a dog looking for the next jump and dogs over the, over the, around the side of it and round the back before she can blink. But uh, nice dog this, hope she does well. Say so she's on the GB squad, which is absolutely fantastic for her and she deserves uh, all the applause that she gets. So well done.
So, the eliminations for Abigail. From Spain, Jesus Fernandez Crespo and Mocha, two year old English Cocker Spaniel. Loves Crufts, friendly and very, very competitive dog is Mocha. From Madrid is Jesus. Part of the international entry that we're going to be talking a lot about over the next three days. Time to beat. Clear round 41.5. Has to be clear to overtake Nicola Garrett and Z. What have you made of this so far, Graham? Very nice. Uh, always uh, runs a good dog. Here now, we've just got to get a nice tight turn on this next jump, which will uh, help him. There we are, up and down. I expect he's got a running A-frame, has he? Ooh, a little bit slow, but anyway, come on then. He's got three more to go. Looking really good here. Is it going to be really tight? Oh, my goodness. Very, very tight indeed. 42.0 plays, 41.5. So Nicola Garrett still leads. Holds off Mocha and Jesus from Madrid in Spain. Very, very close and just one to go now. One to go. Haley Telling, winner last time. Same combination with Tilly, four-year-old Shetland Sheepdog. This one has had a red-hot 12 months and will have to be in great form here today to beat 41.5 and Nicola Garrett. There's a lot of life and a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of pace about this round already. This is fast. Daintily through the weaves. Can she do it? Just keep an eye on the clock at the bottom of your screen and keep an eye on the faults as well. Faultless thus far. A frame coming towards the climax of the round. 33, got to be inside 41. She's looking good. She's looking good. She is looking outstanding. Three seconds. That's a massive great bite out of that time, Graham. Well, I think you said it, Jim. Outstanding. Uh, and I said to you when we were making notes about the competitors, she's been on fire this year. Um, had an exceptional summer. Uh, had the pleasure of interviewing her at the International Literary Festival when she won some events there. Uh, she's just a committed, good dog trainer who wants to win. Uh, and I think you could see that. An absolutely fantastic run. Is she happy? Yes, I think you could say she is. Absolutely entitled to punch the air after that one. Haley Telling, last to go, retaining their title. Haley Telling and Teal, winner last time in 2017 and winner here of the medium section of the British Open in 2018. I'm having trouble drawing my breath here. I mean, it's just been absolutely fantastic, the competition that we've had here. So just to remind everybody, it's uh, there's this competition for small, medium and large dogs have their own awards. And now the jumps have gone up to a large. And we will start the large section of the competition. And just to remind you to keep an eye on the clock. Course time is 50 seconds. Yoni Orinius from Sweden wants the crowd behind him. Seven-year-old Nila, border collie. Great pedigree behind these two. World Championships medalist as well. Look at the concentration from Nila. Poised, ready to go as they check the heights of the jumps. Wearing the football shirt of Sweden. Is Yoni from Lund in Sweden. First to go in the large section of this Kennel Club British Open final. Great pitches. Great pitches. Just making sure that the timing gates are working correctly. We have electronic timing here. As you can see how close it's been. It actually goes down to a thousandth of a second. Uh, but we do have a backup timer. Yoni Orinius from Lund in Sweden and Nila, seven-year-old border collie, first to go in the large section of the British Open. First of ten dogs to go. This one of four overseas competitors. And the importance of pace and the importance of a clear round as well cannot be overestimated. And this is uh, the dog was absolutely riveted before the start. 
concentration in his eyes is fantastic, and it's good so far. Might not be the quickest, but it's good and clean and a fine effort from Yoni and Neil. This is very good. A tight turn at the far end of the course from where we are sitting. This has set the standard. This has set the standard. Just clipping up five faults right at the end there, Graham. <laughs> They look so simple, those finishing ones, but they get you out if you're not perfect. And that's what they're there for. It's uh, set on a long run. They just clip the end of the logbook. Very unlucky. All the colleagues, four years of age, another agility champion. All the way from Coventry, so they had that far to travel. Secondary of Gruff's suit kick for agility and loves the crowd cheering on. So this dog likes the crowd cheering. Not too far to go from Coventry for Joe Gleed and Scooter, four year old Border Collie. Second year at Cruft, super keen and loves the crowd cheering her on. And that is an early fault they could have done without. Very, ex very experienced a combination. Of the European team last year. And uh, an early fault, but of course, they have to keep going. You never know, and they have to go as quickly as possible and look not to pick up any more of those faults. That really was a careless and unnecessary one, Graham, perhaps. Yes, such a shame. Uh, but as I say, Joe's done fantastically well. I, I said that before that she's probably one of the uh, year's most improved handers. She's just had a baby. She's done fantastically well to get here. So all I say is hats off to her. Well done, Joe. Yep, well done, Joe. New mum, uh, Evie, born just after Christmas last year. And they will curse picking up those five penalties. Alan Smith from Milton near Abingdon with uh, Chili, nine-year-old uh, Border Collie. Now, this one could just be in the mix. Very, very consistent pairing. And fast over the ground as well is Chili. They will clap of the hands. They're all tempted to go through the weaves there, but uh, it's good so far. And just five faults. Must have just missed that, uh, missed the white landing area at the bottom there. In from the right, more faults. And uh, this round really not what we expected for Alan or for Chile. Well, Alan uh, will always go for 101 percent. The dog missed the end of the dog walk, and I think his attention then was, uh, why did the dog miss it? Oh, for goodness sake, I've missed it. And then you, you, you concentration goes for the rest of it. Alan Smith and Chile, not the one they wanted, really, and uh, infuriated to pick up. They have to touch that, uh, that white at the end of the dog walk, and a few complications in, around the weaves as well. From Milton Keynes, Alan Bray with Indiana, 10-year-old uh, Border Collie. We've seen Alan in the small with Tatiana, very experienced judge and competitor as well, Alan Bray and Indiana. Diving through that tunnel there. Letting us know is Indiana, The Indiana's in the house. And Alan's going to hope he's going to be in the mix at come the prize giving. Very experienced, as you say. He doesn't look as though he's rushing or he's trying, but uh, that's just Alan's style. He's very laid back. Quite often to be seen walking a course in his slippers in the morning. Uh, he's that type of guy, but he really is great. Well, he's got his trainers on, not his slippers now, and he'd be very, very happy with the way things are going so far as uh, Indiana gets down over that A-frame and looks for a, a finish that will bring him quick and will bring them clear as well. 44.2 for Alan Bray, and that no penalties means they lead at the moment. Very nice, two footing through the weaving poles there, and you see just a little bit of time wasted here. If someone can do that without stopping, they're going to make it. Chris Kowecki from Cardiff, Aussie, seven year old Kelpie, already underway always emerges from a competition thinking that he has won always tries hard oh dear there's a bit of, there's a bit of a hesitation and a mess up there and uh, that'll mean faults and that'll mean another five as well this uh, round really not going according to plan for chris or for ozzy
And Aussie with those faults will be out of the reckoning. There's a big finish. And Aussie <laughs> will think, will think uh, uh, he has won. But uh, sadly he has a couple of mistakes. There we are. Now how the dog didn't do that jump, I've got no idea. Then confusion reigns. And then it's a refusal. And then the dog does do it and knocks a pole. Such a shame. Next to go from Norwich, Helen Anderson and Neo Border Collie. Consistent handler is at Helen with all sizes of dogs. Very quick, very athletic around the arena as well. Round, round is the shout. Round comes Neo. This is good, good time. 20 seconds at this stage. Tail flapping through those weaves. Little slip at the end of it. Tight turn there. And another one. 44 to beat, and it's looking good. Over the A-frame. It's still good. It's still faultless. He's going to be inside it by a big, big margin as well. 39.5. Just the five seconds inside it. Just the five seconds. And as you say, the five seconds was made up on uh, the contacts where... They ca that dog came down just that little bit quicker well, than the, the dog has gone before. Mark Rabada, another international entry from Spain with Rinoa, seven-year-old border collie. And an awesome time to beat Helen Anderson's 39.5 clear round. Really is a tough, tough target to get the better of. Just a slight loss of time there, but it's okay, and it is still clean. Quickly through the tunnel. Lovely through the weaves. 39, as it's just appeared on your screen there. Do a bit of clock watching now. It is going to be pretty close to it. Will it be inside it? Probably not quite, or will it? Not quite. Not quite, but a very, very good round from the Spaniard, Mark Rabada and Rinoa. And here you notice that uh, just like the other Spanish competitor, he took the dog to the right because they think that that's a better line onto the seesaw. Just interesting that most of them went to the left, but uh, it's just the way they see it. Lucy Hinchley from Somerset, seven-year-old border collie, Pixie. Great attitude, this one. Can be a bit wild and wild at the start there means five points. Likes the limelight and again a little bit of hesitation and uncertainty there. Knows how to get over that dog walk though. Just made contact with a contact point at the end of it. So just the five faults so far. Picking up pace, picking up a bit of confidence now. After that uncertain, slightly nervous start, Graham. Yep, very quick dog, lots of enthusiasm, that's just what you want. But the quicker and the more enthusiastic they are, the harder you have to work. Again, just quick getting off the A-frame there, so another five faults. So well done, Lucy, finishing on ten faults. That'll probably put her in about sixth place in the standing so far. Two dogs to go. 39 seconds to beat. Another competitor uh, from Sweden, Juni Orinius and Prince Lea, two-year-old border collie. Won the qualifying competition to get here. The penultimate dog from Sweden. And that's a very quick start as well. This is a quick dog, class act. If I had 50p, I think if they can go clear, there's no doubt that they're actually going to go into the lead here. Look oh. at that, that's absolutely phenomenal. Now the control part slows down into the tunnel again, another control part. They've got to get into these weaving poles in and out as they come around, looking for a tight turn here. Yuri and Princess Leah have found a bit of overdrive here and are very well up on the time. Can they keep it clear and clean? And oh no, oh no. Missed the A-frame and went for the tunnel. Uni cannot believe it. Great sport, though. Applauds the crowd. And you've got to get everything right here. Otherwise, everything's wrong. Just, I'm sat here, I'm sat here shaking my head. <laughs> that was absolutely phenomenal round. Oh, brilliant. He, and again, you can never assume. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, 
there to pick the A-frame. This time, I'll go through the tunnel. But great fun, great enjoyment, great competitor as well. Junior in this week. Last one then from Belgium, Olivier Maunard and Silky Keen, six-year-old border collie, to beat 39.5 and a clear round as well to win this large section. Last of the ten. Big crowd, just about a capacity crowd in here already on the first afternoon of Crofts 2018, watching Silky Key. Well, this is good. This will be in the mix if it keeps this sort of pace. Very good turn. Looking for the next obstacle as well. What about the A-frame? Yep, over that. No, no worries with the tunnel this time. Keep an eye on it. 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 Two seconds inside. Absolutely brilliant. It's a win for Belgium. And a super, super round, saving the best till last, Graham. Was, as I say, didn't have that frenetic energy that you saw from some of the others, but it's a big dog, very long striding, covers the ground, uh, well-deserved, 37.736, absolutely fantastic, a very well-deserved winner. Confirmation then, a win for Belgium, for Olivier Marnat and Silky Keane, and uh, winning by two clear seconds uh, from Helen Anderson and Mark coming up in third place. That's the result of a large section and a great, great competition. And as we told you at the start, the overall results that include uh, the jumping this morning and the overall rankings is a win for uh, Bonnie Quick and with uh, Michel Tapin and Dubois in second place and Sarah McLean in third. That's the overall ranking in the small dogs section. And uh, looking at the medium overall results, combining the two competitions. Well, we'll bring those to you as soon as we can, the medium overall results. And here they are coming up, uh, coming up for you now. And uh, that's Hayley Telling. A top of the file in the overall ranking there, uh, Jesus Fernandez Crespo in second place and Nicola Garrett uh, completing the top three in the overall rankings in the medium section. And just one more set of results to give you that, of course, the competition that we have uh, just seen here, the large overall and there we are, uh, Silky Keen winning the overall uh, section as well. Helen Anderson, second place, and Mark uh, Rabada in third. So we shall shortly be seeing the presentations here in the main arena. And the first presentations that we will actually see will be for the uh, individual competition that took part this afternoon. And then the second presentation you'll see will be for the overall set of results that Jim's just uh, just bought you. You can see from the arena that uh, we've got more agility to come. Uh, and the next competition uh, very shortly is going to be the Novice Cup. So, so first of all, give your hands together, please, for Hector Heathcote, member of the Kennel Club board, who is going to do the presentation for us this afternoon. First of all, we're going to start off with the agility run. Oh, let's have a big R. Come on, big R. 
Look at the first angle. It's not a training aid. It's best to start with young. So this is presentation for the first. So this afternoon's classes, and we start off with the small dogs. In first place was Bonnie Quick with the Agility Champion. And there we are. Trailer Bonnie Fame. Quick complete with baby, winner of the Agility Super section. Run. Oh, and I'm sure we're going to get a fantastic week. picture. Well done. Start of Charlie, Who knows? congratulations. So First bit of publicity, and I'm sure Sarah being the baby of Bonnie Quick, it won't be the last we'll see of them on Crufts. Well and then we go on to the mediums. First place in the mediums is Hayley Telling. Hayley Telling now, winner of the medium section. Lovely smile. So pleased, that's what everybody wants to do. And Nicola Garrett picking up second place. And then on to the large. There's Oliver, Silky. Oliver Mona, Silky Keane, winner of the large. Helen Anderson picking up second place. Now we're coming to the overall results for the British Open for Crufts 2018. The winner, Bonnie Quick. So, so pleased for it. Michelle Taffin de Bois, second place. I think she got second place last year. Very pleased from Holland. And Hayley Telling winning the overall medium title. Jesus from Spain picking up second place. On to the large dogs, the winners, Oliver is back again from Belgium. And the winner from Belgium, Oliver Monner with Silky Keane and Helen Anderson. So you can see it was pretty much as the uh, competition went this afternoon. Great, great competition uh, and we've got lots more to come. And the customary lap of honour around this packed Crufts arena. Everybody enthralled about what's going on, having an absolutely fantastic time. And this is only day one. Okay, so stay with excited. As you can see at the moment, the course is just being built for our next competition, which is the Kennel Club Novice Cup final. Now, these are the dogs that are, let's, if I say experts, it's like everything that works in, in sport. Uh, you have your starters, you have your novices, and you have your seniors and so on. These are the novice ones. They qualify throughout the year again. Peter's back, and you'll have a new commentator for the next one. It's the man himself, Mr. Dave Ray. It's going to look all else we've got on as far as agility goes. We've also got the West Midlands Police on this afternoon. That's at around about four o'clock, although we might be early, you never know. Where's the fly ball gone? I've lost it, I can't see it. It's here. Oh, there it is, quarter past three. Quarter past three. Gosh, they're giving us three quarters of an hour. My word. So quarter past three-ish might be a little bit earlier. Fly ball quarterfinals. I can tell you, if you seriously want to make some noise and see dogs having serious fun, it's literally straight up, straight down, if you haven't seen it before, and well worth releasing those vocals, okay? So that's a bit later on about quarter past three. So I'm going to hand the mic over shortly to Dave. In the meantime, I'll have a little bit of music probably while I finish building the course. Hope you've enjoyed the commentary there. And Dave will be back with you very shortly for the Kennel, Kennel Club Novice Cup Final. See you soon.
So the next action on the opening day of Croft 2018 in a just about packed uh, main arena is the Kennel Club Novice Cup Final. Dogs graded three, four and five in this one. Explain that for us first of all if you could, Graham. Okay, in the United Kingdom we have, or the Kennel Club, we have grades one to seven. One bin uh, the grade where you come in and start with a brand new dog, brand new handler, never, never won anything before, and you can progress up through the grades uh, to grade seven. So three, four, and five is what uh, colloquially, colloquially was called novice. So we used to have starters, novice, and senior. Three, four, and five is right in the middle. So we could have some grade three dogs here, and, and a grade three dog, could, it could be its first competition, potentially. It's not, because this is a, the result of a qualifying competition from the International Agility Festival. That's where all these people have been and qualified. Uh, and this is going to be the second part of a two-part competition. This is the agility section, so there'll be a separate awards presented at the end for this competition. Then they will combine the results from the two rounds, and we will have an overall Novice Cup winner. As you can tell, uh, Graham knows his dogs. If you want to get in touch with us or ask any questions, uh, youtube.com forward slash crafts. We're on YouTube uh, for that, and we welcome any of your questions either on YouTube or on Facebook. And at uh, this the two-part competition that uh, Graham has alluded to, separate awards, as if you were with us a bit earlier on, as we had last time in the uh, British Open final. Seven small, seven medium, and ten large dogs to go. And vital moments, these, uh, Graham, as always, for all the handlers out there who are probably reaching the end of their inspections now. Yes, they will uh, have seen a, a written a copy of the course plan before they came in here, but it's always a bit more different when they when they arrive. Um, so it, it, it's, it's interesting. They've got lots to think about out there. They've got to think about where they're going, what they're going to tell the dog, where they think the dog's going to be in relation to them. All really important stuff. A red tide sweeping them off there, saying it's time to go. It's time it's, to get, get, get your dog. It's Yukonuba Pink, I think is the word. <laughs> um, but Good yes, mention of the sponsors there, they, by the way. Well done. Very subtle. They won't leave. If you, if you don't do that, you, you have to drag them off sometimes. Seven thousand the capacity here, and it is pretty nigh full. A lot of people here on the opening day have cropped over a, a hundred and sixty thousand come through the gates over the four days. It is a, a phenomenal event. Twenty-seven thousand dogs are here, and now we're going to concentrate on the small section of the kennel club novices. And we await uh, the arrival of our judge and just have a look at that for a crowd on the opening Thursday it really is just an outstanding attraction and as always the event will build and build right through to the climax on Sunday night when we crown the best in show and a hush as we await uh, the arrival of our judge uh, pick Peter Elms Why? Looking forward to uh, a really, really good competition here. Not the most experienced dogs, but there could be some. Uh, there be, could be some quite young ones here, some inexperienced ones. So, uh, but I've, I've no doubt that we are going to see another great competition. And we're very pleased to welcome our championship judge here. He's very experienced. He does everything in agility. And for many years, he's down from your side of Peter Elms. And we welcome back uh, Peter Elms. The Scott, who, as my Tricia, completes uh, on Sunday in the small championship class, saying it's just a great honour to be asked to judge at Crufts. And uh, the first event he's going to be judging. Small section, first to go the seven small dogs Gloria Bryant from Essex Ingateston and Daisy seven-year-old uh, Jack Russell either be crazy Daisy or lazy Daisy we shall see just just saw a picture then of her reminding herself where the course went so a bit of a hesitant start but we're picking up some speed now 
never, never a good place to be going number one because you just don't know what's going to happen. Daisy doing things uh, at her own pace at the moment, but no faults thus far. And you can't ask her for more than that. Just made contact at the end of, of the dog walk. And the next dog uh, goes a grand. You can just talk us around uh, the course. We'll just uh, see this opening round, which is uh, not the quickest we're going to see, I'm absolutely sure. But it is perfection so far. And, and that's... Uh, it was perfection and picking up five points through those weaves on the far side come back towards our commentary box now tight turn uh, in, into that tunnel and then there's the final leap and that's five faults and uh, 53 seconds a little bit of hesitancy there graham oh i don't know if i could do that yes i can oh look at that absolutely fantastic oh we've got a puppy on the start line now i did say there was more but puppy on for excellent this is melinda saver Melinda Sava from Bristol and Tinks. Four-year-old Papillon. Oh, not too keen on the start here, but uh, the time hasn't started, hasn't gone past the first obstacle, so not picking up any faults here at the moment. So she just, she's just trying to wind it up now, play with it. Yes, hey, come on, let's have some fun. Nope, can't do the first jump. Ah, I'm not sure this is going to be uh, Papillon's finest hour. <laughs> If, if, if I'm honest with you, first season competing, uh, first qualification for Crusps as well. And uh, let's just be very, very kind and say this will be invaluable experience. I, I would never be anything else to someone uh, in this situation um, because now, as you say, she, she must have done it before because this is the second round of the competition and she just has to be just a little bit patient. She'll want to try and get the dog over a few jumps at least and keep it happy at the same time, but it doesn't look as though he actually no. wants to know about this. No. And it is, a, you can't, you can't right, overstress so what here. such a big occasion this is. Um, yeah. and, I, and I really do feel um, for the Linda here. I think she's going to give they're this another go. One. Oh. oh, I don't think that's allowed, but I think they're going to let her get away with it, I think. It's called double handling. OK, <laughs> one last go. There we go. Hey. Did he throw that dog over the... <laughs> <laughs> one last go. We're not sure how legal it is. I'm not sure, if I'm honest with you, Graham, it's going to matter that much. <laughs> and... Uh, I think, I think she's decided yeah. that discretion Tinks. is the better part of valour. Thinks that'll do. <laughs> but she's smiling. And, and that uh, really is what I love, is she's gone out, you know, um, it's been an absolute nightmare for her, but well done. She's gone out with a smile. Uh, how do you describe this technically? Well, this is, I think this is, a, I'm not sure what you describe this as, but it's the look that the dog gives the bloke at this. He's just put him over the jump. <laughs> Vanessa Hardin from Milton Keynes with uh, Jelly Tot. Three last month. There's already one in breed, rally, obedience and agility here to make a few memories. And obedience as well. Getting into his stride now over the dog walk. And then straight on from the dog walk, so that's where it makes it just a bit easier. And now straight into the tunnel. This is a really quick section of the course here. Chance to wake up just a little bit of time as she turns now towards the A-frame. Up and over there in a blink of an eye. Very nice too. And a nice straightforward finish into the weaves. She must go into the right in the first pole alternately after that and must complete them before she goes on. Now over the IAMS jump into the tunnel, just one more to go. Come on, looking here for a clear round. Is she going to be in the course time? Oh, yes, by a hair's breadth. 54.155. 55 seconds is the course time, so she's got a clear round into the lead she goes. Very good effort um, from uh, uh, Vanessa Hardy. Vicky Young and Oreo from Bracknell. Vicky's competed in agility for about 10 years. Oreo's a second dog. Cannot believe they are here. An absolute dream come true. And let's hope on the big, big stage, the big carpet, uh, that is Crufts. And sadly, missing the dog walk there. Keeps going. Picks up the five, just the five faults. It's got good speed, has uh, Oreo. 
Through the tunnel, emerges from the other end. A couple of tight turns. A frame up and down. And over that far side, and uh, those weeds loom uh, for, for little Oreo. So dainty, these small dogs are through, through the weaves. Another tight turn as well through that tunnel, and it's going to be just inside. It's going to be inside the course time with just the five faults, Graham. Yeah, such a shame. They're just picking up five faults. Came out of the tunnel and just ran past it, and then you'll see the judge's clenched fist goes up. That means it's a refusal. Dean Williams from Ramsgate uh, with Obi. Five-year-old Papillon over the moon to be here. First time at Crofts for Obi. What can he do? Just a reminder, they are deceptively quick, these small dogs. Might not think they're going flat out, but they do cover the ground very, very quickly. Neat and quick and wasting no time taking those corners very tightly through the tunnel at the far end of the course another tight right hander there and another one 30 seconds and clear over the a-frame a couple of little obstacles over that fast side now it's the weaves in from the right tiptoeing through the reese 54 to beat another tight turn there and again there's just the tunnel it's going to be inside the time i'm sure it's going to be good it's going to be good 50.0 Dean Williams and Obi and go fastest so far. Dean will be very pleased with that. No time at all wasted on the dog walk. Really great round from him. Interesting competitor this, Michelle Shan from Singapore. Moved to the UK just over a year ago. And this dog will make pirate noises, we're told. Arr, arr. So listen for the sound effects if you would. And Jews Breeder has flown over from Australia to support the pair here. So it's an important round, and one or two people have travelled a very long way to see Juliet and uh, Michelle. And it's good at the moment. Very good at the moment. Good speed here, good accuracy, nice and tight on the turns. She needs to make sure she gets up and down without stopping. There she does now into the weaving poles. What's the weaves like? Excellent, very good, no speed lost at all there now she's got a tight turn off the iams jump into the tunnel just one more to go come on can she do this yes well done 40 45.214 into the lead by considerable distance getting quicker and quicker then uh, michelle shan from singapore leading at the moment just one dog to go yes into the lead she goes susie josty with the two-year-old Pixie, Susie from Cardiff, a serial winner over the years. This is a new young dog uh, for Susie. And 45 seconds and zero penalties is the target to beat to win this Novice Cup. A small section and well up on time and clear at the moment. That is very, very rapid over the dog walk. The turns are tight as well. Speed over the ground is very good. Just 21 seconds gone. This is looking good. This looks as though it could be the winning time, the winning partnership. Susie Josty and Pixie, if it all stays clear, keep an eye on that clock. 45.2 to beat. From the moment they started, this has been absolute class. Absolute class. And five seconds off the time. That's a clear winner. Pixie and Susie Josty from Cardiff. Well done, Susie. It's been on the circuit for a number of years with a number of different dogs. Always does really well. This dog is really young. It's only two years of age. And bearing in mind, they can't start competing until they're 18 months. So she's done fantastically well. She must have done well this morning because she was run, running last in this. So very well deserved. And a dog I think we're probably going to see a lot more of in the uh, future years. Confirmation of the result then in the small section, saving the best until last. Susie Josty and Pixie winning the small section of the Kennel Club Novices Cup. So we're off with the mediums. This is the medium section we're looking at here. First to go, Rachel Hall from Sheffield and Kiba. 
first of seven dogs in the medium section then and starting off in reverse order so, so they didn't have a particularly successful warning these two and we'll see if it improves here and, and there are no faults but it probably isn't uh, the quickest round we're likely to see for the first of the medium dogs and there's picking up some faults as well back to the start of the weaves they go and calling the dog round now, I want to go. What a noise, Rodney. 48.5, and just at the five falls uh, for, for Rachel from Sheffield and from Kiba. But the best medium dog so far. We've got Emma Gamble next with uh, oh, the Cocker Spaniel Cross. Age two, Dominic Next to go, Emma Gamble and Mo from Melton Mowbray two-year-old Cocker Spaniel, started competing in April the 17th and went from grade three to grade seven in just six months. Some achievement that, Graham. It is. It, to do that is quite quite something. So you can see why this dog's really quick, very keen, still very young, only two years of age. Again, I think it's another one that we're going to see in the future. It's wasting no time at all. Look at this. This is really quick from Mo, the two-year-old Cocker Spaniel, who have made dramatic progress over the tw last 12 months. And they're putting up a super, super show here at Crofts 2018. Twisting round towards the end of the round. That is absolutely spellbinding. That is absolutely excellent from Emma and from Mo. 36.6 and clear. And that is going to take some beating. There were only two uh, non-eliminations in the first round this morning. But that, uh, well, we'll wait and see. James Brown from Leicestershire with Rogue, working Cocker Spaniel, first season in agility. And again, amazing progress this dog has made from, from uh, grade three to grade seven. And you can see why. This is a very, very quick, very competitive uh, competition that we've seen already early on in the medium section, Graham. There's some fast dogs out there, some accurate dogs as well. Some absolutely fantastic dogs, and this, this is building up into a really great competition. Not quite sure why we had so many eliminations this morning, but uh, already this is building up to a great climax. And it will not be far off, would it be inside a 36? Not quite, but that's a very, very good round from James Brown and from Rogue, putting him up into second place. Second place from all those entries throughout the country. We've got your partridge on the line now. From Bob now then, Graham, who's this? My wife. <laughs> you might have to say a little bit more. It is. This is my wife, Pat Partridge, running my dog, actually. I've had a few problems with my hip, so I haven't been running for some time. But uh, this is actually my dog. I've been hiding from him all day. Picked up an unfortunate elimination this morning, but uh, he's much better than that, as you can see. He's having a great time. Your dog, Buzz. How does it feel to be commentating on your dog on the green carpet at Crufts? Fantastic. But whatever happens, it's going to be my fault, so... Well, there's no fault so far. And uh, Pat and Dog, perfect harmony at the moment. And it's been a very, very good effort. Far from disgraced here. It might not be the fastest time, but it's very, very tidy. Uh, that's one, one, proud, one proud dad now, you see, that was. Absolutely fantastic. I'm so pleased for She's worked very hard with him. He is, uh, he really is a great little dog. Wasn't quite sure what he was going to do in this atmosphere, but he's, he's done everybody proud. He's done you proud. Don't worry about that. And the partridges. There we go. Well done, Governor. Well done. Fantastic. We're looking at uh, uh, Bianca Jansen from the Netherlands and Finney, very sensitive dog, picking up 10 early faults really. Up until last year, the April last year, they got 99% eliminations and they might just be heading this way at the moment, indeed they are. Suddenly got a lot of success uh, in Britain and August and sadly another elimination but uh, Bianca uh, from the Netherlands and Fini, the Pumi, will continue their round in their own fashion. I always say when it starts to go wrong it continues to go wrong because your mind is actually dwelling on the first mistake and then you make another mistake because of that. But anyway, she's done fantastically well to get here so congratulations to her.
I'd hate to see that if you put new batteries in it, for heaven's sake. Yeah, controlling that dog would be unbeatable. He's obviously, he knows what he wants to do. Sam Davis on the line. Penultimate dog. Trim, three-year-old Border Collie with Sam Davis from Maidstone. Two beat, 36.6 and no penalties. 38.8 to get into the uh, top three and no penalties. I think one of the two dogs this morning that didn't get eliminated, so he's well in the mix here for the overall title. Very nice dog here. Oh, she's lost quite a bit of time there, but I think she thinks that she can afford it. Better to do that than get a clear round and pick up an unlucky five. Might just have to pick up a little bit of time in the second half of this round. After one or two of those little early slips there, but it's still very tiny. A couple more to go. Tight turn through through the tunnel. And it's a good it's a good round. It's a good round. It's a faultless round as well for Sam Davies and from Trim. Just a little bit there, just stalking down, just a little bit. And again, a long pause there, so that's cost her a couple of seconds. Such a shame. Third place, though. Last to go, Elaine Bostock from Ashvale in the Guildford area. And Vime, six-year-old Jack Russell, rescue dog. Last to go. And that awesome time to topple, 36.6, set by Emma Gamble. Doesn't look particularly quick uh, from up here. Things can be slightly deceptive. Might have to pick up a bit of pace, might uh, Emma and Vines in the second half to threaten 36.6. And uh, th through the weaves, no, it will not threaten the, the winning time. But it still is a very, very good performance. Very good. You can't do more than do a clear round at your own pace, though. No, well done. Very nice. I think you have to see tactics do come into play here because she was one of the people without faults this morning. So there are only, there's only one other person that can actually beat her, providing she doesn't get eliminated. So now it's going to be a toss-up between the last two dogs we've just seen as to what actually what actually happens and who wins the overall title which is really what they're interested in got you so same course different height combination uh, just a confirmation i should say of what we have just seen as you can see, we have electronic timing, but we do have a backup timer as well, just in case we would mention what happened. But to be fair, the, uh, the, the timing has been so good and got so And good. we're moving into the large section now, the first of ten dogs in this Novice Cup. So it's going to be Kelly Green so and be Trio, working years. sheepdog. Let's give Rob a round. Four years of age. Waiting. Well done, Rob. For all you've done. Rob, up to you there. Not been, not the been easy for Trio. Never given up. Tends to be a, a nerve, little bit of a so nervy dog. Large and the as they just make the fine adjustment Green, to the height of the obstacles. Kelly Green from Melton Mowbray will be first of the ten to go. So individual prizes at stake here and also the combined as well, bearing in mind how things went for all these dogs this morning. And we are off then with the large uh, section with Trio and uh, Kelly Green in this Novice Cup. First of ten dogs to go. Not the quickest that we have seen over, over the dog walk. No, but again, there are only ten dogs in this. And, and again... The dogs probably hasn't competed at this level before in this atmosphere, so it's it's everything's really good experience. Absolutely, can be a bit of a nervous dog, but uh, doing okay here, albeit not at a, not at a phenomenal pace. We're not looking at, at trio and gasping at the moment, but it's a very very tidy round. It it's a clear run, 44.2 as well, uh, laying down a marker to the other nine.
and she's going to be very pleased with that. If he is a slightly nervy dog, then the, the, the fact that he's gone round here happy, everybody's happy. From Hinkley, Rebecca Leatherbarrow and Teaser, four-year-old working sheepdog. First agility dog for Rebecca. This not an easy road, and uh, you can see it has her knee strapped and actually postponing an operation to compete today at Crufts. It means that amount to Rebecca and to Teaser. You wouldn't have stopped her competing here at Crufts, I can tell you that now. I think she'd have been round here on her knees if she had to be, but doing a fantastic job. And as I say that, just picking up five for a knocked pole. Great speed through the weaving poles there. Over that IAMS jump into the tunnel. Just one more to go. This is going to be a fantastic time. Look at that. 36, 8, 4, 1. Really, really well done. That's really good. That's eight seconds inside of uh, uh, Kelly Green as well. But um, uh, sadly, those faults. Debbie Fig from Dartford in Kent and Echo, Border Collie, amazing dog to train. Echo's first time at Crufts. That can do strange things to you. But a good start. It's turned away from that jump. That'll be five faults over it this time. Echo getting into a, a bit of rhythm. She goes through that tunnel in fine style. Just a bit of a wide approach to the dog walk tight turn where do I have to go next yep through that tunnel will do nicely again another good turn and good speed a frame is good 30 seconds gone and it's clear as well and this will put Debbie and Echo in the mix through that tunnel and now the climax that's good 42.9 and clear I think she might have had five well, faults there. Yeah. The oh, she did. So she had the refusal at the beginning. That was she the fault did. that she picked up. Bridget Fletcher uh, from Gloucester with Kelly, two-year-old border collie, first time competing at Crufts. Kelly, big jump to start with. Hushed. Almost capacity crowd here. Willing the dog round at speed. And hoping he doesn't pick up any points as well. She's doing well. Bridget and Kelly. Nice tight turn off the I am jump now, coming towards the A-frame. She doesn't want to waste any time then. Oh, that was a fantastic A-frame. Into the weaving poles. Yes, nice entry there. Can she complete them correctly? Yes, she can. Coming round here, another tight turn off here. Oh, just a little, little bit of time wasted there, but still a really good effort. Oh, fantastic. 39, I think that was 39 seconds. And that's good enough to, to put um, Bridget Fletcher up into the lead. 39.4 seconds and no penalties for Bridget and for Kelly. This is Amanda Yates from Atherston in North Warwickshire, not far away from here, with Rue, three-year-old Australian Kelpie, first time at Crufts, and an absolute dream for Amanda. First Australian Kelpie, definitely not her last. But an early, early blow for them on this round, Graham. Yes, yeah, never, never good to have folks. It's never good to have folks at any time. But at the beginning of the round, it's even more depressing. Um, have a look, look at the judge quick, there. Look at the judge. Yeah, well, he's from up north, so uh, he deserves a good steady, look at. Steady. No, good, good friend of mine, Peter. Excellent judge, and you can see he's working very hard around the arena. But this, uh, as I say, it's such a shame. Just those five folks. This dog's going really nicely. Just three more to go. There we are, sending him in. And he'll get a fantastic round of applause and he'll get his toy in just a moment. As soon as she picks it up, there we go, straight out to go and get it. There it goes. Rue and Amanda Yates. Down in fourth place as things stand. After an uncertain start. Nikki Collins from Lincoln with a working sheepdog, three-year-old Mambo. Named after Mambo Number no. 5, that uh, famous song, became uh, Nicky's fifth dog and fifth born of the litter as well. Excuse enough to call him Mambo. Let's take a look and see how he can do. Nicely over the first four. 
Seesaw is good. Very economic here. Wasting no time on what I reckon this is going to be quick. Right? Dog walk. Yes, it is. Now she's picking up a bit of speed. She's been very careful about this. Very clever, taking it careful on the on the control bits and just letting the dog open up. And they come around towards the A the weaving poles. Through the weaves they go. Then Mambo and Nikki Collins and 39 to beat and well up with it at the moment. 34. Going to be well inside. Going to be well inside. Two seconds inside for Nikki Collins and for Mambo. They go top of the Novice Cup large section so far. Very clever round that, very clever. Just made sure she had control where she needed it and let the dog go where she knew she couldn't make a mistake. Claire Bacon from the Bristol area, Brent Knoll and Hock, four-year-old Border Collie, flying over that first obstacle. First time at Crufts, enjoys his fun and his fun is agility. But uh, the times to beat are not funny at all. 37 seconds, the time has come cascading down really. 44, 39 and now 37 seconds and a clear round has to be beaten to win the individual section. Don't forget things are totted up for an overall uh, prize as well. It is a good round, very slowly over the A-frame there, deliberately least made contact. Might just pay the penalty for that hesitation there. Don't think it's going to be quite quick enough. Not quite, but good. 41.6 uh, for Claire and for Huck. Really great effort there. Her turns were absolutely fabulous, but this is where she's lost her time, unfortunately. But, but a great effort. Lovely dog. And third place at the moment. Alison Pierce from Newbury. With Herbie, four-year-old Border Collie, fifth agility dog, had this one from a puppy, born on a farm in Devon, where his parents both work sheep. We're looking at Herbie. Crashes down. Herbie doesn't look as though he's going to break any speed records here, Graham, but um, it's, it's a lovely-looking dog who is approaching this very, very daunting task in great style. Just a little bit quicker than he looks, I think. He finished in the top three this morning from the jumping round, so uh, he's got a little bit about him. He's very tight. He's tight and he's clean so far. 37 seconds out. He's such a daunting time to beat. And uh, Herbie and Allison are going to be a little bit outside at 44.3, but it is a clean and a clear round, and that means that so much fifth place in the individual at the moment. Uh, well done, as you say, just uh, coming down, making sure we've got the white piece there. One to go after this, Becca Middleton from uh, rural Cambridgeshire and Shimmer, the four-year-old Border Collie. Both so excited about competing at Crufts for the very first time. Uh, something there for Becca Middleton, very affectionate dog, is Shimmer. And a little bit of a hesitation that will cost them time-wise, but uh, points are OK safely over the seesaw very quickly through the tunnel and picking up a, a bit of speed now over the dog will miss the contact point at the end that'll be five faults turning very very tightly as well a little bit of a skid and a stumble but it's a good round and the time is excellent but just those five points and disqualification going over that a frame the round will be completed but sadly that is a qualification disqualification for Becca and for Shimmer. There we go, keeping the dog happy, make sure it finishes happy, and you know what my favourite expression is, Jim? Say it again. The dog doesn't know it's been eliminated. The only person who tells the dog it's been gone wrong or done something wrong is you. Keep it happy. Happy dog, but an eliminated dog. Last to go then, Sam Lane from Milton Keynes. Four-year-old Border Collie, rival, first time at Crufts, represented Britain last year at the European and the World Championships in the squad this year as well. This is a quality pairing, and it will have to be to get inside 37 seconds, which means that any slip, any hesitation is crucial. Very, very quickly over the dog walk. My goodness me, that was quick tight turn towards the, the tunnel this is looking very good time wise and very good faults wise as well for Sam and for rival tight turn at the far end there what about the weaves in from the right that's absolutely fine 37 to beat 
just keep a very close eye on it. There won't be much in it here. Up to turn very tightly. Big sprint needed. Big sprint needed. Won't make it. Won't make it. Outside it, but a very, very good effort from Sam Lane and from Rival. That is good enough to get into the top three. It is Nicky Collins, though, and uh, Bridget Fletcher who will finish above her. Another fantastic competition there for this pack plastic crowd here at the uh, NEC. Great agility from the novice dogs there. Great competition, and, and I'm really pleased there for, uh, for Nicky Collins. Confirmation then, a win uh, for Nicky Collins, with Bridget Fletcher in, in second place, and Sam Lane in third. Nicky Collins and Mambo. Mambo, not number five, Mambo number one. And as we've been telling you now, we have the overall results first for the small dogs uh, Susie Josty and uh, Michelle Chan who came a long long way to uh, compete here originally and up in the top two there Dean Williams in third place ticking through to the, the, the top seven there and the overall ranking in the medium dogs now that's taking into account the competition to this morning and what we have just seen here in the, in the main arena. And uh, in the medium dogs, Elaine Bostock and Sam Davis close out to the top two. Emma Gamble in third place there. And uh, very soon we will see them all at the presentation ceremony. And the large overall, Sam Lane over the overall winner, Alison Pierce in two second place, and Nikki Collins third. The overall rankings in the Kennel Club Novice Cup large section. And taking you all the way through uh, to the 10, who uh, competed with uh, terrific distinction. A very, very big opening day crowd here in the main arena at the NEC just outside of Birmingham in the Midlands. If you're watching us uh, around the world, FaceTime or YouTube, uh, splendid arena just outside Birmingham in the Midlands of the United Kingdom. So just to remind you, this presentation that we're about to see will take be place in two parts. There'll be the first presentation will be to the winners of the competition that we've just seen. That's the agility section of the Novice Cup. And then following that, there will be the presentation of the awards to the overall winner of the Novice Cup. Now we have an arena cleared in double quick time by the fantastic ring party here. We've seen them uh, scurrying around the ring in their pink uh, Yukonuba t-shirts. All volunteers all do it for the love of the sport. So we're very grateful for them. They work really hard, very long hours over well, the four days of Crufts. We are really not going to enter back here. Uh, Brent has an awards and we're very, very pleased to welcome to present the awards Hector Heathcote, which is Peter Allen, who is our judge today. So, uh, can we now have the presentation of awards? Now we have the presentation party. And here they come, Peter Elms leading the way, uh, followed by... Hector Heathcote in third place, member of the board of the Kennel Club. 
here to make the presentations for the Novice Cup, accompanied by the lovely ladies who every year come here and help us sort out our um, rosettes and trophies. So there we are, the winner of the agility winner, and that is Susie Josty. And the runner of the second place was Charlie Stahl and Moon. And in second place, Michelle Chan. Now we're going to move on to the medium side dogs. So the winner of the medium agility. And the winner of the medium agility was Emma Gamble. Is she pleased? Oh, they're both pleased. Fantastic. Very nice to see happy dogs. And James Brown was in second. And now we move on to the large. Again, I'll remind you, this is Bobby's Cup Agility Large. And the winner was uh, Nicky Collins. And Nicky Collins there receiving first place in the agility round. This is the culmination of their year. Very happy. And second place was, uh, I think that's Bridget Fletcher. So the best overall result for the this evening, you, it's like a jumping and jumping. And there's Hector Heathcote, together with Maria Johnson. The winner is Susie Josty versus Pixie Power. And there we are, Susie Josty, winner of the overall. Very happy, very young dog, only two years of age. Lovely smile there from Susie, lovely girl. And Michelle Chan there, running up. And now we're going to move to the medium and the winner. The winner in first place for the medium dog was Elaine Bostock. There we are, very happy with Veeams, the Jack Russell Cross Sheltie. Oh, happy people, love it. And Sam Davis picking up the second place overall, and she'll be very pleased. Good day at the office for her. And Sam Lane's the winner. Of the large, there we are. Had a few problems, recent neighbour. Come good in the end. Well done, Sam and rival, four-year-old Porter Collie. Absolutely fantastic. What a great competition. And that was Alison Piers picking up second place. Customary lap of honour. Around the now very quickly installed fly ball equipment.
Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge with you once again. Welcome to the main arena at Cross 2018, not far short of the 7,000 capacity here, and stand by for frantic non-stop action. We welcome Flyball to Crofts 2018. It is the quarter-finals. Perthshire Streamliners against Warrington Warriors. Northants Hurricanes, Fenland Firestorm. Four Pauls racing against Board Achilles and Phoenix against Critical Impact. Right, so here we go. And we are all set to go. A little word about uh, Flyball. It just does not stop. It's a relay, it is uh, four dogs, they run on the near side and the far side, and the races take Graham round about 16 seconds, and all sorts goes on. Yep, something like that, you, uh, you snooze and you're definitely going to miss what goes on here. I believe we're going to have a practice run, I would imagine, before the real thing. And this is just a practice run that if you haven't seen it before, no matter where you're watching, you might just get a flavour for it. Uh, on this near side, uh, you are looking at the Perthshire Streamliners. On the far I'm sorry, Warrington Warriors on the near side in the blue, and on the far side, Perthshire Streamliners on that far side. And the dogs, it is effectively a relay. Six in the team only run for anything but a collie as well over the four hurdles they have to go a race take around 16 seconds and if you've got a whippet or a lurcher in your team you are lightning quick Graham it is so you're seeing the dogs running here dog one goes out must complete four jumps must pick up the ball and must return over four jumps and then it's a nose to nose change if the uh, second dog crosses the line before the first one gets back it's a fault and they have to rerun the dog that's made the mistake so just getting the feel of things here, frantic excitement out there in the arena. More practice runs for the dogs and do not worry about this. When the real thing starts, you will know about it. 14th year of fly ball. That has really risen in popularity. Here we go with our first taste of fly ball at Crofts 2018 on that far side. Uh, Perthshire Streamliners on the near side of Warrington Warriors. Wayne O'Rourke is the fly ball judge. Warrington Warriors on the near side. Perthshire Streamliners on the far as we look at it. Big ball of anticipation. Our first side of fly ball. And Perth's the streamliners with a bit to make up. Warrington Warriors have started well, not much in it at this stage, but it's Perth's the streamliners on that far side with it just, but there is a fault on that far side. So Warrington Warriors on the near might look as though they're in second place, but there's, it's been a good opening race for them. Perth's are going to win it on the far side, but a fault on that far side means that the judge, Wayne O'Rourke, points to Warrington Warriors on the near. They are one to the good. Just an unfortunate fault there at the very beginning, as you can see. Crossover, that's where it is, so that dog would have had to have rerun again. Warrington Warriors near side, one to the good. Win again, and the, the job is done for the moment. They're all set, Wayne O'Rourke, and away they go. Again on that far side, Persia made a very good start, just have it at the moment. But Warrington making up good ground on the near. It's with Warrington at the moment, no faults either. Still with Warrington, Warriors on this near side. This is looking good for Warrington Warriors. This looks like it could be two, nothing barring any unforeseen incidents. There are no unforeseen incidents, and Wayne O'Rourke confirms what we have seen. That is 2-0 to Warrington Warriors, and they are off to a flyer, Graham was and such a shame there for Perthshire because they'd had the fault in the first leg on a faulty changeover they erred on the side of caution on the changeover for the same dog and unfortunately that's where they lost those split seconds that you need and now you can see just confirmation we have just seen a fine start for Warrington Warriors winning both of the opening races. 
Oh, that was a great first. That was a great run to start with. So, if we can just explain to you, when they first start the first dog, you'll see very briefly a little a time come up in the top right-hand corner of his screen. That tells you how far off the go light they were when the dog goes over it. So if it's minus 12, it'll be 0.12 of a second they've gone, they've actually lost. So that just explains what that is. It'll only stay there for a second or two. Yep, you have to keep your wits and your eyes very much about you in this fantastic sport of flywheel. We get a couple of practice runs uh, on the near side. We have a Fenland Firestorm from Wisbeach in Cambridge on the far side, not too far away from Northamptonshire, North Hansa Hurricanes. And we this will this afternoon, this competition will go to a climax. We will have a winner uh, this afternoon and then uh, we'll be down to four for the final on uh, Saturday's semis, or the final on Sunday, I should say, semis on Saturday. But it is a competition and we will be uh, applauding a winner at the end of it. Just to underline it to you in case you're wondering, this is just the practice run for North Ants Hurricanes on the far side and for Finland Firestorm on the near. And there you can see the box loaders. They have to stand up with their hands behind their back during the race. They can scream, they can shout, but they cannot actually point to the box or use any part of their body to actually get the dog to go quickly. And we've got... There we are. He's having an extra practice. Second heat and on this uh, Thursday afternoon, North, North Hans, Hurricanes on that far side, Fenland Firestorm on the near. Wayne O'Rourke, the judge, is everything in order? North Hans, Hurricanes far side, Fenland on the near, Fenland getting a flying start as well, it's with Fenland Firestorm on the near side but North Hans making up ground. Not much in it at the moment, just I think with Fenland on the near side, Fenland Firestorm stretching out. All clear and clean so far. And what's happening at the end here? No, it's a very quick finish at that far side. Very quick indeed. And on the near side, Fenland Firestorm. Get it. So, faults on both sides there. Just when you think it's been won, you have to watch out. There's... And there we are, there's a crossover fault on the far side, and there was also a fault, but here we go again. Fenland Firestorm are one to the good. North Hans Hurricanes have to respond with something. Fenland, dogs get so excited. What will happen in this second heat? Away, a good start by North Hans on that far side, but Fenland have made up a lot of ground. Still with it on the far side, there's a fault on the near side with Fenland Firestorm, there's a fault there, so this is likely to be one apiece at the end of this, Fenland still just with the advantage, very quick dog on that far side though, from North Hansa Hurricanes, and it is indeed North Hansa that get it and square things up at one apiece. So that was a fault for Fenland Firestorm then misses the gates completely and as I said to you at the beginning it must do the first four obstacles on the way up and on the way back this is the decider then one apiece North Ants Hurricanes far side Fenland Firestorm from Wisbeach in Cambridgeshire on the near side and a flying start for North Ants from that first dog on the far side eating up the ground very very good for North Ants on that far side there's a fault on the near side as well a fault with Fenland Firestorm, so this is looking very good for North Hansa Hurricanes. There's a couple of faults on this near side, so North Hansa Hurricanes could well be celebrating at the end of this one. North Hansa Hurricanes come through and go through as well. Hugs and celebrations. North Hansa Hurricanes making it through after a fault on this near side, Graham. Such a shame, as you can see quite clearly, the dog didn't bring the ball back over and there was another fault and Fenden were never going to recover from having two, two faults with two dogs to rerun. And so confirmation, North Hans Hurricanes winning that deciding race and a lot of their fans have made the short trip here to the NEC, they go through. So 
So we're preparing now for four pools racing from Uxbridge uh, in Middlesex on the far side and board Achilles from Kilmarnock in Scotland. Great to Scottish support here as well. There will be a, some practice runs as well. And uh, Graham, uh, you just want to make a couple of points while, while the uh, four pools and board Achilles carry out these practice runs. Yep, you'll see that uh, on some of the boxes that have been used that there are actually three three holes on the fly ball box. So, so dogs are a bit like humans. Some like to turn left and some like to turn right. So some dogs will, will he'll put the ball on the right, the dog turns the right, and he's put the ball on the left, and this dog will now turn left. So it's about making the turn easier for the dog because some dogs naturally like to turn one way or the other. And you start off by teaching him, you give it a three, three box, uh, three hole box, and you put it in the middle and see which way it turns. <laughs> We're all set for the third leg here on this Thursday afternoon. Four pools racing from Uxbridge in Middlesex on the far side. From north of the border, it is Bord Achilles from Kilmarnock on the near. Wayne O'Rourke keeping good order. Very competitive racing so far, and we're ready to go on a flying start on the near side by Bord, Bord Achilles. But there is a fault on that first dog. There is a fault. So it's with four pools racing on the far, and there's a little fumble with the ball there on the far side by four pools as well. And more faults on the near side uh, for Bord Achilles. So this looks as though it's going to go the way of four pools racing on that far side. We're just looking towards Wayne O'Rourke, who confirms it. It is with four pools racing on the far side from Uxbridge in Middlesex. Now four pools with a terrific pedigree here as well. Uh, winners in 2013, runners up 14 and 16, and winners last year. Graham. So, several faults there, which they were never going to recover from. It's a false start, and the dog dropped the ball. Such a shame. Four balls racing on the far side. A terrific team that always does well here at Crofts. And within air power to go straight through and in front at the moment comfortably in front of four paws on that far side a lot of ground now between four paws and board achilles on the near this is looking very very comfortable for four paws racing on that far side they're going to romp this one absolutely romp it two nil four paws Four Paws once again showing that they are an absolutely quality act winner last year and you can see why their turnovers were just to die for they were right on the wire all the time and that's what you need to win at this level a team to watch starting in very confident fashion four paws racing winning both the races here we go our last uh, two teams there first of all we've got the phoenix team and we welcome the last two teams and uh, if you've missed your fly ball over the last year here is the remedy and on the far side uh, Phoenix here to win it on that far side from all over England Phoenix and on the near side critical impact from Leeds a relatively new team a team born only 18 months ago Phoenix with some very experienced campaigners are on that far side. And just to, uh, to remind you, this will be a test run. And, and those those dogs are are really really psyched up, aren't they, Graham? They are. Uh, but the, it's all about the turnovers, the, the changeovers here now, and. Uh, when, uh, when they let their dog go, they actually measure uh, where the dogs are actually set up for. And you can see there's some tape on the ground, and on the far side you've got some orange tape. So each dog will be let go at a particular point, depending on how long it takes that particular dog to get to the start line. Good information. It's about precision as well as uh, pure speed, this. The last quarter-final on the far side, Phoenix, very powerful looking team, and on the near side, critical impact from Leeds, uh, formed within the last 18 months.
Phoenix on that far side. Deep breaths. A lot of tension out there. Got to get things right in about 15 seconds to do it. Wayne O'Rourke is happy. And we have liftoff in the main arena. First afternoon of Crocs 2018. And away we go on that uh, far side. Phoenix trailing at the moment. Good start by Critical Impact on the near. Critical Impact have it at the moment on that near side by some distance as well. What a flying third leg this is. And it's with Critical Impact of leads on this near side. There's a fault on the far, si far side as well then for Phoenix. So this will go the way. There's, there's two faults in this one now. Two faults. Both teams have faults. And we look towards uh, Wayne O'Rourke and Phoenix have it just, just a bit quicker to react there to run the second dog you can see it dropped it and picked up another one but uh, you can't relax for a second Phoenix are one to the good another win here means they progress and we say goodbye to critical impact on the near side we're ready and we're off. And a flying start from Phoenix on that pass. And my goodness me, that is quick. Critical impact struggling to st stay in touch. There's a fault though on that far side with Phoenix. Drop the ball on the near side now making up ground off. Critical impact is looking good for critical impact to stay to square things up here. A good finish too. And celebrations as the round finishes on that far side with Phoenix. They're going to point this way. I feel sure that Wayne will point at us. Indeed, he does one a piece all to play for. We have a decider, Graham. And it looks as though critical impact have actually got the overall speed to do this they just need to put four in and you can clearly see unfortunately the dog dropping the ball before it got back so this one to progress phoenix far side critical impact from leads on the near one apiece a competition bubbling it'll boil to a climax later on go on the near side then our critical impact and they're well up with the pace at the moment critical impact and a fault on that far side the ball has been dropped and a fault on the near side as well this is pandemonium up here and a second fault on the far side too so this could be going away of critical impact on the near side it could be so let's see what happens now we're looking towards the near side i believe it could come this way we wait, we wait, we wait, we look at uh, Wayne O'Rourke, and indeed it does. Critical impact have it, and that's a big win for them, Graham. It is, because uh, Phoenix were expected to do really well. They've had uh, a lot of dogs which have competed here before uh, as part of other teams. They put this team together, so that's a bit of a shock, shock uh, result there. But, as I say, blink and you miss it. I mean, confused you will be, I think... Uh, it really was really exciting and so confirmation that critical impact go through from Leeds a fine fine effort on the opening afternoon at Crufts okay so how many practice runs on this one now they will go straight into it this will be it first runs straight away that's the three again no difference at all in any of the rounds We get straight on with the action on the far side, Warrington Warriors, on the near side, North Hants, Hurricanes, there will be no practice runs this time. We're getting the taste for it, and away we go on the near side, and, 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 and there's a fault on the near, and uh, <laughs> as we say, we will see what happens here, whether they decide to start the whole thing again, I'm not sure, Graham, what do you make of it? Well, he didn't fancy his own ball. He, that one looked far more into two. It has been awarded to Warrington Warriors on that far side then by our fly ball judge Wayne O'Rourke. So Warrington Warriors on the far side are one to the good now after that early bit of pandemonium. Here we go, Warrington Warriors on the far side are one to the good. There's a fault on the near side in that first dog. So, 
and Holt on the second dog on the near side as well. So this is looking very, very good for Warrington Warriors on that uh, far side. And it looks as though they might just confirm that they will go through here. A couple of faults on the near side. And, and indeed it is. So comprehensive stuff from Warrington Warriors on that far side. A comprehensive win there, Graham. Yes, and it's, uh, you can clearly see the fault there at the start. And another fault there. So next to we have four fours and critical impact. They're back again. Critical impact at the top of the And a comprehensive victory for Warrington Warriors. A little bit of chaos around as well, but you often get that in fly ball. So just to clarify that the first leg was awarded um, to them because the other dog interfered with the other team. So okay, and that's a no-no, so it was automatically awarded the, the, the first leg to the other team. The action keeps on coming on the far side there from Uxbridge in the Middlesex. Four fours racing, brilliant winning pedigree here. And on the near side, critical impact from Leeds, a new team born just a, in the last couple of years and doing very well to progress here. So critical impact from Leeds on the near side. Four fours racing from Uxbridge in Middlesex on the far as we look at it. Uh, we'll get some, we'll get some that happens sometimes. What a tension on the faces. No one has left the main stadium, I can assure you of that. <laughs> it should be fun as well, but there's a lot at stake here. On that far side then, four falls racing on the near critical impact. Four falls from Uxbridge in Middlesex, serial winners at Crufts. Critical in impact very much. Uh, the newcomers here and have already made quite a significant impact. We're counting down. We're getting ready to go. Thumbs up. One. Everybody, thumbs up from Wayne O'Rourke, and away we go. Near side then is critical impact. Good start from critical impact, but just with four pulls at the end of that opening leg. There's a fault on that uh, near side though for critical impact, so it's with four pulls racing at the moment. And another fault on that near side, so two faults picked up by critical impact, and it's looking good for four pulls racing. Breezing through on that far side are four pulls racing, and confirmation from Wayne O'Rourke that they have taken that opening leg against critical impact, Graham. Pretty perfect run there from Four Horse Racing, although it was gifted to them by the mistakes from critical impact. I'm sure they're going to do better in this round. Well, critical impact on the near side has to pull things round. Four Fours are one to the good. If they win here, they will progress. <laughs> Good start on the near side as well by critical impact, but four fours beating up the ground, not much in it at the moment. It's it says a fault on that far side of the second dog of four fours, and a fault on the near side of the second dog as well. So faults around like confetti here on the opening afternoon. Near side has at the moment though critical impact. Critical impact is looking good on the near side, and critical impact. We're looking towards the judge look to have squared things up we could do with a slightly more definitive sign but uh, it means it is one apiece one apiece good racing they're both aware of the faults that the other side had made so it's uh, one each and everything to play for this is the decider then one apiece at the moment it is critical impact from Leeds on the near side four balls racing from Uxbridge Middlesex on the far four balls making a good start to it just with four balls at the moment only just a very good race this critical impact keeping up and just nosing ahead too but back with four balls racing on the far side oh drop the ball drop the ball critical impact on the near but there's a fault on the near and a fault on the far as well and final dogs going through on the far side at the moment four balls have it four balls have it we look to see which way the judge will point and Wayne points to four paws racing and the class comes through but not without one or two narrow squeaks. Well, 
I think they were uh, just a little bit lucky there because I think Critical Impact uh, didn't react as quickly as they could have done when the when the fault occurred. They just uh, four paws recovered just a little bit quicker than the other thing, but still really exciting racing. I mean, the, the everyone's absolutely sat there enthralled. Very exciting opening day of flyball, four paws racing coming through. Here we go then with the climax of this Thursday afternoon competition on the far side of Warrington Warriors and on the near side four paws racing winners five years ago runners up in 2014 and 16 winners last year as well I'm looking to lay down their marker here on the opening day of the far side four paws just have it at the moment but Warring Warrington have made up ground so it's four paws racing on the near side just having it at the moment just with four paws on the near side it's looking good for four paws racing and there's a fault on that far side as well so this will come our way pointing our way is way no rule four paws racing go one to the good good racing just an unfortunate fault there and there we go crossover it's just fractions of a second fractions of a second so much tension out there four fours racing from Uxbridge if they win this one they will be Thursday afternoon champions what a way to start the defense of their fly ball title pauses we're okay Warrington on the far side four fours the near And away we go, very close at the moment, just on the near side, four paws have it, four paws stretching their lead at the moment on the near side, looking good for four paws, and there's a fault though on that near side, there is a fault on the near side and that is four paws, so we might well have a third and deciding race here, although four paws would appear to have won it comfortably, there's a fault on the near side and it goes Warrington's way, so that is one apiece and we're in two a decided to be Thursday champions. It's what we like, going to a decider. We'll just see here, just dropped the ball before it went over. Must have been really tight though. We love deciders. We love deciders. And the champions of Thursday afternoon is all on this one. It is four fours racing on the near side quickly away. Warrington Warriors on the far. Not much in it at the moment. Near side four fours just, just. But there's still plenty of racing to be done. Making up ground on that far side of Warrington Warriors. There's a fault with Warrington Warriors on that far side. Looking good for four fours racing on the near then. It's looking good for four fours and four fours have it. Four fours on Thursday afternoon at Crofts throw down the gauntlet we are the team to beat again in fly ball they've got a remarkable record here at uh, Crufts I believe they were winners last year and the other team were just knew they had to push just that little bit harder and that that, pr that prompted the fault but some great fly ball racing and I really want to say uh, how great I think that uh, Wayne O'Rourke has done the judge four fours racing are the Thursday Champions.
So just confirming the teams that have gone through from the quarterfinals. Four Force Racing, Warrington Warriors, North Hans Hurricanes, critical impact. All going through and all will take place, take part in the semi-finals on Saturday. The big final is on Sunday. of coming here in top form one or two uneasy moments on Thursday afternoon they will probably improve but they are our Thursday champions uh, as you were and we'll see them in action again when the arena will be packed to its 7,000 capacity on Saturday Belinda Nice, Nicky James, Teresa James, Kim Wright and Terry Condra, Terry the team captain, box loader, Tony Muat deafness is caused by CMV infection. It was a shock to the family so, because we were thinking of how her future is going to be and everything. When I was applying for um, Hearing Dog, I didn't think that it will have such a huge impact on our lives. It has brought her confidence, it has brought her everything to be honest. What she is now is because of Waffle. Before I had struggle, friendships, stuff like that. I wouldn't talk to strangers or tell them like, this is my doll, but now I'm proud to say it. She's really, really lucky 
and there's nothing I can't do without her. I don't feel shy anymore when I'm with her. I feel brave with her. Well, let's thank you all and uh, all. Cast your vote for that very worthy cause and uh, the recognition for the baby doll. Now, folks, before we introduce you to the, uh, the winning Hillworks music competitor today, you're going to love that. We've got something extra special. It's a West Westerlands police dog demonstration team. Now, Harriet Barnes will be with us shortly. She's going to tell us all about it. But they're on next, and it's worth watching. Fast music, belts, folks. So we await the West Midlands Police now here in the main arena as they, their vehicle first drives in. Demonstration which we have every year here at Crafts. And we're starting off with something fairly aggressive by the look of it. And this new Mr. Angry this year. They always come up with something nice and inventive but uh, the police are always on hand when Mr. Angry gets going. was a noisy demo they have some wonderful dogs and you'll see some terrific police dog work man work coming up no doubt with mr angry in a heavily padded suit and the commentary on this uh, will be given once they start the full demo after we've seen the starting piece by police courier, uh, constable harriet barnes she's been commentating here for a couple of years now and this is an extremely well-trained dog. I think this might be nice, but I'm not sure. Or is it nice? Anyway, you will find out all about them during the course of the next 20 minutes or so. to the West Midlands Police Dog Section Display. I'm PC Harriet Barnes, I'm an Operational Police Dog Handler with the West Midlands Police and today we're here to show you a little bit of what we do when we're operational with our police dogs in the West Midlands Police. So what you've just seen is one of our firearm support deployments. So with one of our general purpose dogs, one of our add-ons is that we become firearm support dogs and we support our firearms officers with deployments at uh, live jobs. But we've had to begin at the very beginning with training with our police dogs and then move to firearm support when they're getting more experienced. So in the ring here we've got Dave Raymond who's our breed scheme manager and he's working some of our younger dogs. Just in front of me is police dog Slider who's four months old. To the side is police dog Maple who is eight months old. Followed by police dog Max, he's a Dutch herder within our breed scheme. We've got police dog Dee Dee who's eight months old in the corner followed by police dog Darth and then police dog Captain. Now they're all progressing a little bit in age within our breed scheme, which we have our own breed scheme in the West Midlands Police Force and we breed our own puppies. So what Dave's doing is he's building the frustration with the dogs. We're trying to encourage a bark from our dogs. Once we've got correct behaviour and we're happy with the barking with the dogs, they're delivered a bite, whether that be on the puppy tug, whether it be on a small pillow cushion, and then gradually as the dogs get a little bit bigger, we move on to the puppy sleeve. And when we bring the older dogs on, you'll see that they then move on to a much harder sleeve, followed by the bite suit. So Dave's here, he's working one of our younger ones on a little cushion here, and what we're looking for is a good, strong, firm bite on the, with the dog. So again, Dave's frustrating this dog here, eight months old, this puppy, works the dog, dog bites the puppy, and it's all play and it's all reward for our dogs, okay? So they're happy, you can see they've got good, strong bites, so he's going to work Max here, 
Max's first time in Zarina, so he's going to work him, give him his toy, and he's going to move on to Dee Dee. So, he picks up the cushion here. This is Please Dog Dog. Good bark, and then we gradually bring them onto a chase, okay? So then they do a little chase where they build up to bite onto the pillow. And we're always looking for that good, strong bite. So we're going to do an inside bite with this one with Dee Dee. And look at the speed of her, okay? She's eight months old. Good, strong bite on the sleeve there. Now, finally, we're going to be working Please Dog Captain. He's 12 months old. So he's been built up, the frustration's been up, good behaviour, straight chase, onto the sleeve, and the takeoff there, you can see the commitment, he wants his reward and he wants his bite. So please Dog Captain with PC Gareth Taylor, and of course Dave Raymond, who's our breed scheme manager for the West Midlands Police. Right, so you've just witnessed our puppies, they haven't done an initial course yet. So coming into the arena now is going to be Mark Collier, PC Mark Collier, who's an operational dog handler. He's four weeks into an initial course. An initial course lasts 12 weeks. We do a total of 21 exercises that we're tested on at the end, and we have to be licensed every year to that standard. So we've got Please Dog Hands in the arena. He's 15 months old, and he's being worked by the instructor for the initial course, Tony Brown. Now, we want a degree of control at all times with our dogs. So as you can see, they're friendly, sociable, and then this is going to be a straight chase. This is when your criminal is going to stop, we deploy the dog, and the dog is going to detain them. There we go. It's a good, strong bite. So just as you saw with the puppies, we continue with that good, firm bite on the sleeve. We're going to ask for the correct behaviour now. He's going to be rewarded with his toy. They can have different toys. Some dog handlers use a ball on a rope. Some have a conk on a rope, we also have a bite pillows, bite cushions, so whatever the dog is happy with and he wants to be rewarded with, we use. And it's all play. So we're going to also have a test of courage for our dogs. So we have a stick attack within our licensing to ensure that the dog is going to protect its handler at all times. Some people we come across, unfortunately, when we're operational, don't necessarily want to uh, deal with us and they're not that nice with us. The dog will protect us at all costs and it's something that we must ensure before we go out onto the street. Again, just for correct behaviour, rewarded with a toy. The dog has been quite highly driven now, and he's bitten Tony twice, Tony's run off. But we still want to make sure that we've got a degree of control with the dog. So Tony's just going to approach Mark, and Tans will stay in the position that he should be in, as long as he's happy. We're going to get correct behaviour before we do anything else with him, so we're going to make sure he's doing exactly what Mark Collier wants him to do. If we have an attack though, the dog will always break its position to protect its handler at all costs. And that's something we also look for with our operational dogs because sometimes we're on our own. It's not many of us, so we have to make sure the dog's going to look after us. What we do now is the dog's rewarded with his sleeve and he's happy, he's got a good strong bite. So thanks very much to Police Dog Hands, PC Mark Collier and Tony Brown. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some property out for you. This could be that you've been a victim of a robbery. You could have had a burglary where an iPad's been stolen, mobile phone. So we don't just spite people. We don't chase people. We also look for articles. So it could be that we've had a robbery take place. The offender's been detained. He matches the description, but he doesn't have the articles on him. He may have come through a park, so we could be tasked to search the park for any articles that could be within that area. So we'd set our dog up for a property search. We ask that our dog doesn't interfere, well he shouldn't, interfere with property. It's Police Dog Lester and PC Wayne, and they adopt hopefully a down position. Usually we click and then he'll carry on and continue to search. And he's searching the air around him for anything that's uh, not where it should be, an indication, lies down, it's the second article. And then we task him again and he carries on. So he searches all of the area and he finds something that he's happy with, lies down slowly. He doesn't like to put his bottom down, unfortunately, Lester, I'm afraid. He's a bit slow for that. So he's rewarded and finally, because he's found a third article, we reward him now with his toy. If he can get out of his pocket. Right, that's Police Dog Lester and PC Wayne. We're going to move on to a scenario for you that we might deal with whilst on operational duties now. So I'm going to let you view it and I'll uh, start talking when things start to happen to let you know what's happening.
take place. And we've got a large crowd and one of our offenders has gone into the crowd and is trying to be disguised by the crowd. So we're going to deploy some dogs to clear the crowd and hopefully detain the criminal who's run into the crowd, who's the passenger in the vehicle. So we've got Police Dog Mason with PC4 King and Police Dog Lester with PC Wayne. We're hopefully going to clear the crowd and at the same time detain the offender if we can. The dogs are deployed usually in twos. Um, we can work into sixes and the dogs are there barking up in front, pu pushing the crowd back as much as we can. And obviously if they're not going to be willing to oblige, and they go at the dog, then the dog will detain them. Okay, so there we have the dogs detained. We've got police dog Lester with PC Wayne. Police dog Mesa with PC King. We've detained one of the criminals from the armed robbery. However, we still have one of our criminals sat in the vehicle. Now, you may notice this looks a little bit similar to what we had at the start. So we've broken it a bit down and we're going to show you actually what happened and I'll talk you through it. This criminal is armed. He has a firearm. So what we're going to do is deploy as a firearm support. So firearms would be called because we have a male who's in possession of a firearm. We have a bolt-on with a general purpose dog and we have firearm support dogs who assist firearms at all incidents that they attempt with a less than lethal option. So challenges are made by the firearms. He's discarded the firearm, so they're going to challenge. However, the criminal is not going to listen to the firearms officers and firearms will decide whether they want to deploy the firearm support dog. Our handler must remain under cover of the firearms at all times for their protection. Once they're happy and they want the dog to be deployed, the dog will be deployed for a passive attack. As you can notice, the dog is on a long line because we want to keep the handler safe at all times with the firearms officers protecting them. So the dog will drag the criminal back to where we're happy we can gain full control. Firearms will still have full control and when they're happy the dog will be asked to release and then firearms will then detain the male where he'll be handcuffed, arrested and escorted off. So we've got PC Carl D with Police Dog Eco and we have our two wonderful firearms officers and also one of our instructors at the Breed Scheme is Scott Molsha. So we've dealt with the general purpose dog and we've dealt with the crowd, we've then dealt with the elements with the firearms with the offender but we still have two firearms that we haven't recovered and we also have the bags that have been left by the crowd so we have our specialist search dogs. So today for you we've got PC Russ Martin with police dog Jasper. Jasper is a specialist search dog, he searches for drugs and for firearms. Now our proactive search dogs search vehicles, they search houses and we search open areas. What we do is we task the dog to search, and most of them pretty much self-task. Our job really as the handler is we check where the dog is searching. If we think that they may have missed an area, we'll task the dog back and ensure that they've searched everything. So Russ is watching Jasper, watching where he's scanning with his nose. And then what we will hope for is that when the dog does indicate, that we have a static indication with the dog. Okay? So we have a firearm that's been left on the bonnet. He's indicated he's not going to leave that hide until he's had a click and then he gets his ball reward. <laughs> Jasper is seven years old. He's eight in November. I work his brother, Jojo. So uh, they've been working quite a long time. Jasper's now going to go on and search the bags. So it's exactly the same. So we've got some drugs hidden in one of the bags. And he's going to search around the area, search all of them systematically, and exactly the same as before, the indication that we're looking for is a static non-interference, because obviously what we don't want the dogs to do is to inhale anything when they indicate. So he's scanning the area, he's working on all of the bags, checking all the area around him as well, not just the bags, so he's constantly working. Once he's happy, he's not going to come away from that bag until Dad has given him his click and his ball reward. There we go. So Jasper also searches proactively, but he also searches people. Do we have, uh, I'm looking for about 10 volunteers from the crowd that would like to come and be searched by Jasper. OK, 
Okay, if you want to have a couple of people come down, come down and be searched by him. So this could be, for example, when you're in a nightclub, you're in a queue, or it could be that you're at the football, and you see the dogs and they're scanning people as they go along. So if you stand in a line, all to the front, it's all in a line, and then Jasper's going to search the area. Okay, I think we're happy. So if you all just stand in a line from here all the way back to the red seat, so we're in a single file line like you're in a nightclub. Okay. Can we do it that way? So it's sort of one after the other. If somebody stands in, then we'll, we'll be all right. Okay. That way. So just as Jasper has done with the proactive side, all he's going to do is search around everybody. He's not going to interfere with anybody whatsoever. And the indication is exactly the same with uh, Jasper. He's not going to move and he'll tell his dad that he's found something and he won't move from that person. And then what happens is we'll have officers that are with us that will take that person away and we'll search them uh, away from public view. With our passive dogs, we don't have them uh, searching for cash. So some of our proactive dogs search for cash, but our passive dogs, as you can see, is indicated that this lady is going to have to be taken off to be searched. Okay, same as before, static position, clicker and ball reward. So do you want to start moving around? Just walk around, not anywhere you want. And this is, for example, like when we're at a train station. Okay, so the dog just scans you as you're going along, and people still carry on walking so they could, could have something on them. Hopefully we've got the ball out of the dog's mouth before we start searching, because I'm not sure it's going to work as well otherwise. So he's scanning all the people around him as walking along. It could be that we're at New Street train station. As you're coming along, the dog's going to search the area. If he finds anything, he will follow that person if they continue to walk. And he's not going to leave that person. He's saying, Dad, she's got something on her. Dad, stop her. She needs to be searched. Okay? Now again, clicker and ball rewards. Thank you very much to all of you for volunteering to be searched by Police Dog Jasper and PC Russ Martin. Thank you very much for all your volunteers. Right. Oh, here we go. So we've got Mr. Angry. I don't know if any of you have seen him before, but we've got Mr. Angry in the arena. And maybe a new Mrs. Angry with a nice new haircut. What we have here is we're trying to display a little bit of disorder, maybe drunken disorder, I think, possibly is the menu tonight. Okay, so we've got two offenders. And what do we have coming out of the windows? We've got Police Dog Eco and Police Dog Mason. And they're joined by the handlers, PC Carl Dean and Paul King. Now, we usually like to finish off with, uh, I think the crowd likes to see Mr. Angry being bitten by two dogs. Would everyone like to see that again? Right, so here he goes. We've got Mr. Angry. We've got PC, Paul King, PC Caldine, and Mason and Eco. Here we go. Can he stand up? Excellent. Right, as you can see, the dogs have got no interest in one another. They detain Mr. Angry, released on command back to their handlers. Thank you very much to Carl Dean, Police Dog Eco, DC Corking, Police Dog Mason, and not forgetting Mr. Angry and Mrs. Angry for the other one as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say a huge thank you for coming to watch us today. We're not a display team, we are all operational handlers or we work within the training department at Also Common and we also have our puppy walkers who are volunteers. We've all volunteered our time today because we just want to show you just how great our police dogs are and uh, how what they do on their day-to-day -day duties. So thank you very much. <laughs> PC Russ Martin and Police Dog Jasper. Dave Hibbert with Police Dog Dee Dee. We've got Sergeant Fleur Testel with Police Puppy Dog Bran. We've got one of our kennel staff, Rich, with one of our police puppies. We've got another puppy walker uh, with one of our puppies. Unfortunately, some of these I haven't met yet. So we've got PC Luke Onlan with Police Dog Dar. Georgia, who's from our kennel staff. We've got Jules, who's from Staffs Police, who always helps us with pups. Scott Mulsher. Daz Carmel, two of our firearms officers, PC Steve Wayne with Police Dog Lester, PC Marcus Cottrell with Police Dog Slider, of course Mr Angry,
And then finally, just joining on at the end of the two dogs you've just seen, we've got PC Porking with Police Dog Mason and PC Carl Dean with Police Dog Eco. And not forgetting one of our initial course handlers, PC Mark Collier and Police Dog Hans. Thank you very much. And thank you to Harry Barnes for a great day. Talk through the demonstration and uh, well done you guys and so important to us with everything that's going on in the world today and a tremendous uh, demonstration of what they actually do for us. Really great that. Well we're not far away from the uh, break for the evening performance but we have got something very good, very good and stunning for you because we've got the Hillwet Music uh, winner from the competition that was held earlier today. Um, so you really want, do want to keep your seats. A third year she's won this competition and she's won it because she is brilliant. So do keep your seats because you'll be watching that. While the break goes on, of course, you can tweet because um, Crofts has arrived in the age of tweeting now. The hashtag is um, Crofts Screen just like that and what we hope to do is get some of the tweets up on the uh, televisions in the middle and that will continue through the break uh, until we start again this evening so it's up on the boards now so we've got tweets there now so the hashtag is Croft Screen if you want to, wish to uh, send anything by tweet do carry on and do so and we're just waiting now to get set up for the Hill Winter Music and then you're going to see something quite uh, stupendous. You're going to love this, folks. We'll be back with you in two seconds.
where we had a great competition earlier today um, in the Hillworth Music. And it's the freestyle section, which, you know, Hillworth to Music is a little bit more like ballroom dancing, really. There's less tricks in it and more woos in the Hillworth position. I, I won't say it's anything goes in freestyle, but there's a lot more moves in freestyle. And, and we had a great competition, very hard fought. And I'd like to welcome in the winner who's going to demonstrate that winning routine to you. Would you like to welcome in Lucy Creek with her dog Skiffle? This is Lucy's. She's won it twice before, and also she's won the international, which she qualified for, and that'll be three wins in total. And she's going to be performing to Cinderella Medley by the Walt Disney Music Company.
What a great route. In. Well, well done, Lucy and Skiffle. You've not let us down again. A great routine telling a lovely little story. Did we all enjoy that, folks? So did I. Well done. Well, we're going to go into a, a short break now. And so if you want to have a, a, a natural break, now is the time to do it. Recommencing about five o'clock, or will be five o'clock, with the Young Kennel Club Agility. And if in between you want to send any tweets, don't forget to hashtag um, Cruff's screen is uh, ready for you to send your tweets to. So we will see you about five o'clock. So if you want a natural break, get yourself a drink. Now is the time to do it. Thank you, folks.
My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good evening to you, and welcome to the very first evening of Crafts 2018. Before we start, may we ask you to please stand for the national anthem. A very, very good evening and a very warm welcome to this, the first of four wonderful evenings of Crufts 2018, where every single dog has its day. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Crufts 2018! Stranger to the dark Hide away, they say Cause we don't want your broken parts I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars Run away, they say No one will love you as you are But I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are the What a great VT that was, and it just sums up the whole of the Crofts Agility Show. Well, the inception of Agility, as you can see, we got Agility first tonight, and the inception of Agility was in 1978 at Crofts, of course. And we'd like you now to join us in a celebration of Agility's 40th birthday. My idea is to present something which I hope will be of interest to the spectators and at the same time to bring a bit of fun into the rather more serious side of crafts. It has been designed to test a dog's ability over a number of obstacles and against the clock. Good control and excellent time. Well, it's a lovely clear round. Yes, listen to the cheers. That's terrific. It's good. It's excellent. <laughs> My word, this is quick. Oh, oh yes. fans, what a time. I absolutely love this dog. Oh, he's done that nicely as well. But they're going very quickly. The time's good, the time's good. The weaves now, tail wagging and flashing. You will see it just absolutely flies round in the agility claws. But now the crowd right behind 
standing. They want to see him do this, and he has. Looking at a potentially winning round here. I think we are. I think we are. We are. And welcome to the main arena at the NEC for Crufts 2018 first evening session. Hello there, Jim Rosenthal with you here, Graham Partridge alongside me. We celebrate 40 years of agility and as we look forward to the Young Kennel Club Agility Dog of the Year competition, Graham, it is fair to say that uh, none of these competitors would have been around when agility started 40 years ago. I would like to say that totally. I mean, I mean, I was, but I'm not the competitor out here now. But there might well be uh, some of the competitions we've seen today. But of course, this is the YKC Agility Dog of the Year. That's the point I was laboriously yep. trying to make. <laughs> Under 12s and uh, over 12s, six to 17 year olds. We're going to see very much uh, the future of agility, aren't we? I'm a great supporter of the YKC. They are the future, as you say, of our sport. You're going to see some fantastic dogs and handlers out here and hopefully enjoying themselves on what is the, the world's biggest stage. And a terrific opportunity. Uh, we have um, six small dogs, five medium and uh, six large dogs all qualified to come here. They have all been in action this morning as well. And it's a terrific opportunity for all these youngsters and their dogs to show exactly what they can do uh, here at Crufts. Welcome. We are live on Facebook. If you're with us on Facebook, live on YouTube as always as well. Extensive coverage throughout the four days of Crufts 2018 right through to the climax on Sunday. And Graham, talking to one or two people, they are almost saying they've never seen a Thursday like this uh, this wonderful show has hit the ground running. So we need our judge. Let's Absolutely. It's one of these, these shows that you've got to come to. You've got to come to Crufts at least once if you love dogs. Uh, and there's no better place to be on a Thursday evening. We welcome our agility judge, Simon Chandler, Eastbourne born, competing for 20 years, judging for about 16 years as well. You've got a little point you want to make about the judges, I think, Graham, or about... Uh, just that this is the first year that the YKC judge from the YKC ring has been invited to judge in the main arena, which is absolutely fantastic. So we start off then small under 12s with Gemma Biddle and Dizzy. Five-year-old Gemma's been competing with Dizzy for three years now and absolutely loves her. And there's huge empathy, huge support from a big crowd here in the main arena the main arena and that will be an early disqualification unfortunately um, but uh, Graham as always the round will be completed it will um, this is a big step up from the YKC ring uh, in the other part of the NEC there's lots of lights the commentator uh, really is a bizarre but now as you can see the dogs picking up just a little bit um, and it's, it's a big ask for someone who's this young uh, you're gonna see competitors here from uh, really, as you say, seven, eight, nine, right the way up to 17 uh, competing here. They're all competing for one set of awards, the small, the medium and the large, uh, which does seem a little bit unfair, but those are the rules. So we're looking for just one winner out of every person you're going to see competing here. And she's keeping going. She's keeping the dog happy. And that's what it's all about, making it a good experience. And hopefully she'll finish with a big smile on her face. Well done. Yeah, well done. 11 years of age, uh, Gemma Biddle and Dizzy. Uh, first to go, there is the uh, elimination. <laughs> Next to go, Demi Wright. 11 years of age from Norwich. With Pip. Demi and Pip's fourth year at Crufts, and uh, last time in the under 12s. Last year, the duo ran in the finals in the main ring, finished fourth and won the under-12s junior dog of the year. So this is a very decent, promising partnership, Demi Wright and Pip. Look how small they both are. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic, but I mean, I I'm not sure how old she was, Jim. 11. 11 years of age, and she's in, she's in the biggest arena in the world for agility, uh, strutting her stuff. 
and, and that's just fantastic to me. Absolutely, and continuing to strut her stuff despite an um, elimination there. And the dog does not know anything about crossed arms or anything like that. Like that. Just wants to take on what is in front of them. And it's one of the good things about uh, agility, is it teaches the youngsters to win, and it also teaches them, importantly, to lose. Nicely down the seesaw. Oh, and she just turned away just a little bit too early there. Nine years of age, Catherine Lowe's, last of the under-12s with Annie, who is ten. So the dog, older than the handler. Good confident early action from Catherine and from Annie. Little, little full 360, not too sure, just a bit of hesitation, but it's OK. And there is a, an elimination for approaching that obstacle the wrong way. And so sadly, all three of the under-12s uh, eliminated and that's unlucky I think just a little bit of uncertainty there as to which way she was actually going but but who can blame her at, uh, at nine years of age so you can see she's just looking around trying to get her, her bearings here the important thing is is that oh, she's forgotten where she's going come on get it back together again yeah she's she's got she's found out where she's going now onto the a-frame I wish I could go down there and talk around if I'm honest yeah, with you. I think quite a few thousand people here would want to do the same thing as well. Um, and of course, the dog will do what the handler tells them. Yeah. Well done, Catherine. Uh, well done to Arnie as well. That is the last of the under 12s. What a fantastic effort there. Well done. Just a little bit of indecision there, and then forgot which side I think she was going. Well done. That was a long way round, wasn't it? We stick uh, with the small dogs then first over 12 and you're looking at Ellie Bright who is 16 years of age from Frome with Luna. Enjoyed agility for around about nine years. Been across before has, has Ellie but this is the first year running Luna. Really great start here. Oh, to say that. Mixed up the tunnel and the dog walk. The dog will always choose the tunnel over the dog walk. Well, nine times out of ten anyway. She did then. So, unfortunately, because she touched the incorrect obstacle, it's an elimination. Eliminations coming thick and fast in this uh, young kennel club. Agility dog of the year competition. Of course, the standard we will get higher as we get deeper into the competition. That's a good finish at least there for Ellie and from, and from Luna as well. But some big early mistakes being made. So next time, uh, this is Penelope. Bit of tension around. With Totti, Titanium Penny Black is full kennel man, crossbreed. You're looking at a Penelope Lowe's, 16 years of age from Chapelon Le Frith. Wants to be a vet in the army. Totti, four year old cockapoo. And uh, international pedigree at these two, Graham. Yes, she is. Uh, she's actually the team for the uh, European Open Agility Championships has just been announced and she's made the team, so she must be over the moon. Just missed uh, the landing area at the end of the dog walk there, uh, did Penelope and did Totti, and picking up five faults for that. But there's a lot of speed about this round. And this is a good round. This is a good round despite those five faults. What a shame about that. 36.6 for Penelope Lowe's and just missing. Just a reminder all of you joining us for the first time. You have to land on that wide section at the end of the dog walk. Yeah, such a shame. But we'll be seeing a lot more of her, I've got no doubt. We're all ready to go. Lucas Irwin Burns, 15 years of age from Peacehaven with Sam, seven-year-old Jack Russell Cross, another one's in the team to go to the European Championship. That's in the Netherlands in July, making a rampaging early start there, but uh, eliminated, missing the obstacle there completely and having to turn around and, and, and sadly, after a bright, progressive and speedy start, uh, a little bit of miscommunication between Handler and Sam 
and there is an elimination here but again completing the round and enjoying the experience of competing on the unique carpet here at Crofts. Yes yeah, such a shame again this is another pairing which has done extremely well over the last 12 months and I'm sure we will continue to see again so well done to Lucas. Last of the small dogs. Just here not a lot of commands a lot of running but not a lot of arms or command. We move to the medium dogs now, under 12 years of age, Logan Kuzdin, the handler, nine years of age. Chewy is the cross who is all set to go, named after Chewbacca from Star Wars. And Logan has been training Chewy for 18 months. Just sorting one or two things out on the course before we see uh, Logan Custin and Chewy. Good to go with Logan Custin, nine years of age, and Chewy, five-year-old cross, Chewy named after Chewbacca from Star Wars. Logan's been training Chewy for 18 months now, a Shelty Cross Cavalier, King Charles Spaniel. Very interested to see how this one goes. And this one is mind of its own. We'd have a look around at the crowd there saying, oh, this is nice, isn't it? I'm quite enjoying myself here, but no great intensity about this round so far. No, again, but again, this is what this arena can do to you. Just a little bit distracted. Will never have been anywhere near as big a competition as this in his life. I mean, he's nine years of age. Um, they deserve every encouragement that they can get these youngsters uh, and hopefully they will come away from this experience stronger but the dog's picked up now just concentrating just that little bit more has got over the overall shock and awe of appearing here nicely into the weaving poles we've seen dogs here really fiercely concentrating on every step but um, Logan sadly uh, with Chewy not one of those but uh, the round uh, will be completed and there'll be the customary generous round of applause as well from this cross crowd who knows what it entails to get round the green carpet. Yeah, we're just coming down towards the, the dog walk and it should be the tunnel, unfortunately. You could see he knew it as soon as he'd done it. Such a shame. 11 years old. William Sims Bilbo, 11 years of age, from Bridgewater in Somerset with Jack, six-year-old working cocker spaniel. We're really looking for a good, quick, faultless round to kick-start this competition. That's good and quick. Good turn as well, up and down, and sadly, another elimination there. And this really has been a problematical course for the dogs and for the handlers as well, Graham. And, and sadly, although the top looks in very, very good nick there, it will count for very, very little in the final analysis, eliminated. Yep, such a shame. I actually think he, uh, he intended to put the dog up the dog walk. It's just a momentary. It's pressure. It's pressure. You can, you can suffer from pressure at this age. You can suffer from pressure at my age. I mean, it's, there it is. But well done. Valuable exercise for William Sims Bilbo and for, for Jack. But uh, very sadly, another elimination here. At the YKC Agility Dog of the Year medium section. This is Katie Lyons. Katie Lyons, 17 years of age with Archie Cocker Spaniel in the Team GB squad a couple of years ago in Slovakia and in the European squad in Holland in July. And that, this is a bustling, swift start uh, from Archie and faultless so far. No signs of nerves, letting us know, Archie, that uh, he is there as well. This is good through the weeds. Very, very encouraging so far for Katie Lyons, 17 years of age, and with Archie. Good turn, A frame moving, 31 seconds on the clock, and no thoughts. A good tight turn as well. Will this be the first clear round we're going to see? I think it might be, you know. I think it might be. It's clear. It's great work from Katie Lyons and from Archie. 
Oh, well done, Katie. Absolutely fantastic. You look at this. She takes the dog round to the right of that jump, which gives it a much better line into the tunnel, which the previous two people have had a problem with. So well done. Best so far. Joseph, Joseph Wilkinson Robinson. from Lancaster is 13. He wants to be a professional footballer. Now he's got to show a lot of professionalism in the main arena at Crufts with Ted Crossbreed. Devoted his life to dogs. They take in rescue dogs, but sadly an elimination in the first 10 seconds there. And uh, it it's, can be a brutal competition as well. Can it? 10 seconds in and you know you're out. It can, but again, you saw that uh, the jump after the seesaw, he took the dog round to the left, um, which, which presented the dog walk more in the dog's line, line of sight. But uh, hey, you know, it's all very well sitting here and being wise after the event. Uh, they've done fantastically well to get here. These are all winners and they've won today in the YKC ring, so they deserve all the plaudits that they get. Yep. They are the future of agility. It's a very rewarding exercise for them all uh, to be taking part in this and to be just getting a bit of um, a bit of a taste of the big stage. Okay, so next to go. Emma Greenshields is 15 from Wells with four-year-old Bandit working Cocker Spaniel. Her first dog, the second time for both of them competing at Crust. He's a typically naughty one as well, but uh, will he be on his best behaviour here? Are we going to see another clear round? You've got to do it in under 40 seconds as well. Moment, slipping and sliding on on the distinctive green carpet here. Picking up five faults. Just clipped the long jump there. It's very, very nicely through the weeds and through that tunnel as well. So, so, so this is a good time from Emma. And a bandit has been at it. I think more penalty points on the weeds. So 10 points as well and a good finish. And it was a very, very quick time, but um, 10 penalty points, I believe, for Emma. Uh, unfortunately, there. unfortunately, just knocking over the weave, uh, the long jump there. That tells us that the current uh, winner, the person in first place, can be beat. So the winning time currently 39.995. And uh, in second place is 36.6. So next to go, Morgan Tate Shoesmith, 10 years old. Alice saying, I dreamed a dream. Pet name Havana, this is a standard poodle. Just one or two adjustments being made to the course, if you're wondering uh, why the delay is as we wait for Morgan Tate Shoesmith, 10 year old. Owns and trains her own dog. Four-year-old Havana, standard poodle. All set to go. Uh, less than 40 seconds and no penalties. That is the winning target. Morgan Tate, Shoesmith, 10 years of age from Dartford. With four-year-old Havana, standard poodle, owning and training Havana. Been doing agility since he was four in Havana. A little bit ponderous there. Over the seesaw, through the tunnel. Just needs a bit more pace, but it's it's accurate and clean at the moment. The dog walk, tail wagging, yeah, good contact at the end of it too. 26 seconds gone, remember 39 to beat, and I think that has just been made of a real incidental figure really. A few faults going in very slowly into those weeks. Picking up a bit of pace coming uh, out of the tunnel as well. And unfortunately there, picking up an elimination, it entered the uh, second pole and unfortunately it didn't complete them either. So, uh, but there we are. Really nice to see a standard poodle doing uh, agility. Not many of them you see these days. Just demonstrates that you don't need a border collie to do agility. But sadly, another okay, so elimination. This is Zoe Gilmore. And, uh, nine years old, can you believe? Nine-year-old Zoe Gilmore from Bristol with six-year-old working sheepdog Wiz. First time at Crufts for both of them. And has also qualified with Wiz's sister, Jem, in the under-12 jumping that we will see on Saturday. And 
this is a very lively start good pace and an elimination as well and uh, it, it's uh, you said beforehand uh, Graham what a tough course this is and they really haven't uh, haven't made too many allowances for the, for the age or anything like that it is a t it is a, it is a tough tough course um yeah it, it is it's, it, the, the issue is for the judge he's got to test the overs but uh, also make it doable for the unders as well um the only real issue is coming around the jump after the uh, seesaw uh, and getting him onto the dog walk so and that's the only tough bit of the course really and if you make the right decision it becomes a lot easier but well done to zoe yeah, Zoe Gilmore from Bristol uh, sadly joins our list of eliminations. In our YKC Agility Dog of the Year competition. Rebecca Tudor Smith, 10 years old. 10 years old. With six year old Peach, Border Collie. Wants to pass on her thanks to her mum and dad for taking her to all the shows. So that is a job done then for, for Rebecca. And Katie Lines at the moment is the one to beat with a clear round of 39.9 seconds. Into the tunnel they go. So that problematical part of the course has been successfully negotiated, but there's a little bit of hesitation and barking on what you want me to do and a full 360. That will cost a lot of time, that particular episode there. Sharp, sharp left into the weaves. Will need to need to pick up a fair bit of time as well to get anywhere near that uh, leading time of 39. Have to sharpen it again. A bit more hesitation, a bit more time lost, and it's that's a great, great, great shame because two or three seconds there, and we saw where where that time uh, was lost by Rebecca. Just one or two moments of hesitation in that round. Yep, see her looking around there, completely lost where she was going. Really easy to do in an environment like this. And, and that's really where the, it was won and lost for her. Such a shame. Here we go. Last three dogs, ladies Katie Phillips from Reading is 17. years old with red. Border Collie, Red, who is eight years of age. Just a little feeling that this um, competition might be picking up now. The dogs have very nearly went down that dog walk, picked the right one, which is the tunnel instead. Now's the time to go over the dog walk, and it's quick and clean as well. This could just be threatening things if they can keep it up, but there is a five faults they've picked up very, very sandy because I think the time is good. And again, a tight turn, burrowing to get round as quickly as possible, up and down the A-frame, good contact. No, missed the A-frame contact at the end, so ten faults that'll be... And there's uh, the round absolutely ruined at the end there, unfortunately. It, at one stage, that looked really, really good uh, for Katie and for Red Graham. Good, quick, keen dog. She's a great handler. Uh, and as I say, it, it's gone in the blink of an eye, really. But uh, I'm sure we are going to see just a lot more of her here in the main ring at Crufts. Up to fifth place. This is the penultimate to large dog, Bell Howlett, who is 16 years of age, with five-year-old border comic Amy. They represented the junior GB team for the last couple of years and in the team this year as well, Graham. Yes, she is, so they're going to Netherlands. Um, so we wish them all the very best of luck. And again, turning to the left, which just brings that dog right into place. Such a shame. A learning curve, I'm afraid. It really has given them a problem, that part of the course, hasn't it? It, it has, yeah. Um, and it's, but the people who have gone to the right on that jump have benefited. So um, it's a test. At the end of the day, it's a test. Um, and yes, we have had a few eliminations, but uh, they're all got here. They're all winners in their own right anyway. So congratulations to them all. Yep, well done to Bell Howlett. Well done to Amy as well in the uh, British team. For that big tournament in the Netherlands in the summer and good work here last to go Jack Biddle 14 years of age with a five-year-old border collie bolt and he's gonna have to bolt round in less than 40 seconds with no penalties to claim the prize of YKC agility dog of the year good start good contact there as well spinning round and 
has negotiated that problematical part of the course. This is looking good for Jack and for Bolt. <sighs> Just missed it. Just missed it. That's an elimination, but the dog will complete the round. It means that we're going to be acclaiming uh, Katie Lines as the champion here. Yes, well done to Katie. Unlucky there for Jack. Uh, again, it's a lovely dog. He's a great handler. Uh, and I'm sure he's going to be on the British team and going to do really, really well. So Jack Biddle, the last competitor in the large so dogs. Ladies and gentlemen, dogs. that is the Young Kennel Club Dog Agility of the Year competition finished for Sadly, joining a long list competitors. of eliminations. And thank you to Simon Chongler, our judge, for doing a wonderful job out there. Don't go away, we've got the presentation. Great jumping ability, so sad that uh, that mistake meant the crossed arms then for Jack and for Bolt. And so Katie Lines and Archie, the Cocker Spaniel, 17 year old Katie wins the Young Kennel Club Agility Dog of the Year. Uh, Rebecca Tudor smith 10 years of age, with Peach, the six-year-old Border Collie, in second place. Well done, Mum and Dad, for ferrying Rebecca around to all those championships.
contains 24% more protein than the top two leading brands. Packed with tasty, high-quality protein, chicken and turkey is our number one ingredient. I am more than just a dog. I am an I am dog. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for all our YKC Agility Dog of the Year competitors. It's presentation time. Well, here come all the competitors and absolutely right as well. So tough to compete here with the television lights on, with a big crowd as well. That's probably the reason for quite a few disqualifications, quite a few eliminations in this, but great experience gained by each and every one of them. And uh, you are looking at the future of agility that is enjoying its 40th birthday and looks to be in very, very good hands, Graham. You know, never a truer word was said. They've done absolutely fantastic. You've only got to look at the size of some of these uh, youngsters. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And the presentation is going to be made by Anne Roberts, who is a member of the YKC Junior U uh, GB coaching team, accompanied by Mr. Morris Cook, who is Director of Agility, Obedience and Event. And there we go. Katie Lyons picks up the title of YKC Agility Dog of the Year 2018. And Lovely smile. What a great trophy that is. Some crystal and a rosette. The dog Archie there. Look at him. Fantastic. And the runner-up was Rebecca Shooter-Smith with... She's 10 years of age. She wants to be a zookeeper. The perfect peach by diesel is the dog's name. All done fantastically well. Congratulated there as well by the judge. Well done, you. Simon Chandler have done a fantastic job today, both here and in the YKC ring. So they're removing all the breakables before they do their lap of honour. <laughs> And uh, treasured moments uh, for all, lots of phones okay, capturing so gentlemen, the moments. And um, well done all. Well on everybody who competed here. That's us done on the opening day of Crofter 2018, Graham. But plenty more to come over the next three days, whether you've been with us on Facebook or uh, with us on YouTube. Thank you very much for your company. And this is uh, Graham Parker and Jim Rosenthal signing off and saying we will see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final, one of the most prestigious dog show competitions in the UK. It has a long history dating back almost a century, half a century. Now, thousands of champion dogs have attempted to qualify for this competition. There were 25 qualifying heats held at all breed championship shows throughout the UK last year. For the first time ever, the Yukonuba UK Champion Stakes Final is being held here at Crofts. Yukonuba wishes to extend its sincere thanks to the Kennel Club for allowing this to take place. The finalists have been prejudged by two judges earlier this afternoon in Hall 5. The judges used a point system to secretly score each dog out of 100. Each judge has no idea how the other has scored each dog, 
and the combined score of each dog will determine the result in this final we are about to watch. Before we meet the finalists, let's meet our judges. Jeff Luscott has been judging for almost 40 years and is qualified to award challenge certificates to more than 70 breeds in the UK. He's judged all over the world and is best known for his involvement in Great Danes, Belgian Shepherd Dogs and Larger Apsos. Our second judge, Stuart Plain, has also been in the dog game for many years and is best known for his Stuane Scottish Terriers. He is qualified to judge 21 breeds at CC level and has also had the pleasure of judging extensively across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Jeff Luscott and Stuart Plain, our judges for the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. They are being escorted into the ring by Gerald King, Chairman of Crafts. Now, are you ready to meet this year's finalists? First, the winner from British Utility Breeds Association 2016, the Akita Champion Stenhouse Lavaca Site. So you join Frank and I now in the commentary box for this Yuka Nubia Champion Stakes Final. The first into the ring is the Akita that won the heat at Booba under Judge Mark James. Uh, and here we have the Bouvier, this port Lord of the Rings. The Beagle. Dial in Peter Piper. Just down the road in Solihull. From Birmingham National now, we have the Australian Shepherd. And now winning in Scotland, the Bearded Collie. Just down the road from me, Bath Championship Show, John Thurwell judged the heat and this Papillon came through. And a former dog of top dog of the year. Southern Counties, Frank Kane was judging and uh, no, that was the Long Coke Chihuahua, so we've got... Uh, it's the Bernese Mountain Dog. <laughs> That's from three counties where Andrew Brace was judging. And now we're, we're moving on to the Bull Massive, which won at Blackpool. The little Chihuahua's absent tonight. And the gorgeous Whippet winning from Windsor. And there the giant schnauzer, a one at the east of England. All of these winning at one of the big championship shows throughout the year to get to this final. The second whippet was put through by Stevie Hall from Leeds Championship Show. And here is the Beagle, which won at Bournemouth. It's champion Dev Ricard Harrison. To the heart of Wales and last year's reserve best in show winner here at Crafts Champion Minaret's best kept secret, the miniature poodle. And top dog all year. Siberian Husky, this from Scottish Kennel Club in the summer. And here is the Tibetan Terrier. Tetsimi moves like Jagger, who won at the city of Birmingham. Tom Mather was the judge there. Heading towards the Autumn Championship shows now. This was the heat winner from Richmond, the Afghan Hound, put through by Kevin Young. And from Darlington, the Border Terrier, champion Brackenfell Bok to Bark, a top Border Terrier for several years now. Gorgeous Newfoundland from Driffield Championship Show, put through by Dave Killerly, champion Nando Bears, I'm what I'm and more. And here the Irish setter, which is representing South Wales Kennel Association, Thindara commitment from a famous kennel. The last few shows of the season, and the Bichon Frise came through from Midland Counties under Peter Jolly, champion Hyde Park JP Smiling Face. That one bred in Japan. And here is the Bull Mastiff. This one at the LKA, the last show of the year. Hyundaka on a mission with Kobe Moore. The last competitor for the UK Champions Stakes final. 
and the final competitor in the lineup from Manchester 2018, the Italian Greyhound. So these are all the Yukonuba Champion Stakes heat winners. Our two judges will uh, both look at the dogs. This is the creme de la creme of the English dog scene. All of them famous champions. They've won very competitive heats to get here. Now for the glittering prize. German Shepherd there, we missed on the way in. Champion Benitze Gucci. Sent through from the LKA 2016. Among the finalists, they have amassed very mind. Serious faces from our two judges, Jeff Luscott on the left and Stuart Payne on the right. Among this lineup here tonight, and they will have looked at them and in the pre-judging and given them some points. So they'll see who are the top dogs here. Now I should imagine. We're going to see a first cut before any decisions are made. Are all breed best in show winners. So there's the Siberian Husky, Pelenrise Dark Knight. What? Lightcraft. And in total, those 20 have won 126 groups. Reminding themselves of their close hands on examination they've had. With just seven bitches compared uh, with the 17 dogs. Peter Piper, the Beagle, the best in show winner himself. Birdie's Mountain Dog, big winner in the breed, coming from the Meadow Park Kennel in Lancashire. And we also have two Beagles. Uh, Three of the qualifiers spectacular ring for this final. Uh, top dog all breed last year. This minarets from the famous kennel. Reserve best in show at Crufts last year and went on to be top dog. Spectacular year for Melanie Harwood and her beautiful poodle. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Interestingly, two, two of the, four of the dogs here come from the same kennel. The Whippet, the two Whippet bitches come from the same kennel in Scotland. And the Australian Shepherd and the Beagle have the same owner, live just down the road. There's the wonderful, elegant outline of the Italian Greyhound. Eight dogs with the highest combined total will now remain in the ring. The beauty of the Whippet, all elegance. Smooth, flowing lines. The eight finest. So now we're going to get the cut made behind the Number scenes before one, coming the into the big ring. So the Akita champion Stikal's love at first sight comes through. She is a the breed record hold for Beagle. bitches in the breed. Champion Out comes the the Beagle Peter Piper with Diana Spavin handling him. Number six. And from the sit, there they're kennel mates. So uh, mother and daughter there, Melanie Spavin there with the Number with the Australian seven. Shepherd. Bearded Collie champion Potterdale, Beautiful bearded Collie. The Potterdale kennel have bred a best in show winner at Crufts. They have indeed. Number eight, the Papillon. Their champion previous a previous top dog all breeds. Won everything a dog can win in the breed. So, and there's the top dog from last year. So we have the two latest top dogs in competition here. Such a quality lineup. It's uh, it's like a glittering rank of stars, isn't it? The the Tibetan Terrier moves like Jagger, famous kennel. Number 20, the Border Terrier, champion. Brandon and the little Border Terrier Bob being pulled Bob. out. There's the top now winning Border Terrier, and it's been a second in the group at Crufts in the past. The rest of our competitors who are going to do 
So those are the final eight. We've got the Akita, the Beagle, the Australian Shepherd, Bearded Collie, the little Papillon on the tips of its toes there, Miniature Poodle, the Tibetan Terrier, and the Border Terrier being pulled out finally. Lap of honor for the others, all champions in their own right, of course. So it must have been very hard to decide to get it down to eight. Such, it such a, was a star-studded lineup. And as they go out, it looks as though we'll see all of the eight finalists moved again. So first off, champion Stikals love at first sight, Junior Warrant and Akita Bitch, sent through from Booba by Mark James. Four years old, owned by Carol and Faye Beavis and Rachel Core, bred by Carol and Faye and handled by Faye in the ring tonight. 35 challenge certificates notched up. And that will mean more if you know that you only need three to become a champion. <laughs> <laughs> Prolific winner. Uh, one strongest of the utility breeds. This is a wonderful specimen. Pet name Chanel, she's Nikita. Wonderful tail and top line and a strong head typifies so much about the breed. Prized for that wonderful coat and those bright colours, strong bone dogs, powerful all through. And yet she has a wonderful refinement about her, a great ambassador for the breed and a fantastic personality, known as Chanel at home. She was top Akita. And there's the soft expression of the, the beagle, Peter Piper. Comes from a famous kennel, they've bred many champions. There's still a relatively young dog, he's already a best in show all breeds winner. Smart tricolour dog. Sent through by Per Iverson from Manchester 2017 Championship Show, owned, bred, and handled by Melanie Spavin from the Dial and Kennel. 23 challenge certificates. Actually being handled by Mum tonight. Melanie's handling the um, Australian Shepherd, his kennel mate. Nothing exaggerated about the Beagle. Everything harmonious. And a hound through and through. Peter Piper was top, number four top dog all breeds in 2017, so a very successful show, and, and show co dog. Covering the ground with those long economical strides. He was top puppy in the breed in 2016. And he was number four. And coming forward now is the Australian Shepherd. We see the judges just writing a few notes or giving them some points which will be added together to decide the winner of this final. And there's the Australian Shepherd Hearthside Man of Mystery at Dialin. This is a tricolour Australian Shepherd, bred I believe in America. This is America developed the breed. They carry the name Australian Shepherd, which was their origins from Spanish sheepdogs, which were exported to Australia, but then went over to America and were developed there. Jeffrey Davis sent this one through from the Birmingham National Championship show Heat. 30 challenge certificates. Best of breed 35 times. May, he's the male CC record holder in the breed and the top Australian Shepherd for 2015, 16 and 17. And they, again, like all the herding breeds, they have to cover maximum ground with minimum effort. It has to be economical in its action. He's also the male CC record holder. Next up, sent through from the Scottish Kennel Club, the bearded collie champion Potterdale Potterdale Platinum Plus, known as Russell at home, owned by Janet and Mike Lewis, who also bred this dog, Janet's handling in the ring tonight. 
33 challenge certificates, seven group ones, top beardy male, four years running. And it's a highly competitive breed and to be, to be winning for four years shows a great quality in the dog and what, what a super dog he is. They're a breed which are rectangular in shape, should carry that even level top line, a weatherproof coat, not over-exaggerated, they have to remain rustic. And plenty of reach and drive in that movement. Front legs reaching right forward, driving from behind. Of course, this was a working dog on the hills with the sheep. And that coat, all purpose, not just glamour. <laughs> See this wonderful expression of this dog, from his dark eyes. Very wise expression. The caliber of the finalists we have here tonight. And now we're looking at the famous Papillon, champion Glenier and shooting star maker Sun Shu. Uh, sent forward by John Thirlwell from Bath Championship Show and owned by Glenn Robb and his mum Irene. He's a prolific winner, 51 cc's, top dog all breeds in 2015. Breed CC record holder for Papillons. Uh, the Papillon has to be light and elegant and dainty. And this gets its name from its butterfly-shaped ears. It looks like the spread wings of a butterfly. Silky coat, relatively fine-boned, dainty and buoyant. Is number one top dog all breeds in the UK and full of confidence in its carriage, in great form. I've actually got. Another two pages of information on Travis. Travis, the little so papillon. Has, gone, has been very, very successful, as all these dogs have. Next up, a dog we've seen on this Greek carpet before with great success. Reserve best in show last year at Crufts. Champion Minaret's best kept secret. Frankie, a miniature poodle, sent through from the Welsh Kennel Club heat in August by Derek Smith. Belongs to Melanie Harwood, who also bred him in his handling tonight. Top dog, all breeds. 27 best of breeds in total. 17 challenge certificates. And a dog on form, I think you could say, Absolutely. couldn't you, Frank? And, and young Melanie here, she's the third generation of poodle breeders. Her mum and grandmother were both famous as poodle breeders before her. And what dedication this kennel has. The dogs all come out of the same mould, all full of quality. There's an elegance in the carriage of the poodle. This great style on the move, short in the back, long in the neck, which gives it this dramatic outline, and this long chiselled head. It's amazing to think that it says here he was actually not shown as a puppy. So there's Frankie, the miniature poodle. He was top dog of all breeds in the UK last year. So he was the number one. Dog in the Next up, the Tibetan year. Terrier. This a male Jagger champion. Tetsimi yeah. moves like Jagger, and he comes from winning the heat at City of Birmingham under Tom Mother. He's five years old now. He's won 15 CCs. Again, the the Tibetan Terrier has to be squarely built. Under that coat, there's a hardy dog who had to. Ex survived the extremes of climate in, in Tibet. A favourite with the monks, he was a guard dog in the monasteries. Strong skull and foreface, a, a hard weatherproof coat. And this one's royal in the blood. He's a great grandson of the Crufts 2007 Best in Show winner, champion Araki Fabulous Willie. Yes, uh, ah, right. And nature... It is a dog show, but as always, and the last of our competitors, this the Border so, Terrier sent through from Darlington, German and UK champion Brackenfell Bock to Bach. So he has been a prolific winner, five years old now. He's won 40 cc's, seven times winner of the Terrier group. He also went to Italy where he won best of breed in Milan was best of breed at the World Show this year in Leipzig and won his German title at the Leipzig Show as well. So he's a, a title in several 
he has his title in several countries. And I think you could they call this little one a dog that's knocking on the door. <laughs> He's the current breed record holder for Border Terriers. And in 2015, he was Group 3 at Crafts. In 2016, he was Group 2 at Crafts. And doubtless he'll be here competing <laughs> tomorrow. So he lives in North Allerton, North Yorkshire. The, the breed is essentially a working terrier. The head of an otter, strong skull and foreface, thick pelt, thick pelt and skin, and always very well shown. The otter head of the border terrier. So those are our finalists, a lineup of eight sparklingly good dogs. And now it's up to our two judges, so, Jeff Luscott and Stuart wow. Payne, to decide which of them is going Holly, to win the champion stakes final for 2018 at Crufts. And I think they've been awarding points to them, and the arithmetic's going to be done now. And it's we're all all in suspense because uh, the points might have not been allocated evenly, depending on how the judges saw the dog. So. It's going to be a suspenseful I surprise. I find it hard to believe that those two judges are doing arithmetic. They're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have a final lap of honour for these dogs. The Akita, the Beagle, the Australian Shepherd. The lovely bearded Collie, that little Papillon. I might have small legs, but I'm still <laughs> commanding this giant ring. Yes, <laughs> great carriage. The Poodle, Miniature Poodle, the Tibetan Terrier, and finally the Little Border Terrier. And they're all leaving the ring into the collecting ring behind the main arena. And they'll be announced, and it will be quite a dramatic moment when we find out who is the Yukonuba champion for 2018. Lights dropped. They're waiting to find out who's won because they've marked the independently. The boards have come out. So, so at the major shows throughout the year, you can Uber sponsor heats for the champion stakes they'll often get perhaps 150 200 dogs entered so the tom competition is terrific any favorites jessica what do you think it's a hard lineup to choose from it is a very hard, li hard lineup to choose from the poodle is on such fantastic form at the moment. That little Papillon gave a really brilliant performance. And and the Akita never want to be yes. overlooked. A great, great bitch. So and the Border Terrier, of course. So we'll see. All of them, eight top dogs. Four places for this. I hope the calculators are working. <laughs> Maybe we might have, have a, we might have, Yes, we might have a long wait. And if it's a dead heat, what will we do? So. The four winners' boards are now in place. These are the final, final places, places after the points, points have been scored and totaled up. Here we in go. In fourth place. Reverse order. Fourth place coming first. Fourth place. The bearded collie champion, champion Potter. The lovely Black bearded Plus. collie takes fourth place. Champion Potterdale Platinum Plus Russell for Janet and Mike Lewis. Many congratulations to Janet Lewis. The so channel which has made great Russell, contribution to the breed over the years. In third place. Now, who was coming into third place? The Australian Shepherd. The Australian Shepherd, half-side man, man of mystery, 
Good Melanie's baby. Youngest group winner ever in the breed. Male CC record holder and still only four and a half years old. And now, second place. Now we're going to see runner up. At the Yukonuba Champion States final here for the first time across. The miniature poodle! The miniature poodle is. Champion Minaret's best kept secret, Frankie. For Melanie Harwood takes the number two spot reserve in the Yukonuba uh, Champion Stakes Harvard final. Top dog of the year last year and uh, runner up here. So who's, who's been the winner? And so to the winner of the Yukonuba Champion Stakes final is... Unfair for the winner. The Akita! The Akita! You were right, Frank. Frank. Never overlook that Akita. Champion Steakhouse love at first sight. Marvellous. I have to say that the, the Akita and the Poodle have been running neck and neck all year. On, Both Chanel. coming from the utility group. They've changed places throughout the year. And here they are at the top of this star studded lineup. Marvellous win. Owned by Carol and Faye Beavis and Rachel Core. Faye handling in the ring. Carol and Faye bred her. Chanel. It's a wonderful, alert temperament. Beautiful head. And a very happy Faye. She's general manager at so, here to make the presentation. The presentation coming on now. Jeff Luscott taking the trophy and handing it to Faye Bevis. She and her mum have uh, bred Akita for many years with great success. Wonderful piece of crystal. <laughs> That's Good. Chanel checking it out to yes, see if they yes. bother to put any treats in there. <laughs> That wonderful, striking black mask. Those neat ears typify the Akita head and expression in great coat and condition. So that is a very nice selection for four top dogs to win that. And in fourth place, the bearded collie, champion Potterdale Platinum Plus. But there's our winner, Chanel the Akita takes the champion stakes final so for 2018. Mark, Many congratulations to Carolyn Faye Bevis and Rachel Core. Well, <clears throat> a lap of honour. It's a wonderful start to cross for her. She, I'm sure she'll be here competing on Saturday in her breed. There's <laughs> Frankie with the rosette in her mouth. <laughs> And off they go. Congratulations to the winners. <laughs> Look at that. Don't go away, anybody. We're going to go up to Nick Brooks Ward. Wonderful, Maria. Great uh, competition. Great, Great job. job. And many, many congratulations. We'll see the Akita back here in 12 months' time for the big one. And very, very well done indeed. Well, on Sunday, all eyes focusing towards Sunday for our Friends for Life 2018. Let's have a look now at those stories, those amazing stories of 2018 Friends for Life. Hi, my name is Claire, and this is my kennel partner, Griffin. So Griffin has over 100 tasks that he can do day to day. 
open and closing doors, load up the washing machine, he gets the phone when it rings. Now I have nothing, I don't need any carers. He's opened up a whole new world for me. He just means the world for me. Hi, my name's Claire, and this is my canine partner, Griffin. I've been a full-time wheelchair user since the age of 13. I cannot walk, stand, or straighten both knees. Um, I literally just lived life in four walls, and that was it. When I applied for a canine partner, I didn't quite understand how much the dog would help me. Griffin has over 100 tasks that he can do day to day. Now I have Griffin, I don't need any carers, I don't need no help. Griffin is definitely my best friend. Um, it's a little bit of my hero as well. Life as a disabled person is just, it can be so hard. Um, you're very invisible, which is one of the things I love about having Griffin. He has opened up a whole new world for me. Um, I'm not invisible anymore. Um, it, he just means the world to me. Gail Wild, and this is my urban search and rescue dog called Taz. Taz is a search dog that has been trained to do urban, rural and coastline riverbank searches. Do you know what, looking back, the proudest moment I could have been was at the Clother. I remember en route we were told the police helicopter had landed on the Clother and tasked with searching the rubble pile and surrounding area. The building came down in such a way it almost like come down in three stages. So it needed um, someone who was either very small or a dog to actually get into those spaces and the dog was perfect. It managed to save life in the sense that people who were working there weren't put at risk. That night he just showed what a wonderful dog he was. To be Tazzy's owner it makes me unbelievably proud of him. It really, really does. I was profoundly deaf. Her deafness is caused by CMV infection. It was a shock to the family so, because we were thinking of how her future is going to be and everything. When I was applying for a um, hearing dog, I didn't think that it will have such a huge impact on our lives. It has brought her confidence, it has brought her everything to be honest. What she is now is because of Waffle. Before I had struggled friendships, stuff like that. I wouldn't talk to strangers or tell them like, this is my doll, but now I'm proud to say it. She really, really, really lucky, and there's nothing I can't do without her. I don't feel shy anymore. When I'm with her, I feel brave with her. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It now gives me great pleasure to commentate on and to welcome you to the grand final. Well, we're now set for the junior warrant final here. Uh, this is where we'll see 10 wonderful young dogs. To get their junior warrant, they've had to be successful uh, to varying degrees between the age of six months and 18 months. And we're going to see some really fine young dogs. Ten of them will be coming in here and will be judged by Robin Newhouse. And these have all qualified as a semi-final at Discover Dogs in London. And uh, so they've already had great success to get to the final here. It's based on the point system. Many of them st stars of the future. Yes, you could well be looking at the future. Croft's best in show coming into the ring in a moment. They are able, as junior warrant, to have letters JW after the uh, dog's name. It's a proud moment for them. It's, it's not something minor. This, this is one of the really good qualifications that you can get in the dog world when you're showing dogs. So everyone who's coming in with one of these dogs. And we're not looking at junior handlers here. We're looking at junior dogs. So the, they carry the, it's almost like a junior title, a junior warrant signifies that they've had a very successful junior career in their young classes. Some of them, however, may well be champions or almost champions. So 
Well, they, they've had to compete to get uh, to here. As we said, the semi-finals were held at Discovered Dogs back in uh, October or November, wasn't it? And, uh, but to get there, they would have to have qualified for a major show elsewhere in the country. And they could only enter these things if they were a successful dog anyway. So these dogs are, are the, they're the future champions, as Frank said. Now I'm sure they're getting nervous behind the scenes here, waiting to come into this big arena, which will be a real test of temperament for Absolutely. these young dogs. Absolutely. There's a nice big crowd here on our first day at uh, Crufts 2018 and we hope that uh, you've been enjoying the coverage uh, on YouTube which of course we stream throughout the day every day of the show so the judge is now being introduced to the crowd he's coming in being brought into the ring by Gerald King who is the chairman of Crufts and there he is Robin Newhouse you know Robin very well don't you Frank Robin coming up from, he lives in Lancashire, a very successful breeder of Samoids and a Hungarian Pooley in the past and German Shepherd, experience with German Shepherds, a real dog man. So one more time, please. A real enthusiast for dogs. And, and quite a variety there, isn't it? German Shepherds and Hungarian Pooleys, they don't come very, very much different than that, do they? So we wish uh, Robin an enjoyable time there in the ring. This is it's a wonderful occasion. You know, to get the opportunity to judge in this main ring is really wonderful for any judge. So Robin will be very pleased. And the first one we're looking at coming into the ring now. It's the bull mastiff, Optimus Dafid. Um, he, he won at the Vale of Glamorgan and uh, he's come from a famous kennel, followed by the Siberian. And then the uh, bearded collie. And the border collie. There's the Briard coming forward. I always expect to see them in black, you know, Briards, but they come in all sorts of shapes. There we go, and there's the German Shepherd. Followed in by the Rhodesian Ridgeback. The sole utility breed, the standard poodle. And the standard poodle. And from the toy group, the Chinese. There's the little Chinese crested winning for Scunthorpe coming in towards the end which is good really isn't it because the others move much quicker and, and there's the pointer pointer from Leicester City Canines Association and that's the last of our ten so Robin Newhouse uh, you know the form you know exactly what happens in these competitions the judge will inspect each dog individually he'll get his hands on them he'll get them to move he's taking first of all a nice long leisured walk along familiarizing himself with the animals that he's going to be judging and, and racking his brain no doubt saying now what do i know best about oh yes i ah now i saw a wonderful one of these is this better than that all sorts of things will be going through his head i think it's fun isn't it Frank? And, and this is the important because you're taking the general outline of the dog to see the balance and shape of the dog that's often the first First indication of good so, breed type, and now the first one is coming forward. Yes, this is the the bull mastiff, Daffid. He's called. So Must come from Wales. He does mid mid Glamorgan actually. Optimus Daffid Junior Warrant. And this is a young dog, as we said, one year, ten months old now, and qualified to get into this competition by winning at the Vale of Glamorgan Agricultural Society show. And the judge there was Mrs. Uh, Ray Parry. The handler in the ring there is uh, Peter Myers, uh, one of the joint owners, Peter Myers and Deborah and Morgan. And uh, he has a very successful kennel in, in Merseyside, had a lot of champions. The Bull Mastiff from the working group was originally a Po uh, a gamekeeper's dog to ward off the poachers. They have to be strong but athletic. One of the bull breeds, so which means he's got bulldog blood in him. Well, he'd certainly ward me off if I was thinking of poaching, I must say. And a, and a nice, light, athletic movement for a big dog. A wonderful temperament. The breed has wonderful nature. And this, this one's known as Baby David at, uh, at home. This is a great big bundle of fun, they say. Usually a good but gentle giant but uh, quite naughty as well which is lovely really he's eating an iPad is that can class as being naughty I suppose it does really 
Now the judge going over the Siberian Husky, Red Hot Lover, Legend of the Spirit. This is an import from Poland, uh, two, year, two and a half years old now, and he won at Kingston Canine Society. Now this, the speedy sled dog. This is the speediest of the sled dogs. Probably the lightest on its feet as well, isn't and, it? And absolutely fit for function. They have to do this double coat to protect them against the severity of the climate furred inside the ears and this tail they have to be quite high on the leg they have to be cloddy or thick set they have to have a degree of elegance and fit for function at all times and red hot lover being his name it's good for a laugh anytime isn't it a name like that splendid james rogerson handling there in uh, the uh, discover dogs and the breeder is isabella krieger and uh, this animal lives in Suffolk. Now, now Robin looking at the bearded collie. It's Potterdale Platinum Star. We've just seen a Potterdale in the Champions competition. Here's another success from that, this kennel. Bred by ja Janet Lewis. Here we have this very nice bitch. Two and, two and a half years old now. One is Alfreton. And we had a best in show, didn't we? Uh, Potterdale Classic at Moon Hill, Brenda White's dog back in the 1990s. That's right. It's proud mum Janet. And this, uh, this bitch, two years, six months old, and won through to the competition from the Alfreton and District Canine Society. Dorothy Park was the judge that put this one through, and uh, Janet Lewis was handling. And enjoying the experience, trotting out very nicely, holding a good top line. Very nice proportions for the breed. They're a rectangular shape. I gather from the owners that this is a real escape artist, can get out of the, <laughs> from anywhere, yes. So these show dogs, they, they may be show dogs at dog shows, but lead a normal full life at home. This is a real escapologist. He can open doors as well. He's no fool, you know. Yeah. Tremendous jumping ability. So now, lovely coat, the way it, uh, the bearded collie moves. And here we've got to another collie. This is the border collie. And uh, this is Faken I Am Love, junior warrant again. Of course, they all have junior warrants, so I won't keep on saying that. Tempt is the pet name of the dog, and the, or rather of the bitch in this case, one year, six months old. And again, this has a prestigious pedigree. It comes from a, a very good breeder, wonderful, wonderful lines, going back to one of the breed record holders. Uh, Ross Green is the breeder, and he's handling it here. Wonderful entry, almost 400 border collies here today. Yes, I mean, fantastic. I mean, he hasn't had to compete against them because he's here in the junior warrant competition. And, uh, and this one is already, I believe she may already be a CC winner, which means she's on the way to becoming a champion. Certainly she's had a very good career at championship shows. So uh, again, this might be well be a champion of the future for this fake end kennel. Wonderful. Yes, and uh, that, that low head carriage for the breed, stealthy action, so typical and desirable for breed type. And now we've got the Briard. I said when he came in, I always expect to see them in black because the very first Briards I ever saw were. But now they come in this lovely, very, it's almost like a wheat and colour, isn't it? It's a fawn, yes, a fawn, nice, yes. Very nice indeed. Foster Bree Spartan, uh, known as Troy. Uh, two years, two months old now, and it's a dog, not a bitch. And this is a French pastoral breed, so uh, for herding sheep and cattle. And one of the breed peculiarities is that it has double dew claws on its hind legs and a, a crochet-type hook in its tail, little swirl at the bottom of its tail, breed features. And again, the coat is hard texture. It has to be weatherproof and hardy. And the dog has to be rustic, not overgroomed. Clean, fairly long head. Judge looking at the strong muzzle and eyes. And feeling that coat to get the texture, because it's a very different texture to what we saw from the bearded collie moving around. It flows just as nicely, doesn't it? His best friend is a Shih Tzu named George. Again, the Foster Bree Kennel has had a lot of champions. They live in South Yorkshire. The last of the Carol Foster, a partner. 
finalist. This is the German Shepherd. Quite at home in the environment here. Indeed. And Robin Newhouse now getting his hands on the German Shepherd dog. This one's called Colin. Two years and one month old from Oxfordshire. Anne Shaw is the owner. And uh, Claire Nocini is actually handling. And it's uh, Whittig at Gillingham and Shaftesbury. And we'll notice we saw a German Shepherd dog in the Champ Ukanuba Champions League. This is quite a different style of German Shepherd here. Different type of top line different leg length so the, the type is mixed in the breed uh, the the breed has lots of devotees of both the germanic type and the english type we see here yes and, and, and actually this looks a very much lighter version of the, of the breed so I mean, they do come in all sizes really don't they the, but strong, looks fit for purpose in every way. But I, I myself, of course, I'm a great so devotee of that lovely uh, <laughs> flat back rather than yes. the Germanic one. So I like that. Again. Now another fine dog here, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, Sere. She's a bitch, two years, two months old, and is called uh, Colkerin face to the sun it's beautiful quality and lovely breed type here which they get the addition they get the name ridgeback because they have a ridge of hair running in the opposite direction along the spine and it was some, something in the native zimbabwe it said that the best ridges were the most courageous hunters so there may be a bit of folklore in that but there's this lovely quality it's got substance, but also elegance and light on its feet. They were bred to track lions. They were, for the big game hunters, they would either track lions and force them into the guns or force them forward and hold them at bay until the guns came. All right. Well, the, the name Sere, incidentally, is in the language of Shona, which is a Southern African language, which exactly is what you're saying, uh, Frank. This is where the dog, uh, the breed, originates from. Robin now turns his attention. Rich fawn or wheat in colour, permissible in the breed. Very nice feminine head, but strong. It's very typical, full of quality. Unmistakable now, as we look at the standard poodle's head. This is Gordon, Vikmar's American Idol. Comes from the West Midlands, and the owner is called Lucky Tindall. And uh, the handler, Sharon Tyne Haynes, also bred the dog as well. Another dog that qualified from the Gillingham and Shaftesbury Show Society. Again, you can always rely on a poodle of any size to put on a good show. They just love showing off. They've got this elegance in their carriage. I always describe them uh, as one of the highly presented breeds because they I mean the coat has to be made like that but it has, it's quite extraordinary but it is interesting it's a functional trim originally the standard poodle in particular was a duck retriever and they used to clip the hind quarters of the dog to give it less drag when swimming and this mane at front gives it buoyancy in the water so it is a functional trim not just fancy hairdressing for the show ring no, exactly and, and in this case actually the legs aren't trimmed in the way you were describing there these are that sort of lamb cut aren't they which which is really a combination of the two different cuts they can present it, be presented with I think they're spectacular they really are they're wonderful in the ring and now we have the Chinese crested, twice as nice, seven monkey fury. That's quite a name. It's an import from Sweden. Yes, it's called Loki for as pet name. He's two and a quarter years old and bred by Sarah Riznig in Sweden. Now owned by Donna Crow and, Sana and the breeder. Now this is in a very interesting breed. We see this is a hairless. It's a uh, a natural mane of hair down the neck from the head and over the pastons and feet. The skin is quite hot to the touch. A very ancient breed, thought to have spiritual qualities in the early days in the in China. Great, great show dog, very nice action in the. It's like a young pony, isn't it? And then under Liz, 
and last of the ten well again an unmistakable head that shape of the pointer this is Nessa Desfrisa Flatini Tamsin Baker is the owner comes from Berkshire and this dog uh, is two years old this is uh, his birthday was the 21st of uh, November now here the only gun dog in this lineup, the pointer, and she looks sadly a little bit overawed oh, by the uh, yes, by the big ring atmosphere. She's not quite lashing her tail as she should. Just getting a bit of confidence there. The should be a series of flowing curves. The pointer looks like has to look like a, a thoroughbred. The tail just getting there now. It, it took it a little bit of time to get used to the ring, I think. But, uh, actually, you and I, when we stepped on that ring yesterday, Frank, we uh, we said it's a bit spiky. So the the texture of, of the yeah. artificial grass. There she is, just really, just looking round a little bit. She should have a clean, reaching action in front. But you see, she's, she's not quite carrying her tail, showing a little bit of apprehensive. Yes, sometimes the dogs don't show on the day, not quite as well as they can, but that's still a beautiful looking dog. N now we is the judges just sending them out and back just checking on the action in most breeds you'll want a parallel action the the legs coming like two vertical columns not veering off the parallel line and driving from its hocks very important to have strong hocks and driving away same thing for the siberian husky this, as you say, similar thing. They all have different gates, though, slightly, don't they? But it, yes. that line from the back, you don't want to see them crabbing. And, uh, no, you want fir firmness from the hocks, very important. And ju ju Robin just looking at head and expression as they come back. There we go with the beardy now. This, this has gone very nicely in a very good temperament. The Potterdale, not only have they had good winners themselves, but they've sold good winners to other people to win. Yes, That's yeah. always the mark of a very good breeder. Okay. Very nice. The Border Collie. Yeah. There are so many of these. I mean, you said there are nearly 500, no, 300 and something of them here today, uh, Frank. I mean, fantastic dogs. Yes. Incredibly popular these days, aren't I, they? I like this one very much. She's full of quite lovely size, very feminine, and again, that very good action with the low head carriage. Here's another pastoral breed, the Briard. Uh, of the pastoral representative. Uh, the Fawn. Uh, the Briard male. It's, it's a the, boisterous little dog, this one. said that well. the coat should be like goat <laughs> hair, crisp to the touch, and that little crochet hook at the end of the tail. All breed points. The German Shepherd. And this is one where it's terribly the important that the gate is seen clearly, and that looks quite nice. It's a strong top line. Using a Hoxwell. Again, just perhaps a little bit to overawed in the uh, in the big ring atmosphere. And here's the elegance and quality of this Rhodesian Ridgeback. Yeah. Again, look at the tail carriage. She's very happy here. And you can see the ridge, the ridge running from the withers just behind the shoulders along the spine to the croup. That's a, the correct ridge for the breed. And the standard the poodle, standard poodle with uh, this fabulous, it's all, the back leg movement is always so lovely with the, with the poodles. And here's Sharon who's handling the dog, she's the breeder, she also has won the group at Crufts in past years with a standard poodle, which was one of the ancestors of this dog here. Oh really, yes. Twice as nice. And the little Chinese crested. crested. Now very good dog i like this very much full of quality it's gone very well marvelous top line the tail carriage absolutely correct that mane of hair running down to the withers the plume and on its tail the gun dogs, the pointer. Frisa, and finally the pointer as i said this this big <laughs> ring atmosphere with all the lights and all the people is a real test and many of them are young well, they're all fairly young yeah. for this, aren't they? Because it's uh, the junior warrant. So but uh, the, the this one is uh, just a uh, fraction over two years old. Now, the boards have come out, so Robin, I think, has made his uh, decision he, because he calls for the boards when he's ready. 
don't think he wants to see any more so now he's going to pick his winner the winner of the junior the warren final 2018. The of the kennel club now, junior warrants competition the handshake is, the handshake is going, is going to the bull massive over to the bull massive yes from mid glorgan The oh, Chinese crested. Yes, you yes. said you liked it, Frank. Yes. Monkey Fury, congratulations. Well done to those other So we have the winner, the Optimus Duffy, the bred in Merseyside by Pete and Myers from the Optimus the Kennel. And then Captain twice as nice, Seven Monkey Fury. There's our master, our winner. And we see that uh, Duffy here, although he's a young dog, he's already a champion. He's won his three CCs. So I said, stars of the future, this is already on the way with a title. Yes, so a really big career for him. That's a terrific done. head, and that's a wonderful shot of it. Oh, Strong yes, head. He deserves the treat. And they're going to do their lap of honor. So Duffy leading the way, Loki following on. Our winner and runner-up in the Junior Warrant final competition 2017. I know we're in 2018 now. This is the end of the competition that ran through last year. So you join us now for the very first of our groups for Crufts 2018. Exciting stuff here in the big ring. We're waiting for the first of the working dogs to come in. The dogs will be brought in and then we'll meet our judge for this evening. Dave and his wife Jenny and the world famous Red Witch Akitas. They have bred over 40 Akita champions and their dogs have won many groups, best in shows, including reserve best in show here at Crofts in 1999. Dave Kinnelly has made up champions in other breeds, including Bulldogs, Siberian Huskies, Rottweilers, Bouvier de Flandre, Bernese Mountain Dogs, and Giant Shouts. Nice to see the seats and the stands filling up, ready for the group. Of course, that's what people have come here to see, the show dogs, all the best of breed winners gathering in the big ring tonight to compete. And of course, this will be the first group winner to go forward to the final for Best in Show judging on Sunday evening. So here comes our judge, escorted by Tom Mother. It's Dave Killerly. Dave Killerly, yes, he's a wonderful dog man. His Red Witch Kennel with his wife Jenny have produced many champions of Akitas all over the world. So he's also had great success in Rottweilers. Wonderful handler, very clever breeder. Welcome group, best of breed winners, the Alaskan 
great integrity. And of here come the dogs, the first of our best of breed winners, the Alaskan Malamute. The uh, and here's the Bernese Mountain Dog. And the Bouvier de Flandre. The wonderful powerhouse of the Bouvier de Flandre. Please welcome the boxer. Big cheer for the boxer, always a popular Follow breed here. And here's the Bull Mastiff Best of Breed winner. And uh, a rare breed, the Canadian Eskimo Dog. Just 14 of them at Crufts this year, in contrast to the Doberman, who's our next Best of Breed winner. And here's the Dog de Bordeaux, the French Mastiff. And there's the Entlebusche Mountain Dog. The German Pinscher. Please welcome the Giant Schnauzer. The Giant Schnauzer, the biggest of the Schnauzer breed. And we have the Great Dane. And a true giant, the Great Dane. Followed by the Great Swiss Mountain Dog. The, the Greater Swiss Mountain Dog, one of the Swiss yes, mountain breeds, the tricolour. The Greenland dog comes in next. Just eight of those competing at Crofts this year. And the German breed, the Hovervart. And now we see the Leonberger. The gorgeous Leonberger. All the way from Russia, this one. Followed by the Mastiff. The Mastiff, the Brindle. Used to be called the Old English Mastiff. And here we have the Italian cousin, the Neapolitan Mastiff. And the next up is the Newfoundland. Big cheers for the Newfoundland. This is a... Please welcome the Portuguese water dog. A brown one, yes. The Portuguese water dog with that characteristic clip. And here we see the Rottweiler. Big round of applause for the Rottweiler. And fallen in the Russian Black Terrier, and this one has come from Russia. And welcome the St. Bernard. There's the, the massive bone and head of the St. Bernard. Beautiful dog. Followed by the Siberian Husky. There, the fleeting gait of the Siberian Husky. And the enjoying the situation. Is the Tibetan Mastiff. All the way from Finland, this one, the Tibetan Mastiff. Very impressive. The last of our best of breed winners in the working group. Thank you, Kim. Good evening, everyone. So, Dave Killerley going to have a walk down his lineup and take a look at the best of breeds that have been sent through to him by all the breed judges. The working group contains he, some of the most popular he'll, he'll have dogs. taken in the, the general outline of the dogs as they entered the ring. Now it's Once time to see them standing, the looking at their balance the outline. The, the dog de Bordeaux there being shown the standing forward so you can see that characteristic face and expression. Look at the size of the Great Dane. Wonderful presence. And that, uh, there's a real diversity of impressive in these breeds, yet all have one mastiff and the Leonberger and the <laughs> and the uh, Neapolitan the mastiff hunting, study of concentration on the judge describe the vital work of which these dogs excel so as Dave Gillen completes his first look at all the 25 best of breed winners including the best import regiment. and now forward the first of the dogs it's the Alaskan so Malamute uh, champion Snowshoes Aurora Borealis. It's been sent forward by Simon Luxmore, its owner, Gene and Jesse Smith, and it's a big winner. Four best of breed winners and 11 challenge certificates. This is a very impressive bitch. Again, it's a, the heaviest of the sled dogs. It's bred for pulling heavy weights over long distances. It's not a speed dog, strongly boned, strong hindquarters. Originating in the United States of America. 
the Alaskan Malamut was named after the His Malamut name derives from the Malamut tribes around the Norton Sound in Alaska, and this is a real working dog designed for hauling heavy weights through all temperatures. That coat is quite harsh to the touch, isn't it, Frank, with a thick undercoat? And the guard hairs. And, of course, it has to be fit for function to survive in climates like that. Fur deers, the long tail like a waving plume. They can curl up and wrap the tail around them to protect them at night. Heavy bone, good long stride, plenty of drive from behind. Second to be judged, the Bernese Mountain Dog. This is champion Atherburn Petronella Blush, known as Blush, at home with Mike and Di Atherton. Ninth challenge certificate today, and this such a characteristic breed, those tri-colour markings. One of the four Swiss herding breeds, also used as a powerful draft animal for the weavers and dairy farmers of the Swiss mountains. Bernese comes from the town of Juba. They always have those four little white paws, don't they? And the gloss on that black coat is fabulous yeah. in blue. Yeah, you know, it, it's a bit of canine folklore that this white marking down the chest signifies the white cross on the Swiss flag. But that may not be always true. However, I've seen one of these dogs cart in with their carts. They used to be called the, the cheese factory dog because they used to haul the cheeses in carts from the factory to the shops. And I've seen wonderful exhibitions of this in Switzerland. The owners in national dress and the dogs is a wonderfully impressive sight. This is a very nice, strongly boned, coming. The judge now looking at the Bouvier de Flanders. This is champion and Dutch champion, Lisport, Lord of the Rings. He's already a big winner, best, uh, uh, won the group at Grubbs in 2016. He's owned by Fiona Lambert from Windsor, and he's top winner in the breed for many years. Now training as a working karting dog too. Amazing. Strong breed hailing from the uh, Low Countries, the Bouvier de Flandres in Belgium, where they're very popular. And Bouvier, the word, means cattle herder. He's a, an upstanding, fearless dog, worth working farm dog. That coat should be profuse course they're a compact animal deep bodied heavy boned quite short back though aren't they frank for yes, the size a, a, of the dog a lot of substance under them interestingly they were almost wiped out after the first world war and an army vet got a, a nucleus of breeding stock to help the breed to survive and of course that wonderful moustache and beard what a spectacular outline. Champion Lanfrese Ocolado, the boxer. He's known as Dave at home, five years old. Belongs to Mitch Griffiths. And of course, the boxer was developed in Germany from the Bullenbeiser or the bull biter. Used to hunt bear and boar in the 19th century. Classic short faced breed, that wonderful arched skull. It's broad and topped by ears that should fall forwards and nice and close to the face. Beautifully shown there. Uh, it's my belief that we have some of the best boxers in the world in this country, and this dog is top boxer in the country for 27. For 2017, he's already a group winner. You know, they're striking, aren't they? It's so energetic on the move. There isn't an ounce of spare flesh on that dog, it's all muscle and fitness. And a strong, slightly sloping top line, this wonderful fullness in the foreface. And of course, those who've lived with a boxer know they are characters without compare. They're great character dogs. I was brought up with Bengo, the boxer puppy. I don't know whether you remember that with Tim Hart, but it, was a, it made the breed popular. They came over to England after the Second World War. Now the Bull Mastiff, uh, we already saw this dog in the champion stakes earlier, Hyundascar on a mission with Coolby, Coolby Moore. He's two years old and he's won today and winning his sixth challenge certificate, reserve best in show at Birmingham last year. 
beautiful dog light on his feet. This was a gamekeeper's dog used to keep poachers at bay. They used to take them out at night and frighten away the poachers. Fantastic substance in this breed. His ancestors are the Bulldog and the Old English Mastiff, and that combination produced the necessary courageous temperament, forbidding size, but they need agility too. They should be swift on their feet. And, and athletic enough to jump a five-barred gate, it said. So that would... And in, in the early days, the brindle was the more popular colour because it was camouflaged at night for working to give the poachers a nasty fright, yeah. And that coat is short, hard, very weather resistant because, of course, these were outdoor working dogs. This one, a fawn, always with a black mask. And though. still a relatively young dog, but he's got wonderful movement. An entry of 14. Akana Asavakit, the Canadian Eskimo dog. Just 14 entered at Crufts this year. This one's a four year old bitch. They're one of the rarer working dogs, a breed whose history can be traced all the way back, almost a thousand years, but they almost became extinct after the mechanization of transport and haulage in the north. Typical spits with a wedge-shaped head, prick ears, and that plume of a tail curled over the back. Now these come in a variety of colors, uh, and also, again, the tail, a feature of the breed, arched over the back, protective in all weathers. They can survive in the most extraordinary extremes of temperatures, literally sleeping under the stars with a thick crust of ice on that pelt. And the breed has survived because the Canadian Kennel Club, worried about the future of the breed, got together with the Canadian Dog Research to, to help the breed to survive. Canadian Eskimo. Now that sharp, crisp outline of the Doberman come forward from a big entry today. It is Jojovic Penelope Pitstoff, and she's a big winner. She's won 14 cc's, 10 times best of breed. So she comes from a famous kennel in Essex, and they're the wedge-shaped head, the slightly sloping top line, this wonderful coat in great condition, strongly boned, this high set tail. That typifies the outline of the Doberman. Well, if you were collecting taxes back in the mid-19th century, you'd like you likely find yourself in need of a minder, and Louis Doberman did. And so he took a German shepherd dog and German pinchers and created himself a breed which took his name. Full of courage, the Doberman's tough and intelligent, capable of swift agility. I think he'd be a very good ally when collecting taxes, personally. I reckon yes. so. And this one's striking black and tan, but of course they can also come in blue and fawn, almost red and tan. Such a characteristic shape. This, originally the French Mastiff, the Dog de Bordeaux. This is Loggerhead's Aston Martin. Aston, five years old, comes from Basildon in Essex, handled by Mark Ranger and uh, owned together with his wife, Debbie. Instantly recognizable by that fine, short coat in all shades of fawn from a rich mahogany through to the palest Isabella and by the magnificent head. So characteristic. They're said to have an expression that can be mistaken for none others. It's, it's often described as a frank expression. Now, this is a French Mastiff. It was used as a guard dog from the 14th century, used also for hunting and fighting, sadly. Uh, in the French Revolution, many of them were slaughtered with their aristocratic owners, so that decimated the breed. In the 19th century, we had some dogs go from England, some bull Mastiff types and Mastiff types, to help the breed survive in the Bordeaux region of France. Well, I should imagine in France he was often used to help guard vineyards, and that's a useful thing to want to guard. So, so again, this is a breed which drops its head when moving. The low head carriage is typical of the breed. 
And now welcome to the very first import registered dog to compete in a group of crows. Now, this is the Entelbuscher Mountain Dog. Now, this has come not from the, uh, not from the, the breed classes, but from the import register classes. So this is, again, one of the four tricolor Swiss breeds. Uh, one of the smallest of them, a dense but shorter coat. Uh, again, it could be a herding dog and sometimes used for carting. So it's one from the other import breeds today. This is Buddy, three years old. They come from South Wales and uh, he's uh, owned by Darren Bainton and Sean Bebb. They're lower on the leg, longer cast, aren't they, than the larger cousins? But still, st still sturdy and, again, functional. Nothing exaggerated about them. Richard Kinsey was the breed judge today for the German pictures. Comfortable breed entry of 30, Richard selected this male as his best of breed. This is the German Pincher, the middle sized member of the Pincher family between the Minpin and the Doberman. Originally a vermin hunter, the word Pincher actually means to bite or to grip. This is Hixton, Matrix of Milo at Brintail. Milo's five and a half years old and comes from Cornwall, handled by Karen Wakefield in the ring tonight. Kraft's best of breed in 2015 and multiple titles, this one. And this is the stereotype of the pinchers. This is the middle size. Um, we've seen the we'll see the miniature pincher in the in the toy group. They're always solid colours, the German pinchers, in all shades, from a stag red, which is much deeper than this, to Isabella, which is almost fawn. And we saw the Doberman earlier, which is from the same family. They're all square, squarely built, wedge-shaped heads. I'm surprised that this hasn't taken off more, because it's very handy for size, no grooming, and they make great house dogs. The giant schnauzer now striking black harsh coat. The largest of the schnauzer varieties, imposing, strong, originally used as a droving dog. This is champion Philoma Lana Lang. Lana's three years old, handled by Kevin Cullen in the ring tonight. Good all round protection. Wonderful, instantly recognisable outline, head with a fabulous eyebrows, moustache and beard. And she's handled by Kevin Cullen. Now you might remember a few years ago they had best in show at Crufts with a dog called Philippe Olivier. And uh, he has, he's been very successful. This is a very good bitch, sturdy and strong. The, the word sh schnauzer means whiskered snout, which so it's got this harsh, whiskered foreface. A crisp coat. The, the coat should be crisp right down the legs, and it should have good forechest. There should be nothing of the terrier type in a giant schnauzer. Gary Hooker, Judge Great Dane, is here at Cross. Now here's the Great Dane, and it's a, a young black dog, Al Capone von Gut Steprath, and it's come all the way from Germany to win, and it's still only 18 months old and won a, an, over an entry of over 200 Danes. The Dane, although it carries the name Great Dane, it really is a German breed. It was really used for hunting wild boar. So it has some, some people think it should be classified as a sight hound. It has to have good length of leg and a courageous temperament, a look of dash and dare. And it still goes to buy in Germany today. And as a hunter originally, that head should be long with powerful jaws, carried on a, a long arch neck. They really do have a proud bearing about them. Massive bone with lovely straight front legs, deep chested. 
the thing about this dog, he's only 18 months old, so he's relatively immature. He'll deepen a little bit in the body. He'll firm up in the top line, which we can see, but he looks as though he's got good ribs. What I like about this dog is that he's light on his feet, light on his feet and a good mover. They he's should have a lithe, springy gait, shouldn't they? And you can really see it, see it there. The Now, we saw the Entelbuscher earlier, and this is the great Swiss mountain dog, another tricolored Swiss mountain shepherd herding dog, taller on the legs, and this one has come all the way from Russia to compete. Judged by a Hungarian, this is Senenhund Estate Cornelia, two, two and a half years old, and owned by Elena Pisareva, handled by Ekaterina Safayanova in the ring. And this is a, a close relative of the Bernese mountain dog we saw earlier, the shorter, shorter haired variety, same tricolor markings. It's extremely handsome. It was also a carting dog at. Uh, it, almost yes. fell into um, extinction but so, some were found in a remote valley and used as a nucleus for reviving the breed the owner interesting he tells me maybe the poor English but they said this dog is charismatic and brains so there's a great character and very intelligent now we welcome into the ring the best of breed human dog now, here is the Greenland dog, a relatively rare breed. This was Arabica A.V. Tazamuit at Sled Dog. It's an import from Norway, known simply as Java, and owned by Nicholas Singh and Stuart Winterton. And they come from Lincolnshire. This is the f third time she's been best of breed at Crufts. So that's a remarkable record. And the only female Greenland dog ever to win a best of breed at Crufts. The ancestry of this breed can possibly trace back to dogs accompanying people from Siberia. Originally an all-purpose haulage dog, this one in its native Greenland. It's a tough, independent, strong-willed character. A dog definitely not for the faint-hearted because you will never wear him out. And this is the only native breed from Greenland still in existence. Typical spit with that wedge-shaped head, strong, powerful body, plume of a tail carried over the back. And they can come in any color or combination of colors. And the importation of dogs into Greenland is forbidden because they want to keep this breed absolutely pure. Gentle expression of the hoverfart. This one is Truffle, a bitch, and uh, she's handled by Karen McClure in the ring. The hoverfart means the guardian of the home, and the dogs of this type date way back to the, uh, the 1200s in their native Germany. Powerful, mid-sized, that beautiful expression is so characteristic of the breed. This is an unexaggerated general purpose farm dog. This one a black and gold. We'll also see them in black and blonde. So they absolutely functional. It should be sturdily built. A lean wedge-shaped head, a silky, hard, good textured coat. Very weather resistant, so it can cope with any work outside. Could be a herder, guard dog, and a carting dog. There's an all purpose there servant to man. And next up in the group ring is the Leon Burger. Sue Thomas just agreed today, and her best degree. Now, this is a very impressive Leon Burger, Amicus Optimus Vitalis, known as Prussia, um, owned by Anna Mikaleva, and she's come from St. Petersburg in Russia. So, uh, han handled here by another Russian lady, Mariana Gusseva. Again, the Leon Burger is a German breed, comes from the town of Leonberg, and it's thought it came from the crossing of a St. Bernard and a Newfoundland. The breed's name derives from the city of Leonberg in 
Baden-Württemberg, Germany. And this one is a multi-champion in 33 different countries, if you please. World winner 2017. And his owners say he's extremely friendly at home. A lovely dog to live with, which is a good job when you're as big as that. The, the Leonberg is still seen in the coat of arms of Leonberg. There's lion-like colours, red, fawn, sometimes with a black mask. The black mask shouldn't extend beyond the eyebrows. So very heavily boned and strong. Now we turn our attention to one of the oldest... Now that is an impressive dog, the Mastiff. Probably one of the oldest recognised breeds, dating, dating back to Anglo-Saxon times, when the word Masty meant powerful, and that's what you can see in this breed. This is champion Feynard Frankincense. Frank, he's three years old, handled by George Zade in the ring tonight. A true gentleman, they say he is. Best in show at the Mastiff Association in 2018, so already on the road to glory this year. Certainly other breeds of my mastiff come close to his height. Now, he, the, he, the breed used to be known as the Old English Mastiff, and it hails back perhaps 2,000 years and was here certainly when the Romans came. Now, records tell us of, of a dog in the Battle of Agincourt helping its owner with great feats of courage. Again, these were gamekeeper's dogs to ward off poachers as well. And truly massive. There's no upper limit for either size or weight. Square head from virtually every angle. And he won best in show at the Mastiff Association only two weeks ago. And I modesty forbids me to tell you who was the judge there. <laughs> and, and I was, well, he was called Frank. So that's a, a good omen. One hopes, yes. <laughs> And here is another Mastiff breed. It's the Neapolitan Mastiff, acts of heroic. And his pet name is Red, and he was judged by Dr. Ron James, um, who also judged the Mastiffs. And it's owned by Kim Slater and Matiaki Mafi, and they come from Wales. And it's Matiaki who's handling here. Now, this again originated in Italy, and it was thought to have led the Roman legions into battle, often wearing spike collars, a forbidding sight for the enemy. Typically mastiff in type, but this dog doesn't want to be too overdone. And what's lovely about this best of breed winner is you've got the bone, you've got the head, but nothing is overdone there. One, six, one, two. Again, the breed in the early days was quite exaggerated with too much wrinkle, which caused eye problems, too much loose skin. The breeders have worked hard to free it of exaggeration and are now a much healthier breed. Although well, probably established in Newfoundland, uh, it's what well, there's probably French or Basque. Unusual to see a brown coming through to the best, uh, the best in group ring at Crufts. Normally black. This is the Newfoundland. This is New Garden Lori Nanya. Nana at home, three years old. Owned by Danielle Mary Ball. Developed around the island from which it takes its name. The Newfie probably dates back to the 15th century. Broad head, short square muzzle, deep set, they're deep chested and should be a powerful but very sound dog on the move. And this has to be the ultimate working dog. You know, the, the Newfoundland used to help their fishermen retrieving fishing nets, pulling in the boats. They're great at water rescue, carting. In the early days, they used to help the lumberjacks drag piles of... Uh, cut down trees on carts, fantastic dogs. And here is the distinctive outline of the Portuguese water dog. This one, international champion, sunshine of my life, the Piona de Aviva, known as Sunny. And it's uh, owned by Angelica Ebenitz and she comes from Germany. Now, this is a breed which was also a water dog, developed in Portugal for helping the fishermen bring in the nets, bring in the boats. But the Portuguese water dog breed, 
served as crew on fishing trips between the lost And the Portuguese water dog can have two quite distinct coat types, either long, loosely waved, or shorter and with more compact curls. Muzzle and hindquarters are clipped into that characteristic pattern. Relatively large head, the Portuguese water dog, deep in body, and that tail carried in a ring. It's a very important feature, the tail. It has to be carried up and over, over the loin. Now, here again, this dog is versatile. It was also used as a, a messenger dog between fisher boats, and it said as a, f a fog warning, and it used to bark to give warning where boats were present. So, from Portugal, we back. Instantly recognisable, the Rottweiler. This champion, Juff the Happy Bunny, known as Peggy, two and a half years old, owned by Janice Horton. Way back in the days of the Roman Empire, when engineers were busy building magnificent roads, meat was moved on the hoof. So these herding dogs were required as powerful guards of the cattle as they were moved along the new roads. Uh, Judge Dave Killerly has had a lot, lot of experience with very good Rottweilers, so he'd be looking at this with a specialist eye. The, it gets its name Rottweiler from the town of Rottweil, which was a big cattle centre in, in Germany in Roman times. And it's thought that the Romans left some of their dogs there um, and they were, the breed was developed there. Strong, driving, supple movement is what we're looking for. Broad and deep chested, nice straight back, slightly longer than tall. They've been so successful in this country, such a popular working dog, and handled right, they're magnificently loyal companions. Yes. Highly intelligent, but they need sensible, intelligent owners because they're a wonderful breed. The next breed to be seen is the Russian Black Terrier. The breed was just today. The Russian Black Terrier, uh, almost unpronounceable. Medvazaya Staya Nazlednik Prestola. How about that for my Russian? So it's um, come all the way from Russia. Uh, the handler Victoria Poloskaya, and uh, great win here. It's already a junior European champion, Russian champion, and a champion in Le Latvia. So very experienced. Well, we've just seen the Rottweiler, and that's thought to be one of the precursors of, uh, of the Russian Black Terrier, developed as very much as a military dog, using the giant schnauzer and probably the Airedale too. They need to be massive, 70 centimetres tall, 70 kilos in weight, so you don't want to be lifting this one in at the back of the car. And, and it's a relatively modern breed. It first appeared at a show in Moscow as recently as 1955, so that's, in dog terms, that's relatively modern. They were bred by the Army Breed breeding station to get a dog which was a good guard dog and a good working dog. The massive head of the St Bernard, twice as long as round as it, as round as it is in length carried on that long muscular neck wide and deep body powerful with really heavy bone but you need soundness a relatively level back and we should see an easy powerful gait when it moves this one irish champion and an international champion too bulla boss jack of diamonds five years old has come to compete from ireland for brian and margaret o'sullivan well, and he's won his third CC in England today, which means he becomes an English champion, which is a great achievement. It's a long way to campaign a dog coming from Ireland. Lovely balanced outline there, standing. They have to have good length of leg, good substance, without, without exaggeration anywhere. A strong skull, deep square muzzle, not over wrinkled at all. You want clean eyes in the breed, health. Very important, and the breeders have done well to get soundness with health and improving the eyes in the breed. 
and of course originally a search and rescue dog in the Great St Bernard Pass in Switzerland. Two, one, five, three, the St Bernard And here the Siberian Husky, Klu Kluagin Chaska, known as Niyaha at her home. She's come from Stafford. Her owners are Mr. Ian and Teresa Wakeling, and it's Ian who's handling here. The, um, the dog's become a champion today, and the owner said it doesn't get any better than this, winning the best of breed at Krups. only add to the appeal of this breed, which originated in Siberia. This is the raciest of the sled dogs, really. The Siberian's medium in size, quick and really light on his feet. And this should be balance and power all through. This one, pure white. Again, they're, they're light, they're the speediest of the dogs. And of course, if you go into the sled and harness racing, this is the breed which wins all the championships. Actually, it's win it had its first major win today, not yet a champion. So what a way to start. Fox-like head, deep-chested, plenty of heart room for the exercise it has to take, and that fox brush of a tail. And, and 10 years old, so it's... Uh, fit for function in the veteran in its veteran years. Ron James had a very good entry into that Mastis, 58 here for Ron. Draki Kulan has come all the way from Finland to compete at Crufts today. This is the Tibetan Mastiff, three years old, known as Kulan at home. Probably provided the root stock for the Roman Molossa and helps, hence the, the bulk of the European Mastiff you can see in these breeds. They were originally a herder and a guarder, slow maturing dog, takes his time to come to his absolute best. That broad head, heavy bone. It, it's thought that the Tibetan Mastiff is one of the most ancient of any any dog breed and the prototype for all the Mastiff or Molossa breeds. In its native Tibet, it was often tethered on a chain at the gate of the property and a forbidding guard dog. Here, this male carries a very typical long mane of hair down its neck and shoulders, one of the hallmarks of the breed. And despite his size and weight, a powerful free mover. Individual examination of the striking, working best of breeds. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them all a round. So, Dave Killerly looking at his best of breed winners. He's had a good chance to go over them all, but who is he going to put pick for the very first of our group winners? There were 2,412 working dogs entered across. Now he's going to walk around and just remind himself of what he saw on hands-on examination, just taking in the finer details. He'll be sorting out in his mind which dogs are going to be in my shortlist here. A very inscrutable expression <laughs> there as he walks down the line. Giant schnauzer, that lovely young Great Dane. Greenland dog and the Hovervart. Right, back to the head of the line. Who is he going to pull out? The Alaskan Malamute is called forward. And the Bouvier and the Boxer. The Doberman, the Giant Schnauzer. Is the Bull Mastiff is called forward too. He's called in the, new, the young Newfoundland and the Rottweiler, the young Rottweiler bitch. So there we are. There's our eight shortlisted dogs for this working group. So there we are, the Alaskan Malamute, its tail waving gently as it should. And they're going back to the edge of the ring and we'll see them sent up and down for a last look at movement. Our short disagrees back to the line up along the back of the ring. I'm sure each will be moved again. There are five females and three males in this short list. Now, 
So here we go. We're going to see them move again. And the first is the Alaskan Malamute. The tail waving gently like a waving plume. Absolutely typical. It's in great coat. You can see the coat and condition on this uh, weather, weatherproof coat. Again, the strength of the Bouvier. Sturdy dog under that matte textured coat. He's won the group at Crufts before in the past, so he's an experienced show dog. Next up, the ever popular boxer, champion Lanfrazy Ocolado. Dave, top winner. And another who's already winner of a working group, so uh, big winning dog. And the bull mastiff, William. Hire Dunscar on a mission with Coolie Moore. I, I love the lightness of movement of this dog. He just is looking a little tired. He was in the champion stakes earlier, but I like him. And to top the breed at Crufts is a great achievement for a young dog. Champion Jojavik, Penelope Pitstop, the Doberman. Big cheer from the crowd, always a popular breed. That lovely, elastic, relaxed gait is still showing her socks off. This clean, crisp outline. Now here goes the giant schnauzer. The, the giant schnauzer. Best, best of breed here at Crufts in the past. So uh, very experienced in the big ring atmosphere Top with Kevin giant Cullen. schnauzer, both 2016 and 2017. That gorgeous Newfoundland, Nana. Uh, not yet a champion, winning her second CC today. And a young bitch, but looking to have a great future. Lovely type and top line and light on her feet. She's so balanced, mm. isn't she? Real quality there. The Rottweiler. A another youngster, not yet three. She's two years and nine months old. Already a big winner. I like her top line and her balance and a very good mover. And called Happy Bunny because she has the most fantastically happy, yes. joyful character. So Dave, so Dave Killerley's had a chance to go over these dogs. He's seen them move again. And of course, at this level now, he's looking for performance. You don't just win the group because you are the best of the best. You win the group because you put in a great performance too. Just that extra 10%. No. That's, that's a be beautiful outline on the Doberman. The elegance of the giant schnauzer. What's he thinking? Weighing them up in his mind. The boards are out. The winner of the working group, Crafts 2018. It's the young, it's, the young new found Look at the owner's the face. <laughs> oh my God, she says. Yes, that's, we could read, lip read there. Marvellous. And actually so well deserved. She looked fantastic on the move right up to the last. Nana the Newfoundland, New Garden Laurie Nanya, beautiful working group winner for Crufts 2018. And in second place, it's the Doberman, Penelope Pitstop. So a great win for her too. Into group three, that magnificent boxer, Ocolado, the top winning boxer last year. Group four goes to the Alaskan Malamut. That's Snowshoes Aurora Borealis with uh, Jesse Smith Handley. Huge congratulations to our winner. A sporting a handshake for our group winner. The first of our group winners, the first of our finalists to go through to Best in Show on Sunday night for Daniel Marie Ball from Blackburn, New Garden Laurie Nanya, Nana the Newfoundland. What a wonderful win. And absolutely a st star studded group from big winners. This was a new face on the block, not yet a champion. How marvellous and refreshing, full of life and vitality. So, 
and a very happy early. We're good. <laughs> so she'll come back on Sunday evening to compete for best in show. So that's a, will be a great experience for her handler. She, the, the dog herself is quite unfazed in this atmosphere. And the so tail I'm hasn't stopped. To you, the winner of this fabulous working group. Did you ever dream this morning? <laughs> Have you had to travel very far? Not too bad. But you must be absolutely over the moon. Don't feel real. You've got a few days to rest before Sunday, but absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. We're going to send these fabulous working group winner and the other placings round on their lap of honour. Thank you very much. Please show your appreciation. For the winners of the working group, the new family. So now we move on to the second of our groups being judged this evening. This is the pastoral group. Peter Purvis is now joining me in the comms box. I am indeed. And we're about to see our judge come in for the pastoral group, Mrs. Meg Purnell Carpenter. She's going to be judging dogs, which consist the herding dogs that are associated with working cattle, sheep, reindeer, and other sort of cloven foot animals. Usually this type of dog will have a, a weatherproof double coat to protect it from the elements when working in severe conditions and I find these pastoral dogs some of the most beautiful dogs that we see at Crufts. We're about to be introduced to our judge. We're going to see the judging of the pastoral group, the second group of this, the first day at Crufts. Our judge today uh, is, was introduced in the 1980s to uh, Akitas, that's where she started with her kennels, and then she, what are some of the more obscure breeds that you'll see in this, she's kept Beausarons and the Korean Jindo, which you won't see today, but uh, that's a breed that uh, is, well, there are a few in this country already. 
So we're just waiting for the judge to be introduced and brought into the ring. Meg has bred working German shepherds for many years with great successes, particularly within the police and working trials world. In the early 80s, Meg fell in love with the Akita and the Overhill Akitas have accounted for many champions at home and abroad. And she's also one of the original importers of the French Beauceron, but another pastoral breed. Meg judges extensively around the world and is currently approved to judge 16 breeds across the working, pastoral and utility groups. She's no stranger to the big ring here at Crofts, having judged the working group here in 2017. And she says, and I quote, she's absolutely thrilled and extremely honoured to be judging this pastoral group at Crofts 2018. And now we'd like to welcome Mrs Meg Pennell Carpenter into the main ring. Being and here King, she comes, chair of committee. escorted by Gerald King, chairman of the Crafts Committee. And my word, she does look happy and she's looking absolutely marvellous. What a lovely outfit. It's such a moment, you know, to get out there in this main ring to judge all these fantastic dogs. The pastoral group now, are about the to come in. The 33 best of breed winners into the main ring. We have the Anatolian, the Anatolian Shepherd Dog. Now the Australian cattle dog. Followed by the Australian cattle dog. And of course, this Meg's first look at these best of breed winners that have been sent Shepherd. through. And the Australian shepherd dog coming in. Please welcome into the ring the bearded collie. Flowing lines of the beardy, the bearded collie. And the Beauceron. And now the breed which I mentioned earlier, the Beauceron. The next dog we see is the first of the Belgian Shepherd Dogs, the Brennan Dog. There are four varieties of Belgian Shepherd Dog. This with a striking black coat is the Gronendal, followed Lacanois. by the little Lacanois. This is a, <laughs> it is indeed. And here comes the third, the Malinois. And finally the Belgian Shepherd Dog, the Turbaron. And the Tavurin coming in last of the next four. Into the ring is the border One of the most popular, this is the Border Collie. Frank and I watched these earlier, over 400 competing. And the Briard. The next dog is the Catalan Sheepdog. The Catalan Sheepdog, one of the more unusual pastoral dogs. Followed by the Rough Collie. And now, dog I always think of as the Lassie Dog. This and is the, the Rough Collie. And now the Smooth Collie. And his smooth cousin. We now welcome into the ring the Estrella Mountain Dog. The Estrella Mountain Dog. And this is the Finnish Laphund. Followed by the Finnish Laphund. We now have the German Shepherd Dog. And the ever popular German Shepherd Dog. And this is the Hungarian Pumi. And the little Hungarian Pumi with those very characteristic ears. Followed by the Hungarian Puli. And the Hungarian Puli. Change a letter, you get a different dog. And the next dog we see is the Commodore. Those crisp white cords, instantly recognisable as the Commodore. Followed by the little Lancashire Healer. A long way for small legs. And now we see the Maremma Sheepdog. Beautiful black pigment against a glowing white coat. The Maremma Sheepdog. And please welcome into the ring the Norwegian Buhund. And the Norwegian Buhund. Followed by the Old English Sheepdog. Big cheer for the Old English Sheepdog. Down the size, the Polish German Sheepdog. The Polish Lowland Sheepdog following in there. And the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. The Pyrenean Mountain Dog. Down the size of bench, the Pyrenean Longhaired Sheepdog. And the Longhaired Pyrenean Sheepdog. And please welcome the Samoyed. The Smiling Sammy, the Samoyed. Here we have the Shetland Sheepdog. And the miniature rough collie, really, the Sheltie, the Shetland Sheepdog. Followed by the Shetland Sheepdog. 
Swedish Valhund. The Swedish Valhund. The next dog we see is the Turkish Kangal dog. This is the Turkish Kangal dog. The best of the corgis now, the cardigan Welsh corgi. And this is the Welsh corgi, the cardigan variety. And the final dog in this group is the Pembroke Welsh corgi. And it's his cousin, the Pembroke Corby. That concludes the introduction of the pastoral group Best of Breed Winners into the ring. And whilst Mrs. Meg Pennell Carpenter casts a further eye on the wall, it gives me very great pleasure to hand you over to the commentary box and to Jonathan Dunn. So that's our collection of pastoral dogs and a beautiful collection they are too. And Meg Pennell Carpenter will now take her first look along the line. This is the, she's seen them come into the ring, now she gets a chance to look at them all. Just a cursory glance to start with, but uh, she'll be taking it all in. Exactly what she sees, she'll have found some coming in, she'll be impressed by, and some that not so much, and she'll take a closer look at those. She'll walk along the line, and she'll get some idea of where she might be going with this. But it isn't until she can get her hands on the dogs that she'll be able to make any decision whatsoever. A great honour to be judging a group here at Crufts. Of course, our colleague Frank Kane, he's done that, and I know that he absolutely loved it. And uh, something Jess and I are never likely to do, isn't it? Good Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> On to the end of the line and the two corgis there, the cardigan and the Pembroke. I've got to say, that's a lovely looking lineup. Well, the first uh, that uh, Meg Carpenter is going to be looking at is the Anatolian Shepherd Dog. Carla Molinari was the breed judge today for Anatolian Shepherd Dogs. And from an entry of eight, selected this fish, number 2419, as her best of the breed. The Anatolian Shepherd Dog, whose natural homeland is Turkey, is prized for his faithful devotion to his role as a guard to flocks of sheep or goats. And this is Tesh, the Anatolian Shepherd Dog, Teshier of Asalat, four-year-old bitch, and uh, Mrs. Anne Yakes and John Field own this dog. They come from Boston in Lincolnshire. This is a breed that stands up to variations. That descended originally from the ancient Mastiff guards and fighting dogs of the Middle East. A tough character with its origins in the high Anatolian plateau where it's hot in the summer and freezing cold in the winter. These dogs have to put up with it all, big and powerful. Much prized by the shepherds in Turkey. Shepherd dog, number 2419. This one's handled by Anne Yates in the ring, judged by Carla Molinari. The little Australian catalogue, this uh, cattle dog <laughs> catalogue. <laughs> this is champion Osman's Mandalay Bay. Roxy's six years old, belongs to Janina and Bill Britton, and they come from Shropshire, also known as the Australian Healer. Courageous, tireless, compact little working dog. Yes, it's a medium sized dog and greatly prized in his native Australia for his working ability. He's used for the control and movement of cattle in all environments. A dog of considerable stamina and endurance, wary of strangers, but very protective of his herd and his property. The Australian cattle dog. 54 of them were here, and this was the best of breed. Basically, it's a healer. They're supposed to run along behind the livestock, snapping and biting at their heels to move them along. Australian Shepherd, the breed judge, Angie Allen, today to look over here at Crufts 2018. Angie's this is the Australian Shepherd dog. Fly over the moon to La Noval. 
Maisie is the pet name of this bitch, who's only 17 months old. Uh, Linda Texter, who comes from Denmark, has brought this dog to the show, and it's handled here by Anna Texter. This is a world junior winner, a German junior winner, Danish junior, <laughs> Danish junior champion, and Swedish winner. So a young dog, 17 months old, winning a lot. The breed's origins go back to the Basque Spanish sheepdogs, Although he's named the Australian Shepherd, the dog was mostly developed in America from Basque sheepdogs. Multi-purpose, guarding and herding to police work, agility and search and rescue, characterised by that wonderfully coloured, profuse coat. And under that coat, some really powerful lines. They're pretty intelligent. They can deal with obedience, agility and tracking as well as that basic role as a, a worker on a farm or ranch and important to say they're not dogs that is a naturally yeah, bobbed tail the beautiful head and expression of the bearded collie a hardy shepherd that can be traced all the way back to the 16th century in northern britain this one is Malandex Exquisite Diamond, Brady, owned by Marilyn Baker and Rianne van der Hoof. And to get into this ring, beat 294 others of them. Very popular breed here today. Despite that, they, were, they were almost became extinct because they fell out of fashion as a working dog and after World War II had to be resurrected as a show dog and a companion rather than a worker. And now, of course, a dog that we will always look at and rate in the group here at Crufts. Such quality. Similarities, I think, you'll see there with the uh, Polish lowland sheep dog, which will come in later. But this uh, dog that we know today is really very spectacular. I love that flowing coat on the move. Of 29 dogs, Judge Rodney Alden selected this dog number 2881. Well, this is the Beauceron. Hector Blue du Sermon des Brumes. Hector, he's a five year old dog owned by Veronique Detienne. She comes from Belgrade, but not uh, where you might think. It's in Belgium. And the handler there today is uh, Jolien Denneworth. It's a very old breed from France, dating all the way back to the Renaissance, also known as the Basse Rouge because of his red tan stockings, and of course a breed that Meg Pernell Carpenter, our judge tonight, was partly responsible for bringing into the United Kingdom. It's a quiet and confident dog. The breed is a loyal companion. It was described by the French novelist Colette as a country gentleman. Everyone says that's a very apt epithet for this breed. Brave and bold, too, also used as a wartime oh, messenger. The judge of the first of the four varieties of Belgian Shepherd Dog, which we see now, and this is the Gorilla Bell. The first of our four varieties of Belgian Shepherd, and this one defined by his jet black coat, named after the, the village of Gronendal in Belgium, where he comes from. Strong and protective territorial instincts. This one's pet name is Ian, Ian de Bruin Buck, and they've come from Belgium to compete, so native yes. to his country of origin and important wins there in uh, uh, the netherlands in belgium it's an international champion was a world winner in 2013 and uh, luxembourg champion as well best of breed here at crufts in 2015 and 17 making it to trio now in 2018 and that top coat is long and straight, medium harsh in texture, always wholly black. And the undercoat is dense and protective to keep him warm against all weather conditions. Yes, the four varieties of uh, Belgian Shepherd Dog are all differentiated only by the coat. They're basically the same dog, but they do have very different coats. The Belgian Shepherd Dog, Lake Noir, is next to be seen. This variety was judged by Jean Lawless. So this is the Lacanois version of the uh, Belgian Shepherd Dog, the second of the breeds. 
and uh, as I said the, the only real difference is the coat and this one is Willash Devil's Lullaby or Ilya and it's a 22 month old bitch the Chateau de la Tense near Antwerp gave rise to the variety they're the rarest of the four varieties, favoured by Queen Mary Henriette in the 1700s. Coat should be harsh and wiry, but not too curly, just with a wave to it, about six centimetres long, shorter on the muzzle and face. This is the rarest of the Belgian shepherds that we see in this country. There were only nine in competition here today, but uh, best, in, best of breed of those nine, this is it. Can't help myself. The uh, Lacanois has always been uh, my favourite of the four varieties. Really? There's yes. something about them. So I suppose it's the roughness of the coat, isn't it? So they're, they're woolly. <laughs> nice looking dog. Now, this the Malinois, Belgian oh, Shepherd yeah, dog, champion Bon Vivant Gigi, Pandora, five years old, owned by Mrs. Neff, named after the city of Malines, where the dogs, a dog named Tommy was considered to be the foundation of the variety. Shorter coated, double, top line should be nice and firm, the texture of the coat is harsher on the top and woolly underneath. It doesn't have to be that uh, fawn colour either. It can be grey with a, a black overlay, but that's, uh, I think, the most attractive. You see the muscular conformation of the dog. And so our Belgian shepherd, the Malinois, third variety. Uh, this one, top Malinois in 2016, equals the breed record for the Malinois, for the number of uh, tickets won. The Belgian Shepherd Dog Tavirin was another Belgian Shepherd Dog variety judged today by Jean Lawless and from 67 Tavirin entered. The most popular of the uh, four Belgian Shepherds, this is the Tavirin. Uh, there were 67 of them here today and Champion Corsini Charisma, Vega for short, this three-year-old bitch took best of breed. The owner is, uh, he lives in Middlesex and is handled by Yvette MacDonald. During the development of these breeds, the, the black of the Gronendahl's coat was found to be dominant over the Turburin's red-brown recessive, so it must have taken real determination for breeders to persevere with this variety. And now, of course, they're one of the most popular. And they are very nice dogs. I've, I've known several. A friend of mine had several of them. He's now got Gronendahl's, but uh, he has had to view them as well, and uh, they're delightful. Impressive depth of quality in this variety. And this particular dog, four best in shows in 27, uh, 2017, that's pretty good, and has eight cc's to his name. And topping the entry figures in tonight's pastoral group was the Border Collie. There were 390 borders with two judges. A tenacious, hard-working sheepdog equipped with a sharp intelligence and immense stamina, the Border Collie. I was at ringside when she was awarded her CC and the whoop of applause was enormous. A massive uh, number 390 Border Collies were here today and the judges are judging dog and Vitch, uh, Mrs. Broadhurst and Mrs. Smith couldn't agree, although they uh, they agreed to disagree and the referee had to be called. The referee, of course, would have been Meg Fennell Carpenter, so she's seen this dog before. Medium-sized, athletic, but always graceful, that low head carriage on the move, so characteristic. Perfect balance. A good Border Collie is a thing of beauty, and this really is a good one. A three-and-a-half-year-old bitch called Rue, actually, and uh, David and Morag Connolly in County Louth, Ireland, own him. And he's called Irish champion Naroff Blurred Lines at Huntley, and he's popular with the audience here in the main arena, the Genting Arena here at the NEC. She is, beg your pardon. She is, She's I girl. beg your pardon. <laughs> the next three down into the centre of the ring is the three yards. A breed judged today by Alison King from an entry of 100. There were a hundred of these Briards here today. This is Boondocks, our, uh, our, 
<laughs> I can't get the full name out. Rosa is the pet name, and that's easy. It's a four and a half year old bitch, Ruth, Ruth Holman, who comes from Menden in Germany, that brought him here. The name for this breed was probably developed from the Chamberger de Brie and thought to be closely related to the Chamberger de Beauce. And of course, we've already seen the Beauceron, the breed from which that was developed. Only arrived here in the late 1960s, but of course, popular because of the depth of quality. And this is an international champion as well. And the very shades of, this is how I first saw Briart actually, in this lovely black, but there are various shades of fawn and black, sometimes with white hairs uh, scattered through the coat. It makes it a very striking, very handsome dog, lovely on the move, love, lovely flowing coat. Large and rugged, they're a sturdy dog, and underneath all that coat, when the judge gets the hands on them, it should have heavy bone, big feet, and the coat's always just wavy, no curl in there. And she fills in because the judge of the Catalan sheep roll, and she had 15 Catalans. She sent us through another female. This is 3537. Originating in Catalonia in northeastern Spain, this is the Catalan sheepdog, and this is Ella, who's come from Sweden to compete across today. The Catalan sheepdog was like many in this group, bred for herding. Yes, this uh, breed hails from Andorra region of Spain, originally bred, like many of these pastoral breeds, for herding and guarding flocks. Most recently, it's been found to be a good companion dog. He's very loyal and intelligent, lively and active. And uh, this particular bitch, six years old, is moving beautifully in the ring, looks absolutely lovely. Tough little shepherd dog, this, who can herd, guard and moor the Catalans independent and a really willing worker. High-spirited and cheerful, they're intelligent little dogs and, of course, very agile, swift and light on their feet. And a good size for the home as well. Another numerically strong pastoral breed here at Crafts with two judges. Francis Kay judged 97 males and Brian House... 111 bitches and they jointly selected this bitch number 3733. This is the Rough Collie. This is Chelborn Desirable. Mina is the pet name. Uh, Natalia Skalin and Ilona Teslovica, who come from Sweden, they brought this dog over to, to compete and they've beaten 208 others to get here. And it's evolved around 1800 when dogs brought originally to Scotland by the Romans. Although they've got a heavier show coat these days, very little has changed in the structure of this dog since it was originally developed. In fact, every single rough collie worldwide can trace its ancestry back to a single dog owned by Sir Wallace Evelyn Shirley. Well, this one is a massive international uh, champion in uh, uh, the area of uh, Norway, uh, European areas uh, in Scandinavia done extremely well and the sweet expression of this breed is an absolutely vital characteristic in that long wedge of a head gentle eyes and this is the rough collie's smooth cousin this one clingstones make my day lara four years old and another that's come from finland to compete at crufts today now the obvious difference between the rough and smooth collies is the coat length which in the case of the smooth collie is short and flat with a harsh texture on a dense undercoat and the colour range is pretty much the same, although one tends to see more blue merls in the uh, smooth than in the roughs. Such a wonderful breed. I don't understand why they're considered almost to be... Well, they are vulnerable breed because their numbers are, of registrations are so low. They're such a super dog to live with. And, of course, that smooth coat is so much easier to look after than the rough-coated cousin. Estrella Mountain Dogs was another breed judge today by Sue Bird and from 30 Estrellas she And this is the Estrella Mountain Dog. This is called Willow, it's a five-year-old bitch. And Sally McKinley and Anthony Johnson, who live in Coolville in Leicestershire, have brought this, dog, this bitch here today. The Iberian Peninsula. It is the 
descended from ancient Asiatic. A flock and herd guard hailing from the Sierra da Estrella Mountains, originally originating in Portugal. A strong, heavy boned breed can come in short or long coats, rugged always, very sure footed, an agile dog of considerable stamina despite its size. His devotees will say that he's almost too good with children as he tends to tow his owners towards them at high speed. Big sturdy dog. But they're relatively trainable in the basics of good canine behavior, but uh, don't try and uh, do any retrieving with them. They, won't, they don't do that. They don't play that game. The Estrella Mountain Dog, best of breed at Cross 2018, number 3828. Finished battles today were judged by pastoral specialist Lynn Sorts, and Lynn had an entry of 77 and sent us through this mound of a three. Potentially thousands of years old, the lives of the Sami herdsmen were made possible by the ancestors of this little dog, the Finnish Laphut. This one, 11-year-old Ben. Yes, he's owned by Ian and Maureen Mills from Wells in Somerset. Best of breed here at Crufts in 2015 and was the top dog in 2010. As we said, aged 11, this is into a serious veteran class and it's an extremely well. It doesn't look that old, does it? That still has that nice young look about it. We're looking for a dog that's compact and square in the Finnish lap and dis, dis, um, differs from his, his uh, cousin, the Laponian herder, which is bigger and longer and has a shorter coat. Should be a hard worker. And the Finnish clubs work really hard to preserve the original type of this very important working dog for them. Yes, that original role in Finland was to herd reindeer. They still do so as well as sorting out cattle and sheep. Typical spit. His thick coat comes in all manner of colours. Well, you can't fail to recognise the German Shepherd dog. This one has come from Weymouth, not all that far. The dog's registered name, Venez Raoul. Raoul is a three-year-old dog owned by John Cullen. not only in the United Kingdom, but worldwide. The Controversy seems to be more or less inherent with this particular breed because as far back as 1891, German Shepherd breeders were arguing about the standardization of type in their native Germany and still those arguments rumble on today. Yes, two very different views, aren't there? The very English uh, shape with a very straight back or a much straighter back and then the German seagull one with this uh, exaggerated drop in the hips. This one being moved at a steady pace today and sound. Today we'll mainly see short-coated examples of the breed in the show ring. Although yes, they need to look so powerful. Just letting him have his stride a little bit there. The handler makes all the difference to the way these dogs show and uh, the this is showing beautifully on the move actually. Thomas had 36 dogs covering four breeds, which included the Bergamasco, the Picardy Sheepdog, the Hungarian Kuvash, and the Hungarian Pumi that we see on the table, which emerged victorious. This is the male. These are divine little dogs. The Hungarian Pumi, just look at those ears. How could you not simply fall in love? Very new to Crufts, very new to the UK, and only just becoming established here as a breed. This is another little herding dog, characterized by that square outlined particular coat and of course the ears topping that skull. Only Used very young, all the time on the move. Very young dog, one year, nine months here. Levi is his name, uh, owned by June and Ashley Pike from viewed in Cornwall. And uh, their the best wins, of course, best of breed here at Crufts. Also one at the LKA and numerous reserve best of breed. So this is a, a successful little dog. Please put your hands together for the Hungarian Pumi. Here in the group for the first time at Crufts. Meg now turns her attention to the Hungarian Puli. 
John Ritchie was our judge. He sent us through this mail, 4070, from an entry of 41. The Pirelis, as the name suggests, obviously originates from Hungary too. Travelling Magyars from Central Asia in the 9th century introduced the breed. Well, there were 41 of these Hungarian Poolies here today. Just one letter difference there in the name from the previous dog we were looking at. 41 of them were here, as I say. And uh, this one is called Diesel, a four-year-old dog. This is virtually waterproof and certainly keeps out the wind and the rain when they're working. One of the smaller breeds in the group, very good at its herding job, so good as a, as a garter of the livestock. Really well, the or origins of the breed are a little obscure. Much of Hungary's culture derives from the Far East, and as the Magyars moved westwards into Hungary, they brought with them many things, including dogs. So there are those who can see the Puli a likeness to the Tibetan Terrier as well as to other mid-European breeds. And that corded coat is absolutely essential for this breed. The hair on the head forms a characteristic umbrella shape exactly what it was intended for to keep the rain out of the dog's eyes been best to breathe here at Crufts two years running you can see those wonderful short round tight feet kicking up underneath the curls as the dog comes towards you the Commodore is another breed which hails from Hungary. Now a completely different size, but the same kind of corded coat in white this time. The Commodore is another ancient Hungarian breed, created to herd, but also to guard with a fierce temperament under there too. From the east, when they settled in Hungary over 1,000 years ago. First yes, this is Hawk Brock Rolmo, or Barkus is his pet name. He's a four-year-old dog owned by Chris and Dave Brock. Uh, they live in Honiton in Devon. Best in uh, show for the Commodore Club Show 2017. They say that he's a very happy-go-lucky, gentle giant. <laughs> Who's having a jolly good roll in the middle of the group ring at Crafts. <laughs> And of course, the Commodore is one of the shepherds that's actually designed to be left out with the sheep. Hence, you need that camouflage coat so you can disappear in the flock. He doesn't just assist the shepherd, he does the shepherd's job. Or in the case of Barkas, this particular one, he's just showing off his, the clown side of his nature, I think. <laughs> Getting in touch with his inner child. You know, with the size of him, he's a dog not to be trifled with, though. You take care of anything and any place that he's been taught to regard as his. But that, that was, was just a lovely. perfect dive, wasn't, wasn't it? it? A perfect dive. <laughs> oh, I love this little chap. Lancashire Healer, champion trout on Rolo. Rolo is a dog. Don't know his age. I've not been given that. But uh, Elizabeth and Esther Gordon brought him from Winchester in Hampshire. Club was formed in 1978. Thought to originate in Ormskirk area, probably the product of meeting between Welsh corgis and black and tan terriers on the drovers' routes through the north. Not necessarily intended meetings either, but what resulted was this fantastic little character. Another healer designed to snap at the heels of the livestock and move them along. And uh, always eager to please. A love of people. They really do like people. He enjoys uh, being with children because he likes joining in games. I don't think he snaps at their heels. I hope he doesn't. Anyway, very trainable, but do need a bit of firm handling and a kind owner. All round useful farm dog, too. Very good with the vermin and a bit of ratting on the side. Nice and easy to groom as well. Damp chamois leather and a quick brush will restore him to respectable in house cleanliness. From an entry of seven, sent forward this dog number 4170 into the ring. Glorious black pigment on a white coat. This is the Marema Sheepdog. And this is Silverhouse Lupchin, who's come all the way from Russia to compete here at Crufts. This is a breed that is still used in Italy to guard the shepherd's flock. 
Well, this is a dog still used in Italy to guard the flocks and property of the shepherds. He's named after the plains of Maremma, which have been used for centuries as grazing land. Exact origins aren't, uh, uh, aren't really clear, but uh, he's believed to be a descendant of the white working dogs of the Magyars who uh, took over Hungary. And another one who's, who's bred to lead a pretty lonely life out on the hill with the sheep, and they need to have a stern temperament in order to protect those flocks from predators like wolves and bears. The Maremma. Well, this is the Norwegian house dog, the Boo Hund. Arnscroft never say die. Oscar is his pet name. He's a two, two year, three month old dog and comes from Retford in Nottinghamshire. And also as a sled dog. Dating back to. The Boo Hund is actually the Boo Hund has the one, one of the most sparingly written the breed standards in the book. <laughs> Light, <laughs> compact, with a fairly smooth coat, those pointed prick ears, and a curled spitz tail. That's pretty accurate. Describes the dog rather well, I think. Commonest colour is uh, the basic Wheaton colour, but uh, wolf sable and black are also recognised. They can also be a light red as well. And the youngsters are especially attractive, and it's surprising that the breed, which has been known in the UK for many years, hasn't really become more widely appreciated. Light and active on the move should be dead straight coming towards you. The old English sheepdog probably traces its origins back to continental sheepdogs such as... Another Russian visitor, this the old English sheepdog, a moor day of Abigail Grace, six years old, who's come from Moscow to compete at Crufts. Actually known as the Portail, although with tail docking being banned, this old nickname doesn't really apply. Yes, the second Russian dog uh, in this group so far. Um, though the old English sheepdog registry is listed as British, its actual ancestry is thought to be from European shepherd dogs of the Alcharka and Bergamasco types bred to sheepdogs in Britain. It's now regarded very much as uh, a native British breed, often called the bobtail. Strong, compact, profusely coated. And the markings of that coat, the grey and white markings, or blue and white markings, are, are very important. And that wonderful head as the dog comes towards you. The head on, a, on a, an old English sheepdog should look large in comparison to the rest of the body. This is the Polish lowland sheepdog, Hero, the dog's name, four years old. Owned, owned by Lucy Mottran from uh, Chesterfield in Derbyshire. That's an excellent memory. Like most of the shaggy-coated sheepdogs, the Polish lowland probably has its origins way back in the high plateaus of Tibet and Central Asia, and they moved with shepherds and their flocks, eventually settling and evolving through various countries in, across Europe. It's actually said that uh, he originally came to Britain in the 16th century when sailors from Gdansk exchanged their dogs for other animals at their Scottish ports of call. Well, that's fair enough. It could well have happened, couldn't it? The Pyrenean mountain dog, the great white guardian of the Pyrenees. This is champion Phoebus Movesen owned by Colin ba uh, Bauker and Sandra Gibson. It's probably related to the Italian Maremma, Hungarian Kubash. And uh, they come from uh, the Lake District in the UK. And uh, this breed comes originally from the Pyrenean mountain range in France. And this is where it's known there as the Grand Pyrenees. And they've guarded flocks in France for centuries and dogs of this type predate even the Bronze Age. He's a powerful dog. He should be imposing and strongly built. Quietly confident, he's described as. It's his seventh CC here today. Best of breed, Crufts 2018. That's his most important win to date. Well, of course it is. They've had uh, Best of Breed and Crufts uh, before, but it's the first homebred dog that uh, Colin and Sandra have had.
and that slightly unhurried movement is very characteristic. Well, this is the Pyrenean sheepdog, long-haired. Uh, Blue is his is her name. It's a bitch, five years old, owned by Mr. Ian and Mrs. Shane Flint, and they come from Pickering in North Yorkshire. And that was for its valiant work as a courier, search and rescue dog. It's a truly courageous working breed, origins in the rural community, and he's been selected to herd large flocks of sheep for as long as his master needs him to do so. And the dog apparently has a really good head for heights when asked to perform in the mountains. He was also used as a messenger dog throughout World War I, where his courage and swiftness were much valued. We now see the Samoyed. This dog, number 4531, was sent forward by free judge Janet Johnson from an entry of 116 to represent the breed here in the Crufts 2018 pastoral group. The breed is truly the canine equivalent of the Laughing Cavalier. And this is the smiling Samoyed, black pigment, white coat, instantly recognisable, and a dog that draws its name from the Samoyed, a group of Asiatic nomads of Mongolian descent. From the Sami nomadic tribes of Siberia, with whom it lived and worked for centuries. And he relishes in his, the name of Dan the Man. He's seven and three quarter years old, so he's into the veteran class already. And owned by uh, Mrs. Val Gies and Miss Seuss and Mrs. Sue Smith from Towlaw in County Durham. Typical spits with those wonderful prick ears and the tail curled over the back, a wedge-shaped head which should be strong and that crisp white coat, black pigment showing against it. And four years ago, this dog was reserved best in show here at Crufts in 2014. We're told he's a mummy's dog, soft, lovable, wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, this is the Sheltie, the Shetland Sheepdog. There are 262 of these judged here today, and champion Windress, Windcrest on the move, Tara for short, nine-year-old bitch, won the ticket. Refined and elegant in the head, a little blunt, blunt wedge with a flat skull and almond oblique eyes, small semi-erect ears, they're supposed to be folded over like that at the tip. Won some good titles, uh, not in this country. Uh, Sheltie of the Year in Sweden, and uh, they come from uh, Torby in Sweden. Lovely, lithe, smooth and graceful movement. And, of course, that coat is harsh on the outside with that big sable mane soft underneath to keep it warm. The House was appointed breed judge for Swedish Palant here at Crufts 2018, and from the 43 dogs entered... He best of to this dog. Valhund means a herding dog, and this is a little cattle dog, the Swedish Valhund. This one is Loki, two years old, has come from Staffordshire. In shape and temperament, this breed is similar to the Pembroke Welsh Corby. This is, sorry, I'll bring it up there. Uh, Lynn uh, Palatina, uh, who owns the dog, says it's her first show dog. So the first ticket was at the Champion Show in, the, in October 17, and he got his third CC today, so he's now a champion. And it's actually thought that um, uh, the Valhund may well have been the precursor for dogs like the Corgi and the Healer. They were very much drovers' dogs, a right-hand person on the road when moving livestock between locations. It's also called the Swedish Cattle Dog, isn't it? There are only seven of these Turkish Kangal dogs here today. Fred here, the six-year-old dog owned by Dealey Cumming from Okterada up there in Scotland, uh, has brought him here to uh, win over the seven 
dogs that were here. Powerful and well-muscled body, deep-chested, straight in front with a muscular rear to power him along. Large and broad head, that muzzle slightly tapering, and the ears are described as pendant but carried flat to the cheeks. This is a tall dog, mastiff type, breed which has only recently been recognised in the UK and was previously included as an Anatolian Shepherd dog. Gorgeous shot of the head of the Cardigan Welsh Corgi with that wonderful wedge and those prick ears. And Blobby here was uh, is five years old and uh, the two varieties of Corgi, we will see the... Uh, uh, Pembroke in just a moment. So they come from a common root stock and weren't divided officially until the mid 1930s. The cardigans thought to be the older of the two varieties. And they should be bold, a really workmanlike little dog. Low set, yes, but sturdy with that wonderful foxy head. Wide and flat between the ears. And the ears have those characteristic rounded tips. They're used on the move all the time, always mobile. This dog's had four national best in shows, national cardigan best in shows, breed record holder. And this is cousin, the Pembroke Corgi. 139 of them were here today. This is Magnus, four and a half year old dog, owned by Kevin Dover and Lars Sartha from Ross on Wye in Herefordshire. And of course the Pembroke variety always used to be docked, but not anymore. You have a fox brush tail normally. This one doesn't though. Short, medium, hard, straight coat. And this is a dog that possesses a bark that really belies his size. He's going to be little and he can make some noise. His lungs are clearly built to give him the stamina he needs to do a day's work as a farm dog. And when you get your hands on that little dog, he may be low to the ground, but he's broad-chested, long and strong, with a waist and a good level back. So, who will Meg Pemberton decide to pick for her shortlist. So, who will be chosen out of this lovely group to be the shortlist? Meg Purnell Carpenter pulling out the Australian Shepherd first of all. And the bearded collie. The border collie. Oh, the lovely border collie bitch. That's fantastic. And she's coming a long way along the line. Oh, and we've got the, the smooth collie. The Samoyed. The Polish lowland sheepdog, the Samoyed. And both corgis. So there's our the Australian Shepherd, the bearded collie there, lovely border collie bitch, the smooth collie, the Sammy, and we've got both corgis. And is that the Polish lowland there as well? It is, yes. Yep. And Meg Pernell Carpenter is going to take another look. So the first, Meg we'll have another look at. She's going to ask them to move again. First off goes our Australian Shepherd. The Australian Shepherd. Specialist, Angie Allen, is in charge of so this one is fly over the moon 
Delanova, Maisie, only 17 months old, such a youngster to be winning best of breed at Crufts in a strong breed. She's getting her act together there. Be Settling green. her down and getting that be movement be nice green. and free and even for the judge to see. They've come from Denmark to compete. And now we have the bearded collie. And this, this is, is Malandex Exquisite Diamond, Diamond okay. Brady, three year old bearded Best collie. Was this bitch number two, five, Handled by nine, Marilyn Baker seven. in the ring tonight. Handled beautifully. Three, Lovely five, level five, top line on the move there. And this is the Border Collie. I knew this was going to be popular when it was brought out. There's a good crowd of supporters here for this breed and for this particular dog here today. This is Roo, three and a half year old bitch. Love these dogs. The Smooth Collie, Clingstones Make My Day, Lara. They've come from Finland. Putting in a lovely performance. Those ears, look at them moving all the time. Jeff the little Polish lowland sheepdog, Polish sheepdog judged by player. Jeff Luscott, Four, champion three. My Beard's hero. Four, My Beard's, of course, one of the most Poland, famous Polish sheepdog. lowland kennels in this country. Top Polish lowland for 2017 and best of breed and shortlisted in the group. And Dan, the man here, the seven and three quarter year old Samoyed. This mummy's boy, and as we said, reserve best in show here in 2014. So a chance to go on. If they could win the group here, they could get into that final seven, and you never know what could happen. And Josita, Mr. Blobby, five years old, the Welsh Corgi cardigan variety. Those mobile ears on the go, keeping a nice top line on the move. Five best of breeds at Crufts for this one. And finally, put your hands together for the West. So here we have the Pembroke Corgi. Top pastoral, all breeds, 2016 and 17. And it's the male breed record holder, this Magnus, four and a half year old dog. The Welsh Pembroke Corgi. So that's a lovely group of dogs. The boards are out. So Mrs. Pernell Carpenter has made her decision. One last look, just making sure she's not going to make a mistake, and of course she won't. Beautiful outline there on the smooth collie and the border collie. And the winner of the pastoral. I think she's going for the border collie. She yes. is. Yes, yes, yes. fantastic yes. win. That's a popular win. And you saw them in the ring, didn't you, Jess? You saw them... Uh, well, she was put through by Meg because the two judges couldn't agree that Border Collies were so numerous they were judged by two judges, one for the dogs, one for the bitches, and the judges very sportingly agreed to disagree. Meg put this bitch through, and she obviously really liked her. Into group and two. yes, it's Magnus who's going to get the reserve in the group, group two. The, the Pembroke, Pembroke Cardigan Corgi. In third place. It's the Smooth Collie. Oh, that the smooth gorgeous collie. Smooth Collie is going to take Number group three. That's Lara. Clingstones Make My yes. Day. Four-year-old bitch, Lara. It's the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. Four, and into group three. four, the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. So congratulations to but there's our board. winner, and what a fantastic win for the breed. The Border Collie, Irish champion, Narof Blurred Lines at Huntley. Rue, three and a half years old. They've come from Ireland to compete. David and Morag Connolly, many congratulations on a fantastic group win. And isn't it interesting that uh, Meg Purnell Carpenter had to go as referee to decide whether it was her or the dog that would win the ticket and she chose then and has now chosen it again to be best of this group. Rosette's being handed out, there's the Pembroke Corgi taking Dublin group two. And of course you've got to make plans to come back on Sunday now. I group think we'll three. have to come back, yes. <laughs> How wonderful, there isn't a single exhibitor here that is not thrilled for you and would love to be standing where you are. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you. Would you like to take your lap of honour, please, with the rest of this fabulous group placements? 
winner of the pastoral group, the Border Collie. So lap of honour time, the lovely Border Collie, Rue, leads the way. A triumphant moment, a very happy moment for David and Morag Connolly from Ireland, County Loud. And we have the second of our group winners who will be appearing, of course, in the best in show ring on Sunday evening. The Border Collie taking the pastoral group for 2018. Fabulous win for the breed. We have had an absolutely tremendous day here on the first day of Crufts 2018. Covered live, all day streamed on YouTube and it continues from tomorrow morning as well. But coming up tomorrow, the highlights of the day. You'll be able to see the Heelwork to Music competition at five minutes past 12. These times are all UK times, of course. Uh, 15.55, the flyball quarterfinals, always exciting. There'll certainly be noisy, whatever else. And then in the evening, more group judging. We have the Terrier group first and the Hound group to round off the day. So it's a very exciting day to come. We've had a wonderful day here today. Two excellent group winners that we know are going through to the final. We hope that you'll tune in, not only to television in the UK to see the programmes on Channel 4 and More 4, but tune in on on YouTube and enjoy our company for all the time you wish. Good night. <laughs>